Hey there folks and welcome back to the Rome campaign. Last time we got started with a thorough introduction to the starting situation facing the Roman Republic here in Italia and Magna Graecia. We then survived two years of some of the worst RNG I've ever seen from that mission tree and any Rome game I've ever played, so that was great. <laughs> That's what happened to us here in the actual Rome campaign. But that's all right. This is an Iron Man style game, so I'm going to roll with whatever the RNG ends up being. Let's just hope that we've used up our bad luck early on and some better rolls await us in the future. Now, we did manage to scrape one claim out of that dismal uh, second year of the campaign where we were trying to get claims on people. We got claims very unhelpfully on our truce targets, I guess, of Etruria and Samnium, so can't act on those until those truces are up. We did get one claim that we could act on, which was Umbria. We then very strategically waited for Umbria to finish their war with their eastern neighbors. We then essentially strategically attacked them as soon as they had conquered that territory, so we could get the territory through just one Umbrian war. And the war, of course, went quite well, as on the land we are definitely the strongest nation in the area militarily. I did make liberal use of my manpower to do this war quickly. I'm basically trading in-game time for my manpower. Honestly, as Rome, our manpower recovery is so strong, I can probably make pretty risky trades like that, although I wouldn't normally recommend it if you don't know exactly what you're doing. We do remain slightly vulnerable to a surprise Etrurian and or Samnite attack, or worst of all, a coordinated Etrurian Samnite attack. Now that doesn't seem to be what the AI appears to be planning up right now, and we'll see if they take the bait of that insult I gave them a while ago. They do have claims on me, which they could act upon, and while I'm at war with Lucania, which is about to be what we're doing, uh, they may consider the opportunity a bit better. But I do have forts in the north prote to protect against Etruria. And if Samnium declares war, my army is going to be right over here in this area, able to just fight the Samnites in their own land with no big problem. So that is going to be the case with that. Now, I considered if it made sense to actually lower and re-raise my levy, which would allow me to re-raise them at full strength. Um, there would be one fewer, uh, one fewer cohort, just based on population changes, probably people promoting up from Freeman. Honestly, not entirely sure why these little cohort changes happen every so often, but whatever the case, uh, most of the cohorts would re-raise after some amount of time. If I were to click this, it would say something like four months up to 24, plus, or it'd be four plus up to 24, depending on factors like how long the war was and how far away they were. Basically, this, uh, I can just show you, this here doesn't really tell you anything. It says uh, you can re-raise the levy after four months and the date is increased by up to 24 months. So it basically tells you the calculation. It says four plus some number that's less than 24. And then it doesn't tell you what the actual answer is, which is the important information. So we're not going to risk a potentially a year long delay. Don't know if the situation would call for that, but who knows with this game's mysterious calculations. Someday I'll crack open the code and figure out how that particular formula works, but for now our army is strong enough to take on the Lucanians, particularly by themselves. Of course we have uh, Marcus Valerius Corvus in reserve with his levy to support as well, with his good marshal helping out too. And we've got plenty of manpower, to be honest. I'm trading basically in-game time for manpower to do these wars as quickly as possible in order to min-max how much time I can control this territory throughout the campaign and you know make use of it. And ultimately, it might be a little bit more conservative to lower the levy and re-raise with a fresh levy. This would also save us on manpower, ultimately. But with all of our manpower advantages as Rome, we have a lot of manpower recovery bonuses and a pretty high base manpower, especially for the area. I honestly think we can basically just push ahead and play rather uh, riskily and aggressively using our manpower basically to its fullest extent possible. And since we've lost our ships in that kind of frustrating uh, pirate situation uh, last episode, um, we definitely need to make full use of our land army at the minute. So we're going to go ahead and just continue using these same forces with their current numbers. We're gonna, they're going to gain more numbers each month as they recover, but we're sending them over to go ahead and move into Apulia. Looks like I will have to get military access through them, and they will give it, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. These guys, incidentally, are fighting Epirus and also Carnania. Um, I'm assuming, yeah, Epirus is actually the one coming into this area, yeah, so let's see if uh, Pyrrhus ends up taking over as the Basilius. I assume that he will after the, the fight between 
Neop uh, Telemos and Pyrrhus sort of continues along. I don't remember offhand the Epirote mission tree too well, but I know that it kind of goes back and forth between Pyrrhus and then this other guy here who's not quite as good. Well, much less good, I should say. Pyrrhus is one of the best martial characters at the start of the game that's like a custom character. So we'll see what happens with that. But in the meantime, um, these guys are doing their invasion of Magna Gratia, as they do historically. We'll see if we have to deal with that later on. We can certainly beat the Epirotes, particularly without Pyrrhus leading them on land, but we'll have to worry about that later. For now, let's just go ahead and get military access through Apulia and basically proceed through to our Lucanian attack, which I'll actually start once we um, once we are in position. So let's just head away over here. Probably don't need to wait too much longer for the morale. It may be worth waiting a little bit in Canusium to recover morale and also manpower more efficiently in my own land. I suppose we'll see what we're dealing with here once we arrive, but set that there. Also, I wanted to start this episode off with a quick additional bit of uh, sort of explanation for a pretty important part of this game that uh, it's possible if you've never seen Imperator Rome campaigns before, particularly from someone who's a lot more detail-oriented like myself, which isn't necessarily a good or a bad thing. It's just how I played this game and how I present this game in my videos. But I wanted to take a second to go over what each population type actually does. So this is kind of a complete non sequitur from what's happening kind of in the pace of the campaign here. But since we're at the start of the episode, I figured I'd quickly go over this just so everyone's on the same page. If you're a more experienced and parent Rome player or YouTube watcher, you probably know this already, but just so everyone's on, on the same page so that you understand in shorthand why I'm aiming for certain pop types in certain places. Slaves produce uh, as a base, let me find where some, where are some slaves. I also have to show you from this thing. So the, the numbers that will display are based on the numbers that are here. But just in general, um, slaves basically produce just tax and they're the most efficient tax producing population type. Their defining sort of feature is that their unhappiness as a class within each tile doesn't uh, reduce their output. Every other type has its output reduced by its unhappiness. And if they're happier, their output is increased. So. Uh, making uh, populations that produce a resource you care about happier leads generally to that resource being produced more. With slaves, their unhappiness does still affect unrest. All uh, population unhappiness affects unrest. So unhappy slaves can still be a problem. It just isn't necessarily an economic problem. Uh, so slaves produce just tax. And also slaves are the population type needed to produce extra copies of your resource of the tile. And generally speaking, uh, unless you're talking about a very densely populated city with a lot of slaves, you're going to need special buildings um, in cities to be able to get extra copies from extra slaves, of course, without any other infrastructure. In Roma, my most heavily infrastructure developed location, the cloth here needs 18 slaves to produce one extra cloth, and that's the most you're going to sort of see. In comparison, a place that has a farming settlement is going to allow for, um, well, the farming settlement produces one more by itself, just as an effect, then this place actually lost a slave. So let me go ahead and move a slave in here. So we're gonna produce one more copy by moving a slave in. Let's just move one in, I think, from uh, Ostia, that'd be fine. It's gonna produce a third copy now, so I'm glad that I caught that there. Right, uh, so slaves produce tax, um, and they also sort of produce extra copies of resources for to, to sell for commerce. That's one of the most important ways that I make use of slaves, is more for their commerce effect from extra resources. You're going to see me in my campaigns, and in this campaign as well, mostly focus on moving slaves around to these resource uh, building areas, like farming settlements and mines and whatnot, to get these extra copies of resources to sell on the commerce market, as opposed to their actual tax contribution. Uh, tribesmen, who are not going to be in a very common population type for this campaign. So we can find a place that has a tribesman. Here we go, we have some tribesmen. Tribesmen produce base tax and manpower. And another population type that produces base tax and manpower is freemen. So what's the difference? Well, as a republic or a monarchy, you have a lot more... I think I talked about this last episode, but you have a lot more options to strengthen your freemen. Um, and as a tribe, you have many more options to strengthen your tribesmen. The main difference between the two is that... I think, in my experience, um, I think free. I don't remember offhand, but I'm pretty sure freemen produce a little bit more manpower and produce a little bit less tax. I'm not entirely sure. They're basically the same kind of population, but for us as a republic, we want tribesmen that we have to promote up to being freemen. Because in the pop promotion demotion system, which is a whole other complicated topic if you don't know how this works, 
basically um, the way that the pops are listed here from left to right is a, is a decline in class status. So the highest class population are nobles, then citizens, then freemen, then tribesmen, and then slaves. Any uh, pop that is of a culture that in our context is not Roman can't go higher than citizen without being out of its proper class because the defining characteristic of an integrated population and in our context only our native population of Romans are considered integrated. Uh, Non-integrated cultures aren't allowed normally to be citizens and nobles. So while they are citizens and nobles, such as when you've just conquered a new territory, they're super unhappy, both because they were conquered and because they're breaking the rules by being of a higher class than they're allowed to be because they don't have those civil rights available to them. And integrating a population just means giving them the rights to become citizens, and I think nobles as well. Maybe it's just citizens. I actually don't remember offhand for integrated. I think it's citizens and nobles, oh, whatever the case. Um, the, the point being, um, I don't really do integration as a mechanic near, basically ever. I find that uh, in most situations, just focusing on assimilating everyone to become your native population is a lot more consistent. So I'm, I, don't, I honestly don't know offhand uh, the integrated population maximum class. Maybe it's just citizens. Whatever the case is, um, because of this nuance, in the context of playing as a republic, which is our you know current situation, our situation for quite a long time in this campaign, we're going to focus mostly on promoting tribesmen up to be freemen, or under some circumstances looking for a tribesmen to demote down to slaves. But generally speaking, if you're playing quite militaristically, you're going to gather slave population quite quickly, and you're going to actually have too many slaves for your own nation's well-being. In fact, over-enslavement is actually kind of a big problem once you're in the mid-game, as your slave population uh, both grows as a population like all your other classes, and you also grow it yourself by capturing more population. So um, generally speaking, I'd prefer for tribesmen to promote up to freemen, where they're going to be easier for me to boost the output of, and they're producing two resources I like, which is tax and manpower. And most of your manpower will be coming from freemen as a republic. Citizens also produce manpower and they produce research points. Now it should be noted that citizens produce much less manpower than freemen. Here in Roma, as a good example, we have 17 citizens and 27 freemen. So what is, let's see here, 17 plus 17 is a bit more. So this is over 50%. So it's something like 60% um, uh, the number of freemen are citizens, if that makes sense. But in terms of their output, it's 41 local manpower versus 97 local manpower. So it's a little hard to explain, but basically each freeman produces more manpower than each citizen produces manpower. But citizens do also produce manpower, and that should not be overlooked. Um, and then they also produce research points. And um, the last population type nobles just produce research points, and they produce more research points per population than citizens. So 17 citizens in Roma produce 4.16 research points, whereas only 11 nobles are producing more, 4.26. So I don't know the math offhand for just this tile, because it'll vary tile by tile, but basically every noble population like entity in each tile is producing more research than um, every single one citizen. And then that's not even factoring in all the modifiers, just even active right now that are affecting citizen and noble output citizen and noble happiness, which also affects output, tons of other modifiers. It's genuinely so complicated, but the main point I want to give here, just as an overview of how population works, is that uh, I'm going to specialize cities uh, to be either um, sort of noble citizen cities, which are going to have a research and manpower focus, because they're going to be getting research from nobles and citizens and manpower from citizens. I'm going to have just a uh, pure manpower cities that are going to focus more on uh, freemen and tribesmen, to some extent mostly freemen. Um, of course, every city will have some amount of every type, but you're going to want to have these cities be specialized for different roles. And then I will have tax cities that are just focused on slaves and to some extent freemen and tribesmen. So again, the population types that are the best producers of, of each of the three resources, research, man manpower, and tax, nobles are the best sort of like most min-max capable pop type for research. Freemen are, I believe, the best for manpower. Yeah, they, they definitely, I think, for sure are the best for manpower. And then slaves are the best for tax. But you can't achieve a city of 100% freemen. No matter how many pop uh, desired ratio modifiers you manage to find for one tile, the best you can do is just sort of push a city in that direction. And you can do this with tiles as well with settlements, but settlements only have one building slot. So your ability to, to min-max settlements is a lot more 
kind of situational and is it going to require more complicated strategies we'll get into that later but for the purposes of cities which can have a ton of building slots and a lot more population capacity you can really have a focus where you know obviously again you can't have a hundred percent nobles in one city but you can have a much larger noble minority than you would normally see without any intervention from the player. So in many ways, choosing what building to build is about, in my experience with this approach, fulfilling the strategy of the tile. So as I noted last time, Roma is going to be a um, sort of a research city, which your capital often should be, as many nobles prefer to live in the national capital. And it's, we're gonna focus on having citizen and noble desired ratio in Roma. So that hopefully kind of explains why I was trying to build citizen desired ratio infrastructure in Roma last episode and give some more context there back to the campaign itself. Now we're still under the leadership of Publius Sempronius Sophus and his co-consul Publius Sulpicius Sawerio, but we also have some new people coming in soon. Um, Publius Cornelius Barbatus and uh, Quintus Fabius Rulianus. Uh, so we'll see when these characters come in, uh, how things get changed up. For now, though, I think we're good to go ahead and continue along with our plans. So one last thing to check really quick. This all looks fine. Uh, yeah, I think we're good to go ahead and uh, check one more thing really quick here. I've used all my PI. All right, so we're good to go. Let's resume. So our feudatories may uh, lower their forces because they think the wars are done. It is what it is. These guys, as we saw last episode, are not particularly reliable on doing anything. Masapia wants access. Masapia wants access with me? What? For what purpose? I don't know um, what they're needing that access from. I'm going to decline that. No, thank you. All right, let's see monthly tick, how much our numbers are re uh, restored. Quite a bit, actually. Um, rising from obscurity. So this is because we became a regional power last time, so we have a new great family appearing here. Roman fortunes are rising. Um, over time, our republic has achieved both greater wealth and power. Traditionally, we've relied on the ability, valor, and dignity of our ancient and honorable families, but with rising fortune, there's also ample opportunity for new men of quality to rise beyond their birth rate. I think the term in Latin is uh, nova somo, or new man. Uh, contacts certainly help when aspiring to join the elite, and there are certainly some families that the parties in our Senate would like us to favor. If we support a candidate endorsed by the parties, it is just as certain that this will upset the current balance of power in the Senate. Among those who aspire to greatness, there is also Lucius Papirius Cursor, who is um, one of our researchers, populare guy, so yeah. Um, a man who has achieved great power without the support of the parties, he would jump at the opportunity to prove himself. So this kind of a uh, lone wolf uh, political uh, sort of figure does make sense being part of the popularist faction that is in line with the lore. So we have a couple options here. We've got the uh, currently uh, armored up uh, Marcus Valerius Corwes over in Magna Gratia. He could be the head of a family. The popularist like this idea because he is from that faction. We could have our current consul, Publius Sempronius Sophus, take up this position and as an optimates him becoming a family head or being part of a great family would very much ideologically be what he would like or and of course the op optimates like this or we could invite this guy here i don't actually recognize uh sabat hold on sebastianus castigliani gatus who is from the boni who yep the boni like this or we could uh, bring in um, this guy noted earlier, one of our researchers, self-made man. Um, let's see here. We lose loyalty from all the party leaders. Okay, so the one that really matters here is Quotowes, who is of course a governor. So he would go down to 33 loyalty. Unknown if that would put him above or below the threshold for loyalty because 33 sometimes seems to count as being above, sometimes counts as below. Because 33 is the, the threshold, but I don't know which way that would round. Knowing this game is probably going to round down because it's a negative, because the game is just uh, predictable like that. Um, this guy would also, let's see what else, gain first generation uh, meritocrat. Um, probably better just to play it safe and act with one of our currently existing family heads. 
or I mean, excuse me, uh, party members. So um, at the minute, and it's all going to change after the the next election. Maybe we'll see some more popularis control achieved, but um, it's probably worth going for whoever has the lowest current approval, which is the popularis, incidentally. Um, so although they we'd be promoting somebody within their faction, they'd prefer. And this is not even the the leader of the party. This is just a um. A, no, this is the leader of the party. What am I talking about? It's probably better for Maracus, whether he is Quadwis. He's also quite old at 73, so there's a good shot. We're not going to have him for too much longer, which means he's also a safer bet. But maintaining his loyalty right now is important as he's leading troops. Um, so, hold on, wait a minute. So, we actually get approval from the Populares for promoting the... Oh, no, 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 that, that's right, the Populares. Okay, um, having Olerius be our fourth great family would be fine. We could go off of just which name sounds the coolest. Castigliani, that sounds quite Italian. Sempronius is a nice name. Or Papirius. I think having Willerius be a great family could be interesting. So I'm going to go ahead just out of pure uh, caution here because all these options are fine. Um, although it should be noted that Publius Sempronius Sophus is a bit younger. He's about 20 years younger. So he's going to be around in politics for a lot longer. But I think for now, having... Malchus Willius Corwes become a new um, family head. I assume he'll be the family head of that family. Should be fine. Popularis approval is welcome at the minute, so let's go for that. All right, how's he feeling loyalty-wise? It's about the same. We'll see if that uh, stays. All right, so we've now got the Fabii, the Claudii, the Cornelii, and the Valerii. Yep, there he is. All right, well, that's fine. Proceed. All right. Um, I'm gonna give these guys one month of reorganization in here, just to be on the safe side. I don't want to walk in with, you know, kind of bad partial morale. Plus, the chance to pick up some food from the area that will be handy, especially for the large army. These three donkeys does increase their. Uh, food storage quite a bit, but they are a, a food consuming, it is a high food consumption army with all these soldiers eating a lot of food, so we need to make sure we're keeping our food uh, topped off as much as possible. You guys arrive here and then get to reorganizing once they arrive. Actually, you guys are going to reorganize, so we'll just leave it there. Apulia wants military access? No. Uh, just keep giving me military access and don't. Uh, I'm not going to give you any in return. That is the Roman way. <laughs> Being unfair to other nations. That is, in fact, actually historically the Roman way. Um, okay. These guys are tributaries, so they're not going to join in. Alright, this is probably fine at this stage. We also have a new civic perk available. Um, I probably want to grab something that gives me a, a national bonus, because this will continue even once this guy's no longer the consul, so... Build cost and build time reduction or pop growth. Probably worthwhile to go ahead and grab uh, pop growth for now, as we don't have enough money coming in to reliably make a good use of this. And then, of course, in about uh, what nine months, we're going to have a new console, anyways. I could wait one more month just to fully tap, max this out, but I don't think that's super necessary. We're probably not going to encounter them until another month has passed, anyways. Let's go ahead and get into position and then declare the war once we're on the border. So just come on down at 7th of March, then we'll proceed. <coughs> Should be fine. Manpower is basically completely tapped out, but that is fine. As noted earlier, take Lucania. Um, so now Brutia, as my feudatory, will join either way, which is perfectly fine. If a feudatory, because one problem of having allies join you is that if they take a provincial capital and they don't give it back to you, that can screw everything up. But if a feudatory takes something and they hold it, which I don't think they're likely to do, I think feudatories, I'm not sure about this, but in my experience, feudatories are a lot more kind of reliable at giving territory that they take directly to you because you're their overlord. Even if they don't, and you can still end the war with them receiving it because they've taken it, you can just take it later when you integrate them. So it's sort of a lot safer for you. So in this war, I don't think Sabinia really needs to be involved. I'm going to just uh, declare the war without Sabinia's involvement once again. Having them as my ally in many ways just kind of continues to cause problems for Etruria's plans. Etruria probably 
will hesitate to attack me because this will break their Sabinian alliance. So I'm going to continue punishing them for that diplomatic blunder that they had allying with Sabinia after I had already allied with Sabinia. So this is fine. Also, Sabinia may become my feudatory later on. I guess we'll see. Oh, they'll do it right now, actually. Sure, let's actually just have them be my feudatory now. I actually didn't think this would be possible quite yet, but they're open to it. All right, so we read this last time. We know how feudatories work. Let us get this going. All right. Now, I believe I'm going to be hitting, or I'll be hit with an event pretty soon, where the rest of my feudatories are mad that I have a lot of new feudatories coming in. Um, feudatories are a very, uh, what's the way to phrase this? Feudatories are a very powerful mechanic, particularly for a nation like Rome that is really built around their role in conquest. So there's all these events that happen where it tries to kind of diminish the power of feudatory relationships by having the feudatories get mad at you for, for bringing in new feudatories. And it gets harder to keep all your feudatories loyal when you have lots of other feudatories. So we'll worry about that later. Even uh, teaming up together, all of my feudatories probably couldn't defeat me in some sort of massive rebellion. Not that that's a serious likelihood. Yeah, okay, so Benia started off their time as my feudatory as a disloyal subject. That's really not a huge problem. Unless this breaks their alliance with, or their feudatory status with me. Which would be a huge problem. Uh... Okay, here's an interesting question. If Sabinia breaks their feudatory relationship with me by being disloyal, because I think if they just if they decline to go into war, I don't remember for feudatories. Does this give me a truce with them? I don't think it does actually. Have we discovered a backdoor way to attack Sabinia? We ally them, make them a feudatory, and then we declare a war while they're disloyal, so that they break the feudatory treaty, not me. Which means they get a truce with me and not vice versa. I don't know, but even if so. Here are all the outcomes from declaring war with Sabinia not joining. A, nothing happens, which would be fine, because I can just integrate Sabinia later, because they stay in my feudatory. B, Sabinia cancels, this cancels the feudatory relationship, but doesn't give me a truce, which is likelier, and would be fine, then I just attack Sabinia later when I have claims on them. Or C, this cancels the feudatory relationship and does give me a truce on them, which wouldn't make sense and would be annoying, but I wasn't planning to attack Sabinia anyways, so this wouldn't really change too much. So I think it's better to do this move with this uncertainty of Sabinia's diplomatic posture in mind. Let's go for it. Okay, so what happened here? Okay, so they're still my feudatory. They're just not in this war, so alright. That is fine. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get to it. So, I'm just going to have um, Korowis go ahead and siege this down because uh, this is not a city, so him sacking it isn't a problem. I'm going to have the main force move up here to the hills. I'm assuming the Lucanian tribal levy, because these guys are tribe, will spawn at their capital, Grumentum. And if they if we can goad them into moving towards... Uh, actually, they're going to have line of sight over here, so they're not, they're not going to know about my larger army. I want to go and sack Pastum, particularly, because this is quite a large city over here in the hills. And then their actual capital may be a sack, because it's a capital, but it's not a city, so hard to say what's going to happen there. But this should be fine either way. Let's just proceed. So these guys want my wood. I want to sell my wood from up here. I think I probably do. I do. Definitely do. Also, um, do I have enough PI now? Uh... I think the cannon might completely control, right? Well, almost. Actually, don't completely control any of these, to be fully honest, because of Sabinia. But I need seven. Okay, never mind. We'll do this next month. Peter is coming in. Etruria wants to trade with me. That's interesting. I'll trade with Etruria. Sure. Uh, that means they're probably not planning my demise, which is fine. Um, kind of wish that would though. I don't know what, I, what else I can do. I've already insulted them. I guess I can insult them again. This cast a spell I will... Uh, what's the uh, time limit here? Not that one. Here it is. January 1st, 456. So I guess January 1st of 450... Well, yeah, January 1st of 456 is the expiration date. So on that day, I will cancel... Or I'll do another insult just to keep the, uh, the chances going. Because then there's still a year before I can attack them. Or, or a year and a bit, actually. So that's fine. 20th of March. Alright. Um, okay, here's uh, the Lucanian tribal levies. 
So as expected, they do have some numbers, but nothing that's going to be a problem for us. These guys are booking it out of here, led by the eight Marshal uh, Baulis Lutiginius. These guys know how to avoid death, but these guys here, led by the slightly less martially inclined uh, Tullus Pomponius and Marcus Unius. These guys are in some serious trouble. Let's uh, head on in here. Incidentally, um, the... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, never mind. Um, let's move on in. 28th of March. This should be perfectly fine. We're not going to be able to get away in time. Yeah, I what I was saying earlier is, I'm trying to remember if this was correct, but I believe it is. Also, one step to half left. Um, the, uh, the famous, uh, the Junii, or the Unii, are from this area. That's why, um, uh, the guy, I, I don't see him, but basically, um, the, the most famous or infamous, uh, member of that family is, uh, Brutus, of, uh, assassinating, you know, Julius Caesar fame. But his family's from southern Italy, if I remember correctly. And they're a pretty important early patrician family in Roman history. If I'm remembering that right, I may be wrong about that. But I've seen other uh, places that reference that family coming from the south. But they also had a role in the overthrow of the Etruscan kings. So maybe I'm wrong about that. I, I don't know, honestly. I know a lot about Roman history, but there are some things that are just a little beyond what I do know. So let's bring these guys down to maybe take over the siege. With 2k men, they should be able to siege this just fine. It would take 1k because it's a level 1 fort. So this fight, by the way, is going to go just fine. At first, once access, no. No access for you. Get off of my peninsula, please. Alright. Alright, so we just stack wiped the forces here. That's pretty brutal. Alright, goodbye, uh, Tullus Pomponius. Alright. Um, this force here can just maneuver around because they aren't bothered by the fort uh, access. Actually, I cannot reach Pastum, can I? I cannot, because I can't go through... Yeah, the fort blocks me. Well, that's too bad. Let's just come down with our men here and just get on the siege as well. I may end up just doing an assault to kind of clear the way so I can go reach the city, which I... Well, hold on. I won't be able to, to sack this if I take the fort first. That's not the problem. What I really need... Oh, hello, Samnium. Why are you offering this? Okay. So I, I sort of uh, speculated last episode that Samnium would inextricably offer me military access... The AI, if there's one thing that the Imperid Room AI can always be counted upon, it's absolutely loving to give you military access when you're at war. They have zero qualms. I have seen negative 200 opinion neighbors just fall over the, themselves, like, running to offer me military access in a war that is nowhere near them. Like, there's something in the code that, like, it's like a, it's like a kill switch, but instead it's a offer military access with no problem switch. Like, it's... It's so ex over the top. So, all right, so these guys will come on in. Let's wait for these guys to arrive, then we'll move out and have them replace the siege. And then we'll just go over a sack, paste them, come back over, and then maybe do an assault. Because we can then move through here. Incidentally, our uh, truce with Samnium is up when? So February 456, so probably too long to sort of chain this war into that war. I have no other claims ready either. I don't have the, uh, the PI to get more claims, but we do have the claim on Samnium uh, from the events before, or from the, um, what do you call it, from the uh, the mission before, so we can just wait for 456. We probably will have to. All right, so can you come? 11th of uh, April. These guys are backing off. Okay, here comes Brutia to get killed by Lucania. Very strange. Um, oh, I mean, that, that's why the marshal <laughs> and the numbers... And the terrain, 14th of April. Yeah, Brutia shouldn't make this move. I don't know what they're thinking. Okay, I guess Lucania also decided not to make that move. Interesting. All right. Um, if I leave... Okay, here's a problem. If I leave just Quotawis here, it's going to get sniped by this larger army, which will probably beat him just fine. What I'll do is I'll just separate away some cav to basically go on a little raid uh, over to the city... 500 should be just fine. This four should move quite quickly. Army movement speed of, of just four. These guys will basically swing around through the military access, go snipe, paste them, which might be doable. Uh, Lucania, do they have access through Elia? They do, so these guys may be attacked. But I think I can do this quick enough with the cap to then get away in time. I'm going to allow attachments to the nearby Nucarian army. 
may consider coming in to defend this cab. This is just a little attempt to get the city before the siege is done. We'll just leave this force here to manually siege it in the meantime, because I just want to get the city sacked with my leader, which is the whole point of the cab, before I take the fort, or the capital, which will lead to the city being occupied automatically and becoming unsackable. So this is the move. Also, we have enough PI now to do another change. Probably want to switch over um, Pekenum, definitely, with its population to cultural assimilation. All right, that's going to have to do for now. Keep doing that as we get more PI. Okay, Brute is going to keep uh, holding these guys in place with these weird suicide attacks. All right, Brute. Um, if you think this is a good use of your men, that is your decision to make. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to uh, intervene in that planning. As expected, Brute is struggling here. These guys want grain from Latium. I think we want to keep all of our Latium grain at the minute. Yeah. Ideally, I would actually just sell my grain and then trade in grain, so I can sort of double dip on grain commerce. But ultimately, I don't have enough trade slots for that kind of grain min-maxing quite yet, so... Dude, I bet you didn't think grain min-maxing was a term you'd ever hear, but here we are in uh, my wonderful world of Imperial Rome playing. Alright, looks like Lucania figured out what I'm doing, and they're running right over. This is going to be a quick move. I don't think we're going to have the time to siege down Pastum. Oh, you know what the problem is? Nucari doesn't have access through Samium. And I don't think they're going to figure out how to ask for access either, so... Alright, um... I may not be able to pull this off with this army here. I'm just going to go ahead and start... Actually, I'm going to go into Irna. These guys have access through Samium. No. I'm just going to go hide in, in Samnite territory and wait for them to kind of move further away. Although now I can't see where they are. But I know they don't have access through Samium. At least I can keep checking on that. Okay, they're just going to defend. Okay, this is some smart playing by Lucania. I'm actually genuinely impressed by this uh, seemingly very basic you know, decision-making, but they know they can't retake their capital siege. They're just going to protect their city that they see as vulnerable. All right. Genuine moment of um, of a kind of approval of this game's combat AI. The rare time I compliment it, but this is pretty smart. This game's the AI is generally much better at the preparation part and like having a good stockpile of money and resources, not so much the actual strategy of war. So it's always nice to see little moments of sort of glimmering or sort of glit. Or what's the term? Kind of a a glance, you know, like a little little uh, spotting of the intelligence of this AI deep beneath layers of goofball code. Love that. All right, so given that our manpower is already pretty low, we could just do an assault anyways. Uh, it's not like we're going to preserve any manpower by not doing it, but let's wait and see if we get a breach. Also, uh, this is a low levels of garrison here, so let's see what we get here. Supply shortage. All right, this, this is a pretty damaged garrison. We're going to be able to do an assault just fine. We're going to miss out on the sack. It is what it is. Um, incidentally, who lives here? Please tell me it is... Uh, What's the population? Okay, it is mostly Lucanians, it's not Italiotians. That is good. The Lucanians are of the Italic culture group, whereas the Italiotians are Greek, so these, this place is going to be a lot easier to assimilate to Roman. Okay, so this place over here should go ahead and get assaulted then. We're, we can miss out on the city, not the end of the world. Order the assault. It's going to be under Maracus Valerius Corus, which I think should be fine. I guess to be a little on the over careful side, we're going to move him out of here just uh, go back over. And we'll do the assault without him present, so we maybe be, are able to sack this place. This hills tile with no city present um, is certainly not going to be... Uh, yeah, th this place is fine to depopulate a little bit from the sack. Then we have a couple days before these guys catch us over here in the hills. Alright, so same plan. Let's just do an assault here. This should be fine, numbers-wise. Looks like it was a sack here. I'm glad I did that move. The sacking of Grumentum. Publius Sempronius Sophus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Grumentum. The enemy fleeing disgrace and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war are like the Cosmos back in Roma. To admire Publius greatly, believing such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. All right. Okay, so uh, we should be able to get away with none shall hide. Also, we just killed one population here population we're talking about here should result in two population remaining which for a hills tile with sheep is perfectly fine we're not going to keep this as the capital by any means plus we want the money 
none shall hide. Okay, um, let's go ahead and move you back in here just for safety, and we'll wait for this stuff to transfer over. Uh, actually, I might be able to sneak in here and grab this before it fully transfers over. Let's give this a try. Let's see if these guys react. They do not react. Okay, good. We may be able... I don't know for sure, because sometimes, like right now, it's not displaying if the control change is happening over here. But I think it should be, just not in a way that's being displayed. So it's going to be kind of unpredictable whether we can siege this before the control takes it. If we can't get the siege off here, that's fine. We got what we came for anyways, which is to win the whole thing anyways. So it should be fine. Okay, you guys are getting out of there in time. That's good. Everyone just stay put. All right, let's see if the control happens over here. The control change happens. Did not, actually. Okay, that's interesting. Um, I don't know how to explain that, but I'll get another sack off here. Sacking of Pastum, uh, raided by a 500 horseman army led by our consul. Very interesting little situation here. Publius Sempronius Sophus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Pastum. The enemy flee in disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war, like the Casas back in Roma, to admire Publius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. Okay, so this place here is a bit more populated to Slave Santa Canusium, by the way. Um, this is a hills tile on the water, and I'm sure I'll find a better location than that for my capital. Although this entire area is just hills everywhere. There's a plains tile here, actually, but it's right next to other... Oh, well, I'll worry about that later. For now, this place definitely could survive. None shall hide. 80 gold for this. Uh, which is pretty good. We kill some uh, local slaves. Not a huge problem. None shall hide. Okay. Um, why is this not transferring exactly? I don't have a good answer to that. Unclear, but I think with the score we have, can we just get this directly? They won't agree to it, which is pretty unusual. I don't know why they're so hesitant. So let's just go fight them in the field. But we just did an assault, so I may need to wait a little bit for my... I get one tick of recovery. I mean, we're going to win that fight with these numbers and the difference of those numbers, but it would be expensive. Although, we're uh, going to be out of manpower anyways. We're going to lower right after, so it should be fine. Um, let's have you back out into the safety of Samium, which is a sentence no Roman would ever think to say. And then we'll see if we can catch these guys up here in uh, the hills. 7th of July. We're gonna go for it. We got the monthly tick. That's gonna have to do for us. This should be fine. We also got the leadership of Corwis, which will boost up this force quite a bit. Alright, so let's just kill these guys. Hopefully killing the army gets us enough war score to just end this thing off. Alright, the battle of um, Con Silinum. Looks good. Brutia coming in to help out. Appreciate that, Brutia. Was not necessary, but I will take the help. That is nice to see. All right, this should be enough force for now. No, not quite. Okay. Well, I guess we'll finish them off over here in what should be... Where are they retreating to? Do they have more territory? Uh... I'm just going to follow them down here. I don't know exactly what's going on with their um, territory. We're not transferring over. This is pretty strange. I'm going to move the horses over as a reserve. Let's just uh, finish them off. We should be able just to continue the attacks, especially with the monthly tick now. Should be fine just to make this attack here. Um, is this going to be an attack? It is. Okay, good. This should be fine. Okay, again, we're taking. We're basically out of manpower, which is fine. After this war, we're going to calm down, and then we'll just do the Sam Knight War next once that truce is up. I think that's probably going to be the move we make here. No need to push it too far here. <laughs> I gotta have some main power in reserve, just in case. You know, who knows? Maybe Carthage attacks or something really crazy like that. A slacker student. We keep hearing complaints that Lu uh, Lucius Julius Libo, who is some kid. Who the hell is this? Um, well, he's the son of. You'd never guess it. Uh, Lucius Julius Libo. Wow, that's a shocker. Um, who? Uh, I am teaching? What the f- what? <laughs> what, the f what is- what? <laughs> um, okay, so apparently this random kid is my ward? Uh, Alright, um, so we're taking a break from the the conquest of Rome's enemies to deal with this little 
pipsqueak. Um, anyway, so he's been avoiding his daily, or ignoring his daily lessons, avoiding the study of Greek grammar, and instead racing around on his favorite horse, Ungula Fulgens. Even at his tender age, Lucius is known for his prowess with writing. Truthfully, the child is better than men twice his age, and Publius Sempronius Sophus can hardly blame the boy for wanting a bit of excitement, but the commoners are starting to complain, saying that a higher standard should be set for a member of her family. Is this guy related to me? I don't think so. His father's not in a great family at all. He's also the son of a populare, so I don't know what the hell... I don't know how this arrangement came to be that we're, like, this guy's, like, babysitter, but here we are. That's Rome for you. Um, I could give this guy intimidating for 37.94 gold, or let him get dull. Okay, whatever. Let the child play. What harm is there? Maybe he'll become a great horseman that we'll be able to make use of later on. That'd be interesting. But for now, it's fine just to wipe these guys out. This should be a stack wipe, since we were chasing that horse. At least of the force we were chasing. Alright, this should be enough. Still? Oh my god, alright. That's, a. Uh... Wow. Alright, monthly tick should bring us enough. I'm really surprised. Actually, you know what? Um, let's just stay here and just take this tile, um, and that'll be enough. So these guys, uh, for some reason, have infinite endurance. Like, these guys can take uh, all the beating in the world, and they're not gonna, you know, change their tune. I don't know how to explain that, but that is uh, how they are. Let's go ahead and switch this over to assimilation as well. Make sure we're spending our PI whenever we can for that sort of stuff. All right, one slave sent to Canusium, and this should definitely be enough. Okay, good. And although we don't border this directly, we're taking it through our C connection from Neapolis, because we're, I think the rule is when you're within two C tiles, because we were able to do that up here. But in this case, we're within one C, we're within the same C tile, so this is perfectly fine. Five AE is completely manageable. So uh, Lucian, Luciana to Rome, and Lucian, Apulia to Rome. All right, here we go. The Lucian Elite. After a protracted conquest, we have finally routed the Lucian armies and laid waste to their lands. During the sacking of their capital, many important prisoners were taken, many of them having previously held important positions in the Lucian clan council. They now languish in our dungeons, awaiting whatever fate we decide to impose upon them. Alrighty. Um, I'm, I'm, I need to let my tyranny go down a little bit. Um, tyranny as a republic isn't necessarily a huge problem. The main issue is it affects the uh, loyalty of characters and your threshold. But at the minute, I mean, ignore this because this is a glitch because of all the new Lucian characters I just got. Um, I think at the minute this is fine. Also, provincial loyalty is worth noting as well. I think for now, losing some AE is probably better because we're going to be gaining AE pretty regularly in this campaign. So always probably good to get some AE reduction. Alrighty, so we're going to banish and execute people in a sort of off-screen capacity. We've got enough money for now for our needs. Banish those a class and put the rest to the sword. Alright, very good. And then let's lower the army, see what we're dealing with now. So, four months it says there, but let's actually see. Looks like it's going to be eight months, that is completely fine. And if we are declared upon, that will reset automatically, we'll refresh to being able to raise them. You guys here can go... Oh! Well. Isn't that interesting. Uh, what's the problem here? How did his power base get higher when I lowered his levy? That, oh, he's near death as well. Um, can I do things with a disloyal? I can't. It's just the problems with disloyal. I can't fire him, though, because he's disloyal. So, Okay, so I have a bunch of random parts of different provinces, so I sort of... My ability to do a lot of micro here with like the capital and stuff is limited, as all, the capital is going to move around as I take territory. Else, otherwise, um, incidentally, in uh, Lucania, the best tile is probably Heraclea, which is farmland on the coast. No river in Terra Domina. In the original map, there actually is a minor river over here, but the Terra Domina version, for some reason, removes it. Not sure what that's about, but Heraclea is farmland on the river, so that's a pretty good tile. It's definitely the best tile in the area, and we have to fight, obviously, Heraclea for that. Heraclea is in there defensively with Croton, that they start with. They're not in there defensively with Tar uh, Tarentum anymore, which is interesting, but they're also allied with Thuria. So it would be a little fight against, uh, or not a little fight, it would be a fight against all the little Greek city-states over here, which would be completely manageable. Could have potentially kept my army up and just gone to war with them right away, but actually, do I have a claim on them? They have a claim on me, so I don't have a claim on them, so I could have done it anyways. 
Um, I can also fight these guys through a claim on any of the people involved in this alliance network. I think claiming here clay directly is our priority here, but for now we don't have access to that claim, so that is what it is. Over here in Pastum, this place is probably getting demoted. More tyranny, so that's uh, lovely. But this is a hills city, which is not particularly good, so let's just demote this. We can make this a lumber area later. Um, aside from that, any other buildings of note? Also, the, the capital became the central location of Con Silinum, which is fine for now. A bit vulnerable to Samnium, but we'll worry about that later. This fort over here uh, probably can go, honestly. Let's make some money. Some planes on the, on the uh, ocean there. Alright, and then over here... Okay, the the capital uh, ended up moving to Canusium from Lucaria. I think I don't think I moved that capital myself. Honestly, don't remember. But um, incidentally, um, fortifying Canusium is not a terrible idea. This fort may not be finished before the Samnite truce is up, but uh, this place is going to be probably the permanent city over here. It already has a large population, which we can just focus on assimilating to become Roman as it is mostly uh, Masopian, which of course is an Illyrian population, not an Italian population. So this place is going to be pretty unhappy no matter what I do. Um, alternatively, we could have uh, Bartolos eventually. It's, it's not owned by me right now, but we could have this eventually be the capital. Also farmland, also on a mine river like Canusium. I think Canusium is in a slightly better location. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, as opposed to one, two, three, four. So more fort coverage from Canusium. Um, lining up wise, uh, over here, I think I said Histonium is my likely place here. So Histonium is the right distance away. Well, it's not really, it's a bit too far away from Canusium, so that is one problem. But um, another thing to consider is that um, Heraclea is just a little far from Canusium. It is the right distance from here because of this, these two spots here. So Bardolos does line up with Heraclea better. And um, if I were to have this be the capital, and then I had his system, so that'd be that, that'd be that. And then what I could do is I could actually have a fort in Urium to cover the coastline. So I would have uh, all of my coastlines be fortified. Here on the peninsula, keeping my coastlines uh, all have within line of, uh, line of coverage for forts will protect me from naval invasions, which is one vulnerability of living on the peninsula is it's very invadable navally. Um, particularly um, if uh, someone uh, with an AI that has a lot of uh, armies on multiple navies, if I have any uh, space in my fort coverage on the coastline, that could be a problem. So, all that noted, I think there's an argument for eventually having Bartolos be the capital. But on the other hand, Canusium would also work, given that over here, I think I said I want Neapolis to be the capital. That and Kappa would both work okay. Capua is a little... well, it's too far away from my core over there, so... Um, there's not a lot of other great spots over here, so I think uh, Neapolis is the best spot over here, all things considered. Um, so, if Capua... or sorry, Neapolis is the capital, that means that... Um, uh, we'll worry about that later. For now, I think it is probably... it'd just be so much easier to keep Caduceum as the capital, because I could fortify it with no fear. Um, the other question is, when do I actually fight Apulia? It's possible Epirus takes this before I can even get over here. I don't know what Epirus is up to, by the way. They're just at war from afar. Okay, unclear. Let's worry about all this later. I think for now, um, fortifying Canusium doesn't seem to be super necessary. We'll just leave it as it is. If anything, if this gets sacked, it's non-Romans being enslaved, which, you know, it's a little messed up to say, but is going to make my management of the province easier if I'm losing some of that non-Roman population. So we shall see what happens with that. Anyways, getting back over to Marcus Valerius Corvus. Uh, he is nearly dead, so we're just going to wait this out. Um, I don't think I need to worry too much about that. Let's just proceed. So I can go down. I'll, I'll keep my remainders at full at the minute. I mean, while Etruria or Samnium could attack me at any minute, I want to keep army maintenance fully paid. Our economy is just fine at the minute, so we can maintain this. Same thing with fort maintenance. While these nations remain here, we're really not safe enough to lower those things. So I'd rather, you know, spend a bit of extra money here just to ensure we have no serious problems than uh, otherwise. 
Okay, so that other guy being displayed here doesn't exist. Tiberius Hostilius, that's a great name for this level character. Rebellious tendencies. It seems the people of Marzia feel robbed after becoming a client state under our rule, and they are looking for opportunities to get out of the alliance. Though they are recent allies, they have played an important role in our armies already. Maybe it is time for some concessions to calm them down. Um, I don't really want to upset any of my feudatories here, so I could give them land. This would give them Peltunum and uh, Albafucans, I believe. Which would probably be fine. This is all territory that I could just eventually get anyways. And this would actually move the capital automatically to the other, the other territory I have in the area, which is Aeternum, which is probably a better spot for it. Although, eventually, as I said before, um, Histonium is going to be the location, but I have to integrate them anyways. Or I can just pay them money and lose PI. Uh, getting the opinion is kind of nice, though. Hmm. Losing this land would be probably fine. There is a fair bit of population here, though, it should be noted. Uh, I haven't set up the policy yet, so I wouldn't lose out on that. And this also would still be in effect over here. There's no manpower coming from here, nothing even... There's one manpower here, it's rounding up to one. I think this would be fine. I'm worried about an event chain where the other feudatories see this and they start demanding land as well. I don't remember if that's possible, but it might be. Um... I'll just pay them off. Uh, the PI is the most painful part of this, but the extra opinion. We can go into the negative PI with no downside. We just have to wait. Wait it out, so it is what it is. Samnium wants military access? No. In fact, I'm going to cancel my access with Samnium, just so we don't have that hanging around as we uh, potentially fight them later on. So that's fine. <sighs> Okay, diplomacy wise, how do my feudatories feel? Not a lot of loyalty is sitting around here. Election soon, 1st of January, 455. All right, that is to be expected. Yeah, so it looks like uh, Publius, Cornelius, Barbatos, and um, Quintus, Fabius, Rulianus will become our new characters. We'll take a look at them after the election to sort of see what's going on with that. Grain, not from Latium, so no. That's a Carthage up to. Ooh, nothing good. Ooh, they're actually on mainland uh, peninsula now. They're taking this stuff here. Okay, that's a bit of a problem. They're in Magna Gratia. I was okay letting them... Or, I mean, they were in Magna Gratia before. This is all part of Magna Gratia. But I was more okay with them muscling into Sicily, because I'm not in a position to contest it yet. But they're entering mainland Magna Gratia, which is a bit more of a problem. But there's sort of nothing I can do. I'm really not in a position to fight Carthage. These guys, even on land, are a very uh, imposing force. They've just uh, completely deleted Syracuse from existence. Uh, basically no trouble. So, uh, we really need to kind of get our Italian affairs in order before Carthage uh, gets too much further north. Fortunately, I don't think Carthage will feel comfortable uh, fighting me at the minute. Because attacking Brutia does bring me in, because I'm Brutia's overlord. Me and my vassal swarm. So, um, oh man, this is now kind of tense. Would they go for that? I mean, I don't think their mission tree has them go this far north quite yet. They're going to focus more on their uh, expanding the stuff they already have and focusing on Africa. So, I don't think their AI would risk attacking Brutia to bring me in, because they see my military strength. This is tense to be sure. It may be worthwhile actually building some sort of relationship with Hippon, uh, Hippon, Hipponian to also hold Carthage back from this side. These guys are fighting Samnium. Hmm. I might be able to... Hold on, does Syracuse still exist somewhere? They do actually, in the hills. I might be able to get into war with Samnium through being called in by Hipponian if I ally with them. We do technically have three open slots um, so this is one interesting way that this could happen. It might be worthwhile to actually go for this now. Samnium does have their armies raised, but they can't do anything. This is probably why they were asking for military access from me. They don't have any ships, but they have one ship at the minute, but it's all, it's all being constructed still. So they can't actually fight these guys. Unclear how this war actually began. Um, Samnite Alean War. Oh, they're attacking Alea. Well, that's interesting. So Alea lost their... 
Garantor, which was um, Lucania, and then Sam Samnite. Samnium immediately was confident enough to attack Alea, and then Le Alea is allied with Hipponian, so that's how this happened. Okay. I could also uh, ally with Alea instead. I think I'd rather ally with Hipponian. So, um, I think one problem with this plan is this wouldn't give me the refresh on the army, so I'm going to wait until this army is re-raisable and then go for it if it's still looking solid. This will shave off about a year from our wait to fight Samnium. Uh, and it'll be after the election, so we'll be able to enjoy the new dynamics of the government. Um, hold on. My consul Antigonos Hecatiades from Thuria has arrived. Thuria. Um, is that so? Okay. All right. The last of the Ar Arg Yar Last of the Arg Argiraspides. One of the fabled veterans from the Silver Shields, the backbone of Alexander's army, is requesting a place to stay in Rome. They have not often been seen after they betrayed Eumenes by handing him over to Antigonos. As the unit was split up and dismissed by the general, it, seem, it seems Antigonos uh, Hecateides was banished from Thuria. Magna Gratia. Um, I guess he was living over here. I could invite this guy in. Um, uh, He's Macedonian. No, he can be loiter for a while. I'm not going to give him any special status. I would prefer not to have any non-Roman characters involved in my in my situation here if I can. Please and thank you. These guys are just going to continue being confused without any access. Army becomes ready again, fourth of or I mean uh, May of next year. So four months is what I was trying to say earlier. All right. A minor addendum. Uh, Quintius Fabius Rulianus, our soon-to-be co-consul, has suggested a small addendum to an often-referenced law pertaining to the rights of the common folk. Should only be a small effort to push this through the Senate. Yes, please. A six stability for ten pair. Going to delay our PI even more, but I really want the stability. Definitely a good uh, trade-off here. A small investment couldn't hurt. All right. Now our low stability or our low PI may be a problem once this election happens, as often elections come with a lot of PI expensive events and, and uh, bribes and buyouts and whatnot. We'll see what happens. I think this is going to be okay though. All things considered. Here we go. Publius Cornelius Barabatus now rules our glorious nation. Seven, six, six, eight, so sort of a straight um, I think he's about the same. Actually, actually I don't remember if he's a, a bit better or a bit worse. I think he's a little bit better overall than the previous Publius, but he's fine. Optimates are in control, which means we continue the 12% national level happiness. All of our factions got new missions, so we'll take a look at that in just a second. Actually, we'll take a look at it right now. First, though, let's give this guy a, um, a mission, or rather a focus. Uh, for his five-year term, I'm thinking finesse is the way to go to increase our finesse bonuses. Let me see, actually. Okay, so it looks like um, Quintus Fabius Rulianus is giving us good martial and good finesse. So, boosting this guy's martial or finesse sort of wouldn't do anything. I think boosting his charisma may be the way to go to re increase our tyranny reduction and claim fabrication speed. Let's go for that. So, oratory focus. We'll just throw him onto um, foreign affairs focus. That sounds fine. Also, uh, make sure we select Scheme Influence. And he's got some very cute little, uh, looks like twin daughters. Interesting. And an actual wife in the game. That is very exciting to see. Um, yeah, so that looks good. Okay, and then as for our new consul, so Publius Cornelius Barabatus, as noted before, is from the Optimates faction. He, uh, trait wise, he is prominent. When Publius Cornelius Barabatus speaks, people listen. Uh, the most important thing to note here is probably the province commerce 10%, so all of Italia will have better commerce. So I can already see our economy seems to have improved from this guy being the new governor, so that's handy. Um, he's also good-natured. A pleasant demeanor and polite acknowledgements go a long way towards making friends. So one extra friend. Um, subject to opinion of us plus five, while this guy is the consul, is handy. Um, He's humble, a healthy respect for one's own place in the grand scheme of things is what keeps Publius going. 
Freeman output 3% is great. Tribute income minus 10% isn't so great, so we're a bit less manpower overall from the uh, feudatories, but that shouldn't be a huge problem. And then he has the blood of the Cornelii. The Gens Cornelia is one of the greatest patrician houses at, uh, at Rome, and it extends its history to the early years of the Roman Republic, given to the later, giving to the later many no. Okay, this entire like box is just, you know, it's weirdly spelled or weirdly phrased. Giving to the latter many notable statesmen, Cornelii were numbered among the Gentes Maioris, the most important and powerful families of Rome who for centuries dominated the Republican magistracies. So uh, extra heavy infantry offense for his levy, which is phenomenal because he's going to lead a large levy, including many heavy infantry. And then more 5% national commerce income as the ruler for everywhere, so that's great. And then he is cruel. Suffering and productivity come hand in hand. That is according to Publius, at least. More likely to murder his way to the top. Extra slave output as governor, and then, um, so within uh, uh, Italia. And then extra tyranny as the ruler, so that's great, but that's fine. And then, I'm not going to read everything, but his uh, co-consul is victorious, prominent, devout, blood of the Fabii, and obsessive, so that is uh, good to know, I guess. Okay, um, so what do we have here? We've got ourselves a continued optimatis um, sort of dominance, although the popularis have gained a bit and the boni have declined a little bit, and everyone is quite happy with the situation. We've got high approval across the board. Um, so we know how this works. The Optimatis are giving us more noble output. Optimatis want us, by the way, to uh, grant five holdings. As we saw last episode, sometimes they're going to force the issue, but only ask for three holdings. So we'll just wait and see if they do that. These guys want us to build ten or have 11 buildings in the Roma, which is certainly possible to do in the next five years. Possibly going to pull that off there. And this one says to revoke five holdings from family heads. Also possible, we shall see. Incidentally, at this stage, our two expected uh, new consuls in five years are Appius Claudius Caicus, who's one of our researchers, and a and he's the family head, or excuse me, the party head of the Boni, and then um, Publius Valerius Saverio, who is our is this the character that we were just playing as, or was the uh, no, this is a different Publius Valerius Saverio. Hold on, wait a minute. Um, Made up by gold. Where's my gold number? Is there a gold number? Maybe not. Short by faction. Let me find the character I was just playing as. What's his name? He has a similar name. I just want to double check something. It's around here somewhere. Yeah, Publius Sempronius Sofa. So yeah, I was getting the middle name mixed up. Oh well, that's fine. As for the omen, um, it might be worthwhile to go for Minerva to get the extra morale of armies. Could be a good option here. Can't invoke Yuno quite yet because uh, we don't. It's not been. Uh, we haven't had her for long enough to invoke her. Could invoke Mercury for the extra commerce income. Never a terrible idea. Economy is doing quite well even without any economic bonuses. You can see our commerce economy is really starting to get going. It's going to quickly catch up to and outpace our tax economy, which often is what happens in the early game. Could also go for Mars for the Discipline, which would be quite handy. Lots of good options here. Um, I think given our numbers advantage in most fights, the extra morale actually matters more than Discipline. So Minerva for the extra morale is a pretty solid option. We could always go Pluto for the tax once again, but I don't think we need that at the minute. Uh, Westa for the stab change could also be quite good. There's so many good options here. Um, I think this five-year period is going to mostly be defined by us fighting Samnium, and then maybe also Etruria, probably also Etruria, actually, because both these claims will be usable at least by the middle of this five-year period. So going, these are both going to be pretty, I mean, the Samnite War should be pretty straightforward. Etruria is a more uh, significant opponent and will require some more strategy. I think I will defeat them pretty easily just directly in terms of land combat, but they are more, uh, more spacious land, and they do have more soldiers than we're going to be used to seeing, so... Definitely want to approach that carefully. All that in mind, worshipping Minora for the morale bonus does help offset the hard difficulty, so that is probably worth going for. So, rumors say the goddess once hailed from Libya, but now she is fully a part of the Hellenic pantheon and plays an important role as the goddess of wisdom, crafts, and war. Unlike her male counterpart, she is usually seen as a patron for more tactical and strategic type of warfare, and they are known for opposing each other at Troy in many of their famous land, uh, battles. 
She is the patron of the city of Athens. Of course, Minerva is the Roman name for Athena, um, and the largest, with the largest temple dedicated in her honor standing at its Acropolis. Incidentally, in terms of gods of war that I would probably be uh, more better compared to, it would be Minerva over Mars, because I'm more of a strategy leader than like a brute force type military leader. But this is a grand strategy game, so I don't know what game would let you play that kind of approach. Um, and anyways, <laughs> let's go for Minerva for this five-year period. Very good. Army's ready in May, so we'll just wait for that. Uh, this guy here is near death, as noted earlier, so I think we just have to wait him out. I don't technically need his levy super badly for the Samnium War, so we'll just wait and see what happens with that. Aside from that, we have our positions to refill because of those people that left. Um, let's see here. We could bring in Claudia Prima to be our new Pontifex Maximus. She would make one of her families grateful, which I think is fine for the Roman factions. I don't think the Populars have a problem with that. I guess we'll see um, if she has a 9 zil, so she is really solid for that position. Grateful families. Okay, so it does... The Populars don't like uh, families being grateful, so I, I didn't say that earlier, so... This is some wonderful UI design where it just doesn't tell you how that works until it happens, so... Great. We could replace her with someone who's not from that family. Uh, we could bring in, actually, Publius Sempronius Sophus, actually. Having a former consul become the Pontifex Maximus is uh, very much not how that worked in uh, Roman history. If you don't know, the Pontifex Maximus was meant to be a... Um, well, maybe, maybe this is more later on, but it's it was meant to be a track that kept somebody out of politics because that position had a lot of special rules about what you can and can't do, including anything that you needed to do to become the consul. If you don't know, um, I'm not going to get into a, a huge spiel about it, although it is very interesting. Roman culture was very ritual-based, and basically everything you did involved like a trillion like rituals and thing and different gods you had to communicate with, and like all these different steps. It was an extremely ritualistic culture in a way that's often overlooked now. Um, and basically, if there's any one thing that can be said in summary about the change in Roman culture from the Republican period to like the Imperial period. It was the kind of decline of the focus of their society on these rituals and the emergence of, um, or really these rituals coming from the state, and it moved over to rituals that were focused on uh, sort of apparatuses that weren't really in the control of the state, like the growing, you know, religion of Christianity, which of course the state of Rome merged with once it was able to, but ultimately the sort of government of Rome never reclaimed its um, its sort of power position over the church portion. That's a whole other story, but whatever the case, Publius Sempronius Sophus would be fine for this position. He does have a lot of statesmanship for what that's worth. We could also assign a new Tribunus uh, Militum. Let's do that. Publius Decius Mus would be fine. Uh, this guy is very, very qualified. Nine Marshal. Looks good to me. Bring him in. There we go. All right, no need to change any laws, I don't think. And all my other positions look like they're fine. This lady here, perhaps, is a little, well, uh, two of two. I'm gonna leave that there. Unless there's somebody else from her family we can bring in the Secunda. Yeah, we actually could bring in Cornelia Secunda. This could be an option. Hmm. This could be an option. Hold on, I'm gonna be right back. Someone's knocking at my door. Give me just a quick sec. Okay, never mind. There was nobody there, so don't know what that was about. More paranormal activity <laughs> here in the in my apartment as I'm doing the room campaign. That's fine. Anyways, uh, I don't want to get too fixated on this particular decision, but I think the nine finesse here will be better. So let's bring her in. All right, that's fine. She can be our new Will Nerarius. Okay, um, and then aside from that, things are looking solid on the economy front. And uh, once we can re-raise our army, we'll send them in. We may not actually need fort maintenance for the Samnium War, to be fully honest. Assuming that I get called in in that way. I'll keep it on, though, just in case a Truria attacks. I think there's no reason to play around here. In terms of my uh, imports and exports, I think things are looking okay. And obviously there's food problems because it's winter right now. 
It might be worth actually trading in even more food, just to be on the safe side. Um, I, I really don't want to lose out on the gold trade, though, or the glass trade. So we may have to lose out on the wood trade, just to bring in some more food. I think it does have to happen. Um, I could start trading for permanent vegetables, just to get the permanent slave move cost, which I don't think I... Uh, it's probably better just to trade for grain for even more food, to be honest. Yeah, let's just trade for more grain. Trade with Egypt. No need to overthink it. Alright. Already doing the um, the Egyptian grain trades, which is going to be a uh, permanent feature of this campaign, I think. Very likely. Alright, so uh, these guys want military access for me. I might agree to this just so they're likely. Or they're going to be my ally either way, so we'll just become their ally once we... Uh, are in position to attack Samnium, which will be soon. Incidentally, Samnium will basically, once the war is declared, rush right in to our territory here and immediately be able to grab all this, which isn't ideal, but there's sort of not much I can do about that. Just have to proceed. Farming settlement is finished over here in Frey, Free Galay, which we've already set up here with the slaves, so we've got more than enough slaves over here. Very good. So more uh, wheat for more grain, rather, for this. Uh, so with 42 <laughs> local monthly food, come on. I know it's winter, but even with that, we're still uh, starving to death. Yeesh, all right, yeah, this is pretty grim. You know, I definitely have to put some work in to get our food infrastructure up. Really feeling the effect of that realistic food setting. This is a uh, pretty dramatic, but this is what we have to do. All right, um, what I could do is raise my army we don't have tr uh, access to these guys, though. I could get access, move my army over here, and then remove access, and then wait the month, and then join the war. <laughs> like, this is a bit convoluted, but there is a way to get my army over to this side to fight Samnium right away, which I would prefer to do rather than abandon all this to Samnite conquest, if possible. I think it is probably worthwhile to do just that. So, 3rd of May, we get the plan in motion. Move our army through and then uh, cancel access, wait the month, and then go for it. The cult to Fortuna. Lately we have seen growing numbers of people following Fortuna, seeking the fortune of the gods. A priest and his small group of followers have arrived in Roma, looking for a new home a new home for their cults. They promise good fortune and that our people will be well taken care of if they are given some sizable funds and help in getting started. Alright, um, get a free Roman Freeman, which I'm always a, a fan of. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, what, what am I saying? This, um, uh, converts to a Hebrew freeman to be Hellenic, so that gives us more Hellenic populations, so that's handy. Uh, lose 33 gold, which is fine. Lose 5 stability, which I'm not so sure about. Or, lose popularity on Publius. Um, 5 stability is a lot for this. But 5 stability for one free freeman, and also two non-Hellenic population becoming Hellenic, that might arguably be worth it. The gold's basically completely worth it for that. I think the Cult of Fortune has follow-up events. I'm going to go ahead and go for this just to sort of see what happens, keeping an eye on my stability, of course, as we go. All right. Incidentally, I believe I do have cheaper... Yeah, Divine Sacrifice is a lot cheaper. I could do a Divine Sacrifice, but I don't, I don't have enough PI to do that, so I have to wait, which is just unfortunate, but we just have to wait. Nothing to be done about that. I guess if I were to be here and I declared, or not declared, but if I were, were brought in through these guys, I guess Samnium could turn around to attack me, but I don't think that's likely the way they'd choose to do that. I'm fairly sure, at least. I think we, yeah, we have more people promoting up from Freeman, meaning that we're missing out on more cohorts, at least assuming that's how that works. Who knows with this game? It is uh, truly a mystery. Right. May 3rd, we proceed. Manpower is rebuilding quite quickly, so that's quite nice. Alright. Yeah, so we're going to be able to get into War of Samnium a little earlier than expected. Probably about half a year. Masapia wants this to know. So is, is um, Epirus just not doing an attack? Like, where the hell are they? <laughs> They've been at war with these guys forever. Um, they're just not arriving, as far as I can tell. Um, interesting. Oh, hello. Ooh. All right, it begins. <laughs> oh my god. Wow, I've never seen the Selly kids lose this much this fast. This is just a common Selly kid L. Look at this. 
Holy crap. And as as usual, every time I play this game, Ptolemaics go crazy. Tol like, Egypt is so powerful. Ptolemaics always do super, super well early on with these uh, successor state fights. Holy crap. All right. That is great. That is lovely and great. Um, if you could just uh, pass away soon, that would be great. But uh, we'll see what happens here. Seeking a spouse. It's a bit late for that, I think, given your health situation. But if you're able to find someone, good for you. No problem with that. Save our resources for now. No. Military access simulator continues. Incidentally, these guys may actually ignore my thing to go straight for their main target of Alea, whose army is right there and will be killed. So we may be able to raise our army in Nola and basically sort of race over to help fight them in the Alea area. I'm just worried that they're going to prioritize going for Concilium, although Alea will probably, once I'm in the war, because then I'll be on their team, I th well, I guess is a war co-participant through that way as the ally of the ally give access? Oh man, I don't know offhand if Alea gets access or not. I think they probably do. I think all war participants give access to each other by default. But this is a pretty niche scenario. Right, Syracuse does still have their navy, although it's dying of attrition because they don't have any more ports. It's a pretty sad end to Syracuse. And a pretty quick end. Yeah, this uh, situation is nerve-wracking. I think allying with uh, Hipponion is just a good idea to also just hold Carthage back alongside with the other side of the peninsula, Brutia, holding them back too. Let's hope Carthage focuses on their internal affairs for now and sort of leaves my peninsula alone. We're not ready to fight Carthage yet, but we will be soon. All right, nobody's are ready. Okay, so let's see if we can do this in the right order. So first things first, let's uh, try to join the war through these guys. So offer an alliance. Um, can I just guarantee them? I could just guarantee them. Although I don't think guarantees are, are retroactive, so I think I have to be invited in from the alliance. So let's offer an alliance to Hipponian. That being said, I would prefer them to be my guarantee recipient than my ally. Um... I don't remember if a guaranteed nation will call you into a war that's already going on. I would prefer them to be my guarantee recipient than my ally, though, because then this way I'm not being called in. Like, these guys won't attack anyone. Well, that being said, they won't attack Brutia because that means attacking me, who would be their ally. And there, there's no way that the AI would be out of its mind enough to attack Carthage, thinking I'd help them. So an alliance with these guys probably is safe. They don't really have enough people around them to attack realistically that I'd have to decline to join in. So let's ally with Hipponian, even though I prefer to be their guarantor. This is fine. I'm gonna also just break the alliance later, honestly. This is, I think, fine for now. And this is a likelier way to get into the war with Samnium a little early. So let's uh, declare an alliance, or declare an alliance. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I declare we are allies, whatever you say about that. Let's offer an alliance. They're gonna say yes. And then any minute now, they should call me into this war. Let's Okay, Marcus Valerius Corvus died of severe inflammation. All right, he was the head of the Valerii family. That's fine. Okay, uh, let's assign somebody hopefully a bit more loyal than that guy. Um, we can assign someone with really good finesse, probably better in this situation. Um, Nias uh, Augulnius looks pretty promising. Not a family character. Young guy, or youngish guy. So some promise there for future government roles. Um, let's see here. He's from the Bonnie, which means he's probably going to be pretty reliable. Skeptical, but also cautious. Okay, let's assign him. Please don't screw up all my policies. He has screwed up all my policies. All right, that's great. Ugh, all right, we'll have to spend PI to fix all that, but this guy should be around for quite a long time, so that should be fine. All right, come on, bring me in. Now that I'm their ally, maybe they don't think they need to. Oh, we have another last of the Arg Yeraspides. One of the fabled veterans from the Silver Shields, uh, the back Silver, she Silver Shields, the backbone of Alexander's army, is requesting a place to stay in Rome. They have not often been seen after they betrayed Eumenes by handing him over to Antigonos as the unit was split up and dismissed by the general. It seems 
Cleandros Pyrhides was banished from Sapontum. So it looks like basically all these areas that were being taken out, because um, I think Sapontum is a... Uh, yeah, I think Sapontum's down here. Not entirely sure. They're all coming into Rome, so this guy's also Macedonian. I don't really care about this guy. He can uh, loiter if he likes. All right, I, I know these guys have military access through my land now, but just invite me into the war. Can I just, can I offer to help? Is that allowed? I don't think so. Maybe on the monthly tick, they'll go for it. If not, I'll probably just break the alliance to get the truce timer going and just attack Samnium on my own. Even moving through my land, these guys definitely can't beat Samnium without my help. Got a grand Saturnalia. In a study display of generosity, Publius, a well-loved member of our religious institution, has commissioned a grand festival out of his own pocket. Great, let's keep that modifier going. That works for me. Uh, Optimates agenda land for Valeria Tertia. The head of... She's the head? What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Wait. Wow. This is some feudal ass shit. Like, she actually... She is the, the child of Marcus Valerius Corwis. So it makes sense if the... Uh, the Lyria family is his personal family. I've never seen this sort of situation with a character this young. Interesting. Okay, well, um, enriching the elites is once again the agenda of the Optimatis. This time they've decided to gather on the head of the Lyria family, uh, Valeria Tertia. They claim that she deserves some land as repayment for her excellent service to the Senate. Wow, she's been uh, serving the Senate, has she? What's she been doing? I mean, the senators really wanted some uh, nice crayon drawings that she provided, so I guess that was handy. Literally, what has she done to serve the Senate? She's a literal, like... Is she a toddler? Is five still a toddler? She's like a young child. Okay, um, I guess she's been making everyone laugh and have a fun time imagining her running that family, so that's been a service in an indirect way. The Populars are loudly opposed to the legislation as it will look like... As it looks like, it will be public land given to the Valeria family. Um, I mean, this is pretty goofy, but this technically would be fine, and losing the approval of the Optimatis is not really in the card. So, holdings over to this literal child, I suppose that's fine. That is some classic Optimatis type thinking there. Not that they need it, but they have our support nonetheless. 100 approval from the Optimatis, that's going to do for now. Very good. All right, call me in. Bring me in. <laughs> Save me some time. If they don't call me in, I'll just declare war when my truce is up in February. Come on. Come on. Monthly tick? Oh, no, okay. Maybe they'll, uh, maybe they can't because it's been too recent. Maybe they have some sort of cooldown. I don't remember, but they're going to come over here. I'm almost tempted to give Samnia military access so that they go and, and fight these guys, but I don't think that's going to be super helpful for anybody here. I'd rather just keep Samnia preoccupied. I can just, uh, oh man, this is still frustrating though. I guess I can still do my plan of getting access through them, coming through here, and then revoking access, and then declaring war from over here. Or I can build ships to move my troops on, but who wants to Who wants to do that? I guess we just keep waiting, unfortunately. Let's our AE go down, which is not a terrible thing, to be sure. Plus, if Etruria attacks, we're not going to be preoccupied. Epirons wants access? No, stay the hell off of my peninsula, you Greek jerks. Stay away. Um... Looks like Pyrrhus has taken over, alright. Uh, not quite as strong as I remember. I thought he had more than this, martial-wise. Maybe some of the custom uh, leaders over in China have kind of uh, inflated my expectations with good martial custom characters, because this is uh, only uh, above average, not amazing. But I guess this is the vanilla balancing for you. It is what it is. Alright. Um, okay, so at this stage, I think this alliance here is not particularly helpful. What I could do is dissolve the alliance and then just guarantee them, but honestly, this costs a lot of approval, and it's fine to keep them as allies for now. What I can eventually do is have them break the alliance uh, on my terms by attacking one of their allies, probably Alea. Then this way, once I'm in a position to take this land directly, or really more realistically, feed it to Brutia, which is probably what I prefer to do down here, where it's you know far away from me. Um, I can go to war with Alea to sort of cause them to break their lines with me, which means I can then just fight them with no problem, so that's the way to do it. 
Can we just keep waiting? It's going to just be three while we wait. In the meantime, we could spend our money on stuff, but I don't really think it's super necessary at the minute. I guess we'll see really quick. What is the... We have a lot more pop capacity now, 71. We have full citizen ratio achieved, but I do want more citizens. What do we have now tech-wise? 29, which is uh, pretty good. Could be better, though. So, also, um, anyone without traits? Uh, yeah. You have 100, I mean, you have 10. You have uh, 10, so probably nobody with traits that are nearly that good. Seven with a trait. Arguably, that's probably better on average. Although we're going to be missing out on having a uh, yeah, Valyrian character, so maybe not. Yeah, this is fine. This is fine. All right. Um, let's spend our money on some building stuff. So let's cancel the sheep for just a quick sec. All right. Trade for stone. Okay, um, let's go ahead and keep improving Aroma. Or we could build a fort, which would probably be a smarter thing to do. But over here, without the provincial capitals sort of locked down yet, I sort of can't build any forts anywhere. I guess I could build a fort in Neapolis, even if I can't safely move the capital without the glitch screwing up on my loyalty by having it forcing me to remove the or move remove, like move the capital again later on. I can at least fortify my planned capital location of Neapolis and then move the capital there once I own all of this, so that would be fine. I think I probably should do that. Yeah, let me go ahead and build this fort here, just so there is a fort over here on this side. It won't be done before the Samnite War begins, but it will be under construction, which I guess is solid. Then the rest of the money could go into a building. Probably another citizen district is the way to go. Let us uh, go for that, so all these freemen here keep promoting up to citizens. We get a lot more citizens here for more research and whatnot. All right, let's uh, switch those trades back over. We definitely want livestock again, but I did notice that there's marble available now. Although actually we had one marble available before, so never mind. It's not new marble, it's old marble. All right, good, let's resume. All right, see, so I don't think these guys are gonna call me in, but that's fine. We'll just go to war with Sam. I'm in a separate war than them once we uh, are able to. And that is going to be when exactly? First of February, 456. Looks fine. Abria, okay. Oh my gosh. Egypt is already uh, scaring me significantly. Don't love the look of that. All right. Vibin', what can I say? Alright. <laughs> sort of not much to say right now, we're just waiting around. That's the fun of uh, Rome in Terra with these early game truces. It does do a good job at uh, slowing down Rome's normally explosive opening couple years. Grain from Latium, no. I'm keeping the Latium grain. I may want to build some granaries, to be honest, actually. It's probably worth considering. Granary. You can have as many as you like. They're cheap as well. They're only um, about 60 gold with no modifiers. Probably granaries in Rome is a good idea, because we get extra... Not just Rome, but granaries in Latium and all of my cities is probably smart. Because these are cheap to build. It's only one build slot. If I build one in each of the cities, it's going to really improve our food storage capacity quite a bit. And eventually, we're going to be importing enough food and getting enough food locally that we're going to have... Uh, generally upward trend of food even into the winter or at least where the winter doesn't deprive us enough so that we have more overall and i want to make sure that all the food is being stored to be sure so probably worth considering going for that but we'll see we shall see incidentally um mission wise destroy the apulians this requires samnite territory and then also Sapontum, and then also apulia so this one here is just the same. So we can get this one next. Okay. That would be handy. It's just those three tiles. Perfectly doable. We're going to let our manpower recover as well, so that's not a terrible thing either. Definitely not bad. 
These guys have re-fortified their capital, Bilbiana, which starts fortified, then they defortified it, and then they've re-fortified it. Haven't fortified their other capitals, though, or their city at Aeclanum. So, standard AI behavior. Um, also, their army is growing. These guys actually do have a number of cohorts here. A bit more intimidating than the Umbrian army, but nothing we can't handle with our massive army of our own under the pretty good leadership of Publius Cornelius Barbatus. Looks fine. Definitely looks fine. All right. How's the score going? Number two in the world. All right, that's pretty good. Of course, Wei is doing well. Actually, let me check and see what's happening over in China. I'm just curious uh, how Wei is doing so well. I'm looking at this doesn't explain any more to me how Wei is doing so well on the score. Uh, oh, oh, yeah, that's right. Um, all right, Shin hasn't started their massive conquest of the entire area quite yet. They will get to it soon. No doubt about that. Phnom is doing well. Love to see it. Love to see it. All right, let's go back to it. Pirates moving through. All right, our fortresses up here are done, which is great. These fortresses are really important to have up here before any wars against Etruria or Lingonia. And incidentally, um, I don't believe... Let me actually check and see here. Do I get claims on the Northerners from anything... Or claims on anybody, really, from any of these missions? No, I probably have to get the claims myself, because this mission had terrible RNG for me. All right. Okay, so what that means is I do want to get enough PI. I have so many things to spend my PI on. I'm <laughs> just in a constant PI, like, starvation diet all the time. I never have enough PI for anything. All right. Uh, unfortunately, our truce with these guys is nearly over. First of February, so just a few more weeks. Grain from Latium? No. Not selling my grain to anybody. Keeping the grain going. All right. We'll get to February 1st, raise our army, and go to war with Samnium. I think from this side it should be okay. Also, Citizen District in Roma is done. Very nice. That means we're up to what now? It's going to take a movie tick to see, so we'll see that in just a sec here. All right. Well, let me uh, change my message settings really quick here. Truce. Great. Okay. Um, up. It's not going to help. Um, peace? Okay, if it's not truce, trice. Okay, I, there's no message for or whatever. I wish I could get a message when a truce I have is over. I'll also try to remember to keep an eye on it myself. Okay, um, what was I looking at? Oh yeah, the bop info. 33% still. Is it not updated yet? Should be more than that now. Maybe there's some weird math going on. We'll wait and see if that adjusts. It will adjust later, if anything. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and get to it. So we can go to war with Samium now at will. Looks like um, Hipponia won't join in because they're already at war, but everybody else joins in because they're all subjects, so that is perfectly fine. Actually, um, I could make these guys my feudatory eventually. I think that is possible? Maybe not. Can I make these guys a feudatory? Can city-states not become feudatories? I can only offer client status. I don't see feudatory as an option. Unclear. I think city-states may not want to become feudatories. Whatever, we'll worry about that later. Okay, so let's go ahead and raise our army over here. We have everything paid for, so they should just be able to march right in. We have to raise them in the Italian side, of course, which means I guess raising them actually a bit further away. So let me raise them and march them over to Nola, and then we'll just go to war and try to sort of race. Because the thing is, if these guys... Ah, it might be worth actually taking the time to move them south and then break the military access and then go go to war. So let's not play around. Let's do this the intelligent way. No huge rush here. Um, looks like shock action is the way to go. Heavy infantry in the front. I didn't set this up before for my previous war, but that's fine. It worked out just fine. Under the leadership of Publius Cornelius Barbatus. Come on over to Nola. Nope. I said come on over to Nola. Um, and then, incidentally, uh, let me actually raise my other army too, which will be raisable under its currently loyal governor, Nias Ogulnius. One marshal is really not that impressive, but he does add more bodies to the mess, so not a terrible thing. We'll have him raise just in Concilinum, where I plan for my entire force to sort of strike out from. His force can at least siege down these other provincial capitals and whatnot, and just sort of act as a swing force in the area. 
so that's fine. And then our truce, by the way, with Etruria is up September of next year. So we have we have basically a little under two years, plenty of time to do this thing here and uh, get this uh, sort of taken care of. If we didn't have these truces, we could have uh, min-maxed our conquest of this peninsula. I don't know if we had good RNG on the mission tree as well. A lot better, but this is just uh, the world we're living in, so it is what it is. All right, 24th of February. Let's get this thing opened up. Give me military access. World's most suspicious request for military access right here, but of course the AI, led by their very um, interestingly hair-colored leader, Aphilius. I don't know what's what about this like hair color that I find so interesting, but this is like a striking appearance from their leader. All right, let me through. Uh, don't pay any attention to the mysterious buildup of soldiers on your other border. I guess we technically go through here faster. Oh, whatever, we have to move through their territory anyways, so... This is how you have to do it without any uh, any Navy support, which we will probably want to get sooner or later. But for now, I think we can hold off uh, just fine. All right, let's get through here. I'm gonna build up our morale as we go, so that's perfectly fine. All right, 15th of March, we can cancel that thing. Then I have to wait for 15th of April to then attack them, because we'll not be able to talk to them. Raising a host, the army of Naeus Ogulnius is one of the finest in all Rome, apparently. Uh, <laughs> is, is that so? Okay. Nonetheless, he has issued a demand for additional soldiers paid for and equipped from our own coffers. Recent rumors have portrayed Naeus in a less than favorable light, and we, shall begin to we should begin to wonder where his loyalties truly lie. Could he be planning something? I mean, I basically have enough manpower, and it completely exhausts all my manpower, and also I'd have to spend a lot of my money. Although, these forces, I believe, uh, they are added directly to the Mega Duration Levy, which I think means that they re-raise when the Levy is re-raised. So we basically get some just free extra units for that Levy. They're loyal to Naeus, which isn't great. We can always pay him off to remove their loyalty to him, which would be fine. And loyalty to the governor of the uh, of the region isn't a huge problem for a levy unit under most circumstances. Also, more loyalty with Naeus is perfectly fine. Um, I would definitely rather get the loyalty and not lose the stability. So I'm going to go ahead and grant this request. I guess it's a good thing we had some... Man I mean, we can go into basically... It doesn't go to negative. We just go to zero manpower, at least as far as I know. Grant his request. Um, yeah, we'll give this a try. I'm curious to see if these are permanent new units for that levy, or just temporarily. I guess we'll find out. Seems like they're only temporary. That is a shame, but at least we can use them for this war. And maybe we'll use them for the... We'll keep this army raised, use it for the Etrurian War as well. Alright, well we got the loyalty with him for those resources, so I guess that's worth something at least. Not a particularly amusing event, but that's fine. Oh. Wait for 26th of March. That's right. All right. We have to get our access treaty canceled before we declare war. Otherwise, we have a stab hit, so that's why I'm doing it in this order. The plague in Wei. We received we received news rather than Wei from Wei that the city has been ravaged by a disease. A significant proportion of the inhabitants have fallen ill. They've asked our leaders in general, but also entreated Consul Publius Cornelius Batabatus in particular to send them some form of aid. Our advisors, jealously taken aback by the direct appeals to Publius, have started mutterings, implying that Wei must have somehow offended the gods and deserved divine punishment. Uh, okay, let's look closely at what's happening over here in Wei. So, um, we could lose popularity. Wei gains the Asclepian Plague, which I think can spread, although there's a chance that doesn't happen. Then we lose three Etruscan freemen, which... I mean, I, these are people I could be promoting, but it's not the end of the universe if I lose Etruscan population or gain popularity and lose money that we don't have at the minute to spend. Could cancel the fortress I've been building to get the money to do this, but I don't want to go into bankruptcy and I don't want to cancel the fortress either. I think this is a chance to spread and the pop happiness can be really punishing. Oh man. It really is probably worthwhile to end, to stop the plague from spreading. Damn, all right, fine. Uh, cancel the fort and pay this, uh, we'll call upon whoever can put an end to the plague. So that's a shame, but I think it's better to play it safe than sorry in a situation like this. All right, cancel the access, and now we wait. 
until 25th of April, so a little bit longer to go and we'll get this thing over with. <sighs> Alright, at this point, Sam Yum should have no doubt whatsoever what's about to happen. We're also going to be racing against the, our ally and their allies for their other war, but as long as we can get to these places first, we're going to be able to maintain the sieges that we start, so that should be fine. Okay, here's Epirus. No sign of any armies, though, on their boats, so I'm not entirely sure what they're doing. Um, I guess they're going for a naval battle, maybe, but I don't see... They should just, you know, drop their armies off if they've got naval supremacy. Which they do, by the way. They definitely have naval supremacy. More Epirote strangeness. Okay, oh, man, I really want to change my policies now with the PI that I've gained. I think uh, Lucania... I want to switch over. Oh, it's just so expensive. I gotta go for it. I gotta get these things switched back over to cultural assimilation. 25th of April. Here we go. Let's get this thing over with. Whew. We have to clear the war. We are going for um, the Locanian section because that's the easiest to reach. And uh, let's do it. Looks like, uh, yeah, everyone else will join in. That's our feudatory. Clear war on Samium. Here we go. Alright. Everyone just plow northward. These guys are about to get obliterated. Um, we don't have the best marshal. Seven at the highest, but these numbers will do all the work for us. Marshal is not needed here. We're just going to kill these guys just in an avalanche of Romans. Um, these guys will probably run. They won't be able to get very far here. Our feudator is also just turned online, so they're going to get involved here too. Here come the opportunistic Caponians to come try to steal our glory here. These guys could actually reach Compsa before I get there and make me um, scream into the void. So let's really hope they don't do that. I would be very upset. Gaius Claudius Crassus died. He was the praetor, head of the Claudii family. All right, who's the new Claudii family head? Appius Claudius Cacus is the new Claudii family head. Which, if I recall correctly, he is the next expected uh, consul, so okay. And then we need to assign a new praetor. Um, I think... Fabia Secunda looks fine. Uh, not a grateful family from that, so that's good. Level Charisma, that should be fine. There we go. Alright, don't even think about it. No funny business here. I'm going to be stuck in this fight for a minute here, because it's a big fight. Don't. Okay, good, they're coming into the fight instead. Okay. The AI could have really screwed me over here, because I'm in a different war. I can't seize control of this tile from him in that war. So I basically, all my plans would get really screwed up if he went and sieged that. So let's hope he doesn't get any funny ideas here. Okay, the May. This is a big fight, the Battle of uh, Potentia. So we are going to win this fight in the end here. And then we're going to have to very quickly... Okay, very quickly just run over as fast as we can. In fact, I'm going to send over the horses to ensure we get there first. Send over uh, 500 to here. That's the war target, by the way. And then um, send over 500 horses to basically... Actually, we're getting this from our tributaries, so that's fine. Never mind. Um, actually, I will send the 500 horses over to there just to make sure we get there first. Um, and then we're going to have specifically the console head to a Clanum to come uh, occupy that, while this other force sort of goes around a Clanum to go over to the fort to get that under siege. So that's the plan there. All right. Okay, so we're off to a good start here. Um, this should be fine. I think these guys are going to go to there. So that actually may be a problem because they're going to go quite fast. You guys actually don't go all the way there. You um, come to here. Actually, you come to a Clanum and then just wait for the rest of the army to arrive. That is the plan. So we are taking this, good. And specifically, Barbatus is taking this, good. So Marcia, whoever, actually, who's in charge here? Uh, I think that's Marcia. Marcia should give this over to me once they take it. If they don't, I can just give it to Marcia in the deal. It's not the end of the universe. Oh, they just gave it to me automatically because they are a tributary. At least I think that's what happened. Or they're a feudatory, I mean, not a tributary. All right, we'll see uh, what happens with that. All right, you guys all just... Out here. Actually, I'm going to send the rest of the main army further ahead to try to catch these guys in a stack wipe situation while the horses stay behind to get the city. That's perfectly fine. Although, this Marcian army. Where's it going? 
Tuticum, so never mind, it's not going in the city location, so we're fine. This should all be fine. Alright, it uh, looks like Frontania is going in first for a uh, daring uh, sort of middling battle in the plains. We'll see how they do there, but our main army is coming in behind to support. Never fear, also we do have more PI to spend. Alright, next up is Campania. Get this the hell back over to Cultural Assimilation. Okay. Uh, not sure that's going to go, but we're going to arrive in about a week, so we can help out. Good. You go ahead and just head this way. You should finish up the sack there. There it is, the sacking of Aclanum. Publius Cornelius Barabatos has led us into glorious victory during the siege of Aclanum. The enemy flee in disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils were likely to cause those back in Roma to admire Publius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. Alright, so we're going to probably say none shall hide. One slave to Roma went to Canusium. Alright, what do we have here? 20. This is a pretty okay tile. It's plains, um, no coastline, but it does have a minor river. All is. Yeah, I'll, I'll say none shall hide. That's fine. 100 gold for Roma, or for Rome, I should say. Works for me. And you guys basically just come this direction as well. We'll probably just do an assault, uh, finish the war, and then just lower everybody. I don't have any uh, claims ready to go. I have to just wait for the Etrurian uh, War at this point until I can get claims uh, from uh, spending PI, but it's just gonna take time. All right, so we're gonna arrive here. All right, we've uh, not stacked up, and we're gonna run off in that direction. We'll wait for everyone to get here, then we'll just do an assault with everybody here. That should be more than enough uh, for a port like this. We're actually going to get killed by somebody over there, so that works. Let's regather all these horses together. Wait for our allies to come join in, too. Marcia is actually leading the siege. I can take control because they're my feudatory, so there we go. Wait for these guys to get here, too, for just more bodies so we can minimize the losses for what that's worth. Alright. Uh, everyone's just kind of coming and going. Um, I'm just going to do it now while there are some people here. This should be fine for the assault. This should be basically free. We're basically out of manpower anyways, so it is what it is. Just power through this uh, assault here. Take a couple thousand casualties, but it, it's going to be fine. We're going to recover this for the years. Over the next uh, two years or so. Okay, one slave to Roma, one to Canusium, kill two pops. This place here can survive a nun shall hide. So, the sacking of Boeanum. Publius Cornelius Barbatus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Boeanum. The enemy fleeing in disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils were likely to cause those back in the Roma to admire Publius greatly. But leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. None shall hide. More money for the Roman coffers. Um, yes, definitely. Definitely, definitely. Okay. Uh, I think we're looking fine now. Samnium should go ahead and uh, surrender at this point. So we can just ask for all of this. This will fortunately connect our Italian core with the rest of the Magna Gratia territory. So... Our uh, weird uh, set of exclaves will be, in the south at least, merged together into one unified southern portion, with the Umbrian portion still being disconnected. We'll worry about that later. Anyways, let's go ahead and do this deal. Samnite Lucania to Rome, Samnite Apulia to Rome, and Samnite Campania to Rome. We should get one mission complete from this as well. For AE, that is completely fine. Alright, so we read this already. The Samnite elite. After a protracted conquest, we finally routed the Samnite armies and laid waste to their lands. During the sacking of their capital, many important prisoners were taken, many of them having previously held important positions in the Samnite assembly. They now languish in our dungeons, awaiting whatever fate we decide to impose upon them. Right, so I probably just want to lose more aid. I don't really want to gain too much tyranny here. I think in terms of the effects of tyranny, this would probably be survivable. Um... But I do want to reserve the ability to demolish cities at pretty much at will, so we need to be a bit careful about tyranny from selling slaves, as city uh, revocations are very expensive. It's five tyranny per city, so it's probably worthwhile just to avoid uh, getting tyranny from any other source. So banish those of class, put the rest of the sword. This is going to be fine. We also get some items. We get the warrior uh, for Fries. All right, lower the forces. Keep, uh, our actual numbers keep getting smaller and smaller, which is pretty strange. I don't know what's causing that. Um, 
Anyways, uh, okay, so the capital, say the capital, that's fine. So um, I think because I'll be integrating Nucaria, I can now safely, and there's also like a, a bunch of armies here, so I sort of can't see anything, but we own the land now, so that's pretty good. We can also do the Crush Samnites mission, which I probably should do first. Okay, so the Samnites scupper our efforts to colonize Campania and rally support against us. The shame was suffered at the Caudian Forks will be nothing compared to their total subjugation. So, we're able to find a colonia in some of this new territory, and this area gets uh, reduced local population happiness and increased assimilation speed. That is fine by me. The Conquest of Samnium. Incidentally, this province here is already on assimilation, so perfect. At last, the stubborn Samnite tribes have been forced to accept the superiority of Roman arms. Uh, these wars will go into the annals of time with the victory over Lars Porcena and the rape of the Sabines. With newly conquered territory comes the inevitable parceling of land and distribution of promises, but it is up to us to decide which township will become the Roman hub for the area. Okay, so we have a couple options here. Um, so we could make uh, Boeanum the capital, which um, I believe would not actually literally make it the capital. It would just add population to it, or rather it would make five population there become Roman, and it would also get four Roman freemen. I think all of these basically have that happen. Um, this one here would make Salernum the provincial capital, but the other ones don't change the provincial capital. I'd actually prefer not to have any of these be the provincial capital. Also, hold on, Salernum? That's down here. This would make, okay, this would move the capital, oh yeah, that's right, this would move the capital over here, because um, it was renamed, that's why I recognize it. Uh, I do th still think that Heraclea is the better spot in this province than Salernum. Salernum's an okay position, it's the right distance away from Neapolis, but I think I'd rather have Heraclea, it's a better tile overall. Um, we could also have it be Eclanum, which is, I have to find it in the, in the mess here, it's in this middle area here. Uh, yeah, I don't think any of these spots, although this this doesn't make it a capital, capital could, uh, end up, I can move it to Neapolis now, I think, safely, because integration, I don't think, moves the capital around. Um, I could also make Beneventum the location, let's see, Beneventum, hills, no, I'm not going to make it hills, not going to be hills, um, let's see. We could also have Compsa become a fort. This is the right distance from Heraclea and from Neapolis. So Compsa being a fort here helps protect my coastline quite a bit over here. Certainly not a terrible idea. Alternatively, well, yeah, I would need to do it like that. Otherwise it wouldn't reach. Well, mm, well, we'll worry about that later. I think of all these options. So Beneventum is not a good spot for a city. Uh, Aclinaeum isn't really a good spot either. Salernum, I don't want the capital to get moved here, and it's not really a great spot for a city. Um, let's see. I mean, this place is quite populated. I can still demote it and just uh, leave the population there to redistribute, which would be fine. Or, what else? Clanum, don't really think so. Salernum... Uh, I mean, this would give me a free city over here. Salerno being a city isn't a terrible idea. It is the right distance, as noted earlier, from Neapolis. I can still have Heraclea be a city eventually, but I may not get to Heraclea super soon. So Salerno isn't a pretty good spot to help protect my coastline. And I get a free city. So having... Because Salerno is an okay tile for a city... And in this province, at least, if we're looking at the options in this province, obviously Heraclea is the best tile, but planes on the water, what's the difference here, ultimately? It's 10% less population capacity and 2% less local civ level. We don't get the slaves for surplus bonus. And it's also one less food, but otherwise it's it's pretty much um, similarly good. So Salernum being a city over here would be fine. And it's also the right distance. Well, I guess once we own this stuff, it's going to be a bit too close to Neapolis. So actually, yeah, once we once we own this stuff here, Compsa becomes the right distance from Neapolis for fort coverage. And it's along the coast fort coverage, too. We could have a fort at Alea to protect this middle area. And then Compsa then lines up. Okay, yeah, so actually we do have something over here that works. Which means, um, Beneventum... God, all these people here. 
I think of all the options here, I think putting the population into Bovianum, but still um, uh, revoking Bovianum's city status will just lead to the population moving away to other cities, which is what I ultimately want. All four of these options are not very good. Although this also gives Bovianum that permanent modifier. So maybe another way to think about this is, is there a reason why, let's see. I guess I could keep Bovianum as a city, but I'm gonna have uh, Histonium be a city. So Bovianum is a bit too close to that. It is the right distance away. No, it's, it's too far away from Bardulos. Okay, if this is a fort, it and Neapolis, so it would incidentally uh, include Pompeii in the uh, in the fort coverage from Salernum. Then it protects Pastum. I have a fort at Blanda, which also, well, hold on now. Um, I could have a fort at, I would want it probably at Grimentum to protect both sides. Although if Heraclea is the, the fort, the capital, fort could be at Alea. Or no, it would be at Blanda. That's a better spot, Blanda. Let's protect the south of the province. And then that's a bit close to Heraclea. But this way, Pastum is protected by Salerno. Leia, whatever it's called in Latin once we take it, is protected by Blanda. And then Cirrus is protected by Heraclea. Okay, so this does protect all the coastline down here. So that's an important thing to note. It's probably worthwhile to over-fortify these areas that are going to be the front line of any Punic Wars we do. So... I think, so there's a lot of sort of uh, speculating here, but this is the kind of way that I play this game, obviously, so this is a part of the fun for me. So I think making Salernum, so getting the free city is actually pretty valuable. That's a big gold NPI thing for free. And making it the potential capital of Lucania is fine for now. We could always keep it like that, even if we make um, Heraclea, keep, if, even if Heraclea does become a city later on, it would be a good tax city because it has, actually no, it doesn't have Pirate Haven, Never mind. I thought it did. Interesting. Okay, whatever. Um, this We can have two cities here. Like, it's honestly fine to have two cities here in one province. So let's go ahead and say a new coastal city, Salernum. I think this is the way to go to, to mid-max this. And then Salernum is a good location to have this permanent modifier. That's the other reason to pick this carefully, is this permanent Roman colonial modifier. It's going to always make that tile better, so we wanted to make sure it's in the right spot. So a new coastal city, Salernum, is the selection. Very good. And now this should have a city under construction. Yep. All right, 9th of July in two years. We basically have got a free city building going there, so that is great. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, buy a fort after it finishes constructing. There's no huge rush there, I don't think. And then once we zoom out far enough, we can see our entire name being displayed there. Very good. As for the new territory we just got, uh, we have obviously the port in Salernum, that's fine. And then, uh, up here, I'm trying to remember what was part of Samium. So the city in Eclanum, I think I'm going to revoke this location. This is an okay spot for a city, but I don't really want all these extra cities, so revoke that. And then revoke the hill city in Bovianum after we destroy the fort. And we destroy what's left, the slave trader. There's some more money. You know, Tyranny's becoming a problem, but I promise we're gonna calm down soon and <laughs> just, uh, my city OCD is a thing of uh, a thing of real power. I can't uh, I can't master it no matter what I try to do. I think that's all the buildings there. I can't see anything with all these armies running around here. Okay, so let's lower our forces here. Oh wait, we already did that, did that. Actually, let's not lower the forces led by this guy because these guys are um, very damaged. Actually, so never mind. Although they can recover from our main power, I believe. We could keep these guys fully raised so we have the extra cohorts involved just for the Etrurian War, which will be within about a, a little over a year now. So I think that's probably, that's justifiable. Let's just bring these guys north over to hang out in the Roma area. And then we'll decide what to do with them. Actually, I'll just have them stationed in Roma to recover their food capacity where there's a ton of food. Not that there is a ton of food in Roma, actually, to be honest, but that's fine. Okay, um, looking fine. Economy is looking solid. Oh, we can also do Vanquish Lucanians. I actually didn't notice this one. Um, the Lucanians are a nuisance, friends of the Samnites, and ever squabbling with the Greeks. We must succeed where Alexander I of Epirus failed and subdue them to open the way south. Okay, um, I didn't notice that, but let's see what we get from this. The Conquest of Lucania. 
Once more, or one more meddling, jealous Italic tribe vanquished by Rome's might, this will teach our neighbors the price of scheming with Greeks and maintaining jealous feuds in the face of inevitable defeat. With newly conquered territory comes the inevitable parceling of land and the distribution of promises, but it is up to us to decide which townships will become the Roman hub of the area. So we can found another Roman colonia down here somewhere. Um, Potentia, well this moves the capital, so no. Uh, Grumentum, which I think was their capital before, this moves the capital, so no. <sighs> I just, I don't want to move the capital around a whole bunch. Getting another spot here with the colonia. So this is a hill style or another hill style. Now, um, because I want the fort to be at Blanda eventually, I don't really think uh, either of these spots are going to matter, or they're going to make sense. So we're going to go ahead and just decline to get involved here. Missing out on one of these, but that's just, you know, how it worked out here. So we will not get involved with detailed planning. That's fine. Then what's this? Approach Greeks. Um, we can negotiate with the Hellenistic states in Magna Graecia. All right, the Italiote Greeks colonies flourished long before Roma. Ro uh, Roma, I should say. We should we could convince these philosophers and actors to accept our protection in exchange for an equitable exchange. By protection, do we mean feudatory ship or do we mean guarantee? Because I know which one I'd prefer to have happen. Um, I kind of don't know if I want to even bother with this. I don't need to do this to finish the mission tree. I would kind of just rather fight the Greeks. Like, what are they going to do? be philosophical at me. I can beat these guys easily. Even the tripartite alliance down here of uh, Thuria and uh, Heraclea and Croton is really not a serious threat. <sighs> I just need to have the claims on them. I'm just going to ignore that particular mission for now. That's fine. And then this one requires me to actually beat Brutia and actually take territory that now Carthage has, so I'm not doing this one for a while. That is a definite problem, and that's required for Italian Colonia. Oh man, oh, yeah, this is pretty bad. I can't even finish the mission tree before actually the first Punic War. The RNG in this campaign has just been absolutely brutal. Carthage coming into mainland Italia this or into mainland Italy this quickly is really unlucky. Now, I may be able to push them out diplomatically or through some shenanigans. They have a pretty loyal character for Magna Gratia in terms of the governor, so... I could befriend this guy and inspire disloyalty, and maybe that would be enough. I don't remember how much friend of another nation affects loyalty. Couldn't hurt to try, although the problem is I have to become friends and then do everything within the consulship of my leader, because he'll stop being friends with the ruler after the election. That is definitely a problem there. Uh... I may just have to go to war with Carthage in order to get this stuff from them once I'm done with everything else in the uh, the area, which is not ideal, but maybe what has to happen. Incidentally, um, who would be my best ally against Carthage? Probably Massilia, who would agree to be my ally right now, which is very interesting. Any chance that Massalia would be interested? These guys are a bit larger and stronger. Actually, no, that's not true. They have more territory, but their territory is like more deserty. This is a bit more like plains territory. So these guys here that are a bit closer to Carthage are, have a uh, higher population. Nothing compared to Carthage's population to be clear. Carthage does have a very strong nearly 500 population Punic core. Massilia, who will eventually I think be forced through mission through uh, mission tree events and whatnot to eventually become a Carthage's feudatory or enemy or whatnot. They um, only have 271 native culture. We, incidentally, have 300 Romans, so... And our Romans, you know, punch above their weight thanks to all of our military bonuses. But even on land, Carthage is a serious opponent. I suppose with mercenary support, we could possibly do something here. The issue is, I have absolutely zero naval dominance, and no matter what I do, Carthage will maintain naval dominance. Carthage is a very large fleet. I think their AI is even really specialized in naval expansion. And just like in real history, I basically have to cede the waters to Carthage at the minute. But on land, um, I could potentially get up to something. If I'm just precise about when I make my movements, I could be able to jump over the uh, passageway here before Carthage blocks it off. Not even sure Carthage would think to block it off with their uh, fleets, even though that would be very strategically helpful. We may be able to pull something off here. The issue is um, Carthage could land their entire force basically anywhere they like. 
I just need to get my coastline fortified before the Punic War breaks out. It's going to ultimately be the solution to this whole situation. And I need to make sure that I'm allying with someone that... Actually, that being said, Carthage would raise their army in Africa, where their you know regional you know capital is, and probably focus on the enemy in the war of Massilia, which means I might be able to basically... But then Massilia would lose to Carthage and just end up losing a lot of war score for me. So that's the other problem, is that that would, that would distract Carthage. But Massilia being fully occupied and having their armies killed would basically screw up the war score situation in a big way. So that's not exactly a big solution here. There's no way Massilia holds their own against Carthage. Numbers-wise, we're talking about, what, like, half the cohorts locally? That being said, Massilia and I together do have a stronger army than Carthage, but we're just separated by the ocean, where Carthage has all the power. If I could actually... Okay, here's a weird idea. What if I landed in Africa and declared the war from within Massilia? I mean, this is all happening in the future, so I know the exciting music in the background is making the sound a bit more intense and kind of exciting, but this is just distant planning. Don't get too excited here. But what if I was in Massilia, declared the war, and then fought Carthage in Africa? But then that requires Massilia to actually follow my armies, which has a tribe they're not going to be very reliable in doing. I mean, that might draw Carthage into fighting us in the Massilian area. We could basically follow Massilia around and then fight Carthage when they attack Massilia. That's... God, it's, it's just really tough to say how... I mean, what we could also do is ally with Massilia and with Massalia... Massalia doesn't bring in a lot more forces, but it brings in a lot more territory. Um, oh man, it's just really hard to say what is going to make the most sense here. And then Carthage, it should be noted, have their own massive fleet of uh, feudatories and client states. So they bring in, just to show you, they bring in like a huge list of, most of these are city-states to be fair, but these guys do come in with a lot of uh, extra cohorts to get involved. So any war with Carthage is going to be pretty brutal <laughs> in a lot of ways. Uh, um, okay, well, anyways, we'll worry about the Carthage later. I, I can't uh, do anything about this right now. We need to focus on getting... We at least need Etruria defeated so that they can't attack me in the middle of a Punic War and screw everything up. Etruria being forced off of the mainland and over to the island would be fine. I mean, I'd prefer to just take that directly as well, but I don't really have the ability to get over there anyways. Um... Yeah, I think I'd rather just basically leave Etruria alive on the island and then just, you know, ignore them for now. I'm not going to build a fleet just to get that. Then if I get that, that's vulnerable to Carthage anyway, so no need to open myself up like that. So, our truce with Etruria is done when... 1st of September of 457. So in the meantime, build up our manpower, build up our PI, keep everything paid for. Um, let's go ahead and restart some of those building projects that we cancelled earlier. Um, go ahead and cancel the sheep for a quick sec to get some stone. Alright. Uh, get the stone going. I do need to fortify Neapolis. And I think I can move the capital here as well. Fingers crossed this doesn't glitch out and make me upset later, but we shall see. Or fortify that. And then I probably I probably should fortify Salernum, to be honest. Although if there shouldn't be any more wars in the south for now, so we can just ignore that. And the north is already fortified. I mean the is not fortified, but this is not gonna be the capital for long, so this is fine. Um let's see here. I think that's all I need to do fort wise at the minute. I mean I could build the fort in Blonda now, but I don't think this is super necessary quite yet. I mean, it couldn't hurt. We're going to keep the fort in Heraclea, and then Salernum, once it's a city, we'll build the fort, so we could build the fort here. I guess I may as well. I was missing out on a fish tile. That's fine. Let's get this fort going. All right, and then with our remaining money, let's go ahead and see if this has been updated yet. It has been updated, so it weirdly took a long time for the, the uh, population ratio to adjust correctly, but it is adjusted now to 37%. It's about to be higher, because we're going to go ahead and build our third citizen district for another 10%. Then we'll start building noble districts after that. But for now, um, we can go ahead and stop trading for stone. And retrade for livestock. Alright. Trade with Egypt. 
That's good. Okay. And then let's go ahead and uh, proceed. Although, I'm going to go ahead and lower army maintenance just to... I think just the default levels is honestly fine at this stage. Maybe. Nah, well, Etruria still could attack me. I want my army maintenance at full. Once Etruria is dealt with and I'm dealing with a more normal situation, I'm going to reduce it to just regular uh, by default. Kush can reach me? That's a surprise. I thought Kush would be too far away. They want my olives. All right, I'll trade with Kush. I guess I can reach Egypt, so reaching Kush is maybe not a huge surprise. That's fine. I'm going to put Carthage in the outliner just to be on the safe side, just so I can kind of see what they're up to. If they go to war, I want to know about it. Etruria, by the way, is fighting a bunch of Gauls in Cisalpine Gaul. Unclear. Looks like they're the Declarant, so what are they going for? A, a Mia. Where is this? Ah, okay, they're trying to fight their way to Cisalpine Gaul. Uh, sure, yeah, they can, they can try their best to do that, but... I mean, uh, if they're still in this war in a little over a year, that would be pretty good, because their armies will be in the wrong position. So I'll uh, be happy if that's how that works out. We shall see. Let's wait for these armies to all get out of the way while I was standing around, blocking on my sight of my new land. Also, on the monthly tick, I'm going to go ahead and start taking a look at my feudatories. I think the, um, the integration... W requires 10 years, um, which we're going to be reaching in 460 with all of our starting feudatories. So just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and start improving relations with everybody, which is cheap to do. Well, it's not really cheap to do, but it's uh, it, it, it's good for the amount of opinion we get with them because we have a lot of bonuses for that. So let's just get to it. Uh, let's start by getting opinion with, um, let's see, probably uh, Frontania is the most important one to integrate in order to fix our border war. <laughs> It's a priority, so we'll get this going. We'll spend our money on this stuff, uh, just so we're getting all of our feudatories ready for integration. Once we can get them integrated, up to... Okay, now we're back down to below 7, but we were there for a minute. Alright, I think we keep forts being paid for at the minute. In case... I mean, that being said, Etruria is very unlikely to attack us while they're fighting these other guys. I guess Carthage could attack us, but they don't have a claim on me as far as I know. Yeah, we definitely don't have a claim from... We're going to get notified if they get one at this stage, so... That's probably fine to lower maintenance. At least go back to default. I think that's probably worth it, honestly. Yeah. Make the Romans a little bit happier. Once we actually are preparing for war, going to full... Or really to increase pay is going to be important to get our... Um, to get our uh, morale as high as possible because of the enemy having the hard difficulty morale. Pulley wants access. No. Not happening. <laughs> Alright. Um, I guess this alliance we'll just maintain for now to keep Carthage away. Well, I think Carthage probably has other things to be worried about. If they attack Hipponian, I will probably break the alliance and not get involved because that is a fight I'm not in a position to take at the minute for a lot of reasons here. Although our manpower max is now quite high, so that's quite nice. Um, we can do another leave one of these. All right. Convert those guys. And then a turnum, we probably do want to switch as well once we have the PI for it. Not that we ever tend to have the PI for anything, <laughs> but it's a nice thought, you know. All right. Let's see if these guys, oh, they lost their heavy infantry. Uh, yeah, it's not going to happen. All right, fine. I'll lower these guys. I'll re-raise them. They they lost all the heavy infantry, so they're actually not going to be ready in time, which is a bummer. They lost the special units that they got. That's a bummer, but I guess I know for later how that works. Everyone wants access to me. Hey, Epirus, could you, like, uh... I mean, not that I want Epirus to arrive here before I get this stuff, but Epirus is, like, weirdly being quite passive. What are you up to? Also, uh... This is um, the definition of curse. How did this even happen? My goodness gracious. Alright, well, Galatia has appeared. Very interesting. Got Ptolemaic, so I need to calm the hell down. Alright, I don't I don't love um, this like weird <laughs> fake um, Lysimachid kingdom that's actually Antipatrids, with Antigonids taking over the Antipatrid land, except for Pella, which Antipatrids maintain. 
Not sure how any of this has happened, and I would rather not know, to be honest, so... Ignorance is bliss, I suppose. Our next month, I think we're... Actually, we're probably not going to have quite enough to do another improved relation, so we'll get to it when we get to it. Maybe two more months. Go back up to speed three. Incidentally, um, in... Oh, actually, we, have, we just barely have enough because we had an income increase up to over seven treasury per month. That's pretty good. Let's start improving with Nucaria as well. Opinion. There we go. Um, what I was saying a minute ago is that Splendor is a mechanic in uh, Terra Andromeda, and basically we're gaining Splendor gradually over time from just doing various actions. Um, we can then some missions, also, particularly custom missions, because this is a mod uh, mechanic. But custom missions from Terra Andromeda can also sometimes give you Splendor. Splendor is spent on bonuses, which I believe are permanent. It, it doesn't say that they're specific to the age. There's three ages in this mod, a Hellenistic Age, which we're in right now, the Age of Migration, and the Age of Empires. Incidentally, um, I'm not entirely sure what to make of these terms, because if I remember correctly, um, the Migration Age was the period after the sort of Roman Empire during the beginning of the Dark Ages, so I don't know if this is the order of the ages or what the deal is. I guess we shall see. I can't click on them to see. But um, we get um, different uh, objectives in each of these and I believe when we complete these, maybe we get more Splendor. Not entirely sure. Um, being able to get all roads lead to Rome does uh, seem to be feasible to get the uh, incoming and outgoing. Maybe not outgoing. That might be kind of tough to get. But um, let's see here. Spreading of Hellenistic Ways, we've already accomplished this, so that's pretty good. I don't know, incidentally, uh, what this is doing for us. Uh, maybe this is the source of our Splendor, but that's pretty good. Um... We might be able to get a metropolis. Roma could probably be made a metropolis um, once I'm allowed to do this. 80 population, 400 gold, and 100 PI. This is probably worth doing to be sure. Metropolises have better bonuses and can get larger too. 80 population, not too far away from that. That's, that's within reach within a couple decades. All right, let's keep at it. All right. I think we save our PI. I think I've done all my policy changes. I wanted to do a tournament as well. Won't do too much, but it is worthwhile to get this switched over once we can. Fortunately, when you have the consular replacement, they don't switch all the policies. If that happened, I would lose my mind, but I don't think that is uh, what happens when it's switched like that. All right, get this switched over to cultural simulation. Very good. And we proceed. Lassus and District will be finished very soon. There it is. We'll see how that affects the citizen uh, desired ratio later on. For now we just keep going. 14.3k manpower max. That's pretty good. 152 per month is great. Could be better, but it is pretty good for this stage of the campaign. And incidentally, um, I believe in my military tradition, we have our own special road system from Roman traditions. Let me see this really quick. Roman roads. Right. Um, whoops. Uh, I don't know if I can see that from my levies or not. But we can also just build roads the normal way from just having level uh, level five civ tech. I believe. Fairly sure that that's available to us. So we just have to wait to get enough civ tech to build those roads. But roading the peninsula is going to be very satisfying for maneuverability around here, particularly without uh, lots of naval. Uh, you know, transport options for us, so that's going to be fine. Uh, these guys have my grain from Latium, no. The followers of Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus. There's a strong religious following pract uh, practicing near Temple of Jupiter Optimus Maximus, gathered by Fabia Tertia. Followers are holding their own ceremonies in front of large gatherings of people under the steps of the colossal entryway. There is no evidence that ceremonies of this kind have any benefits. But there's also no evidence that the contrary is true. Why would I be questioning whether there's benefits to this? Of course this is good. Um, okay, there are some big options here. Um, I could kill my auger, which doesn't seem like a very good idea. Lose five stability and gain five tyranny. That is completely off the table. What are you even thinking about, my dude? 
Barbatus, more like Barbaricus, thinking like that. I could um, get 15 popularity for my Augur. 20% Omen power for 12 months is very strong, but 10% reduced tax is not very good. Incidentally, what this would do for me is a morale boost, which is of questionable importance. I think having the boost to morale isn't the biggest deal in the world for the Etrurian War. So maybe, although this is for 10, well, this is for one year only, so wouldn't even be that helpful to be honest. Or lose five stability, she loses 50 loyalty, which does make her disloyal. No, no, she would go to 38, so she wouldn't be disloyal. Lose five stability from this, but I would gain 50 PI. This is pretty interesting. I'm thinking about this. Trading PI for stability is a, a gamble. I wouldn't normally trade stability for PI most of the time, but 50 PI for 5 stability is kind of the ratio I'm kind of okay with. And we do have uh, 45 at the minute, so it's not too severe. All right, this is a distraction, but there are plenty of religious places. That lady is going to just have to deal with it. She's still, yeah, 38, so I counted that right. That's fine. She's the wife of the consul as well, so she's just going to have to deal with uh, that situation. Incidentally, we picked up the statue. Actually, what did we pick up before? Um, oh, the warrior freeze, that's right. Ooh, you know what? Putting this in the Roma is not a terrible idea. Although, we're not making Roma manpower focused. We, we do have a lot of citizens, and citizens do produce manpower. So, it also has a lot of freemen, to be fair. This would probably be a noticeable manpower boost. You know what? I kind of think this is worth it at the minute. Warrior freeze is a good item, so let's throw that in there. Let's first compare, so... We have 24 manpower at the minute. Let's see if we get any noticeable improvement. It may not be noticeable quite yet, but it should in theory be noticeable. What was it 24? 24 manpower from just Roma. Let's throw in that warrior Fries. Deposit in Roma. Okay, we'll see on the monthly tick if that updates. Also 152, we'll see if these numbers change. One can hope, one can hope. 149, that's not exactly what I was hoping to see. 25, though. So it did increase, but my overall manpower reduced because I have less happiness in the Roma. So it's a it's a close matter. Actually, 151, so... This, okay, these numbers are sometimes a little glitchy, so we'll, we'll just... We'll say that this was a wash or was good. <laughs> not entirely sure which one, but one of them, one of them happened, to be sure. All right, let's just keep at it. Also, I should be improving relations with my feudatories more. Next up is uh, Polygnia. Let's uh, get the opinion improved with them. And then we'll do it with Marcia as well pretty soon. Once we get to 190 plus, we're going to be able to see if we're allowed to start integrating them and what the, the date would be for when that becomes allowed, if it's not already allowed. Okay. Right, my land is looking nice and uh, contiguous now. Very good. I could also spend my PI on various things. I probably should be doing that. So the Etrurian claim is already in place. That's not going to be a problem. Veneto? What are they doing? They're just fighting these guys separately. Okay. Um, I probably want to claim Lingonia so that I can get the rest of this stuff here. That, I think, is just going to require its own claim. Lingona brings in Veneto... At least at the minute they do. We'll see if this relationship lasts. Uh, I guess we'll see. So I'm going to claim uh, Lingonia. I don't think I get a claim on them through any other way. Not that I can think of. Fabricate claim on... Actually, let me check in my mission tree really quick. No, not that I can see. All right. Fortunately, it's just one one tribe here with both uh, Rauna and also Senna. All right, so Lingonia, I'm going to claim these guys. I'm going to go for the claim over here on... Um, Ariminium, or rather, uh, Ariminum. And then I'm going to also claim another person. Um, probably, what brings me into war with the Greek city-states the best? I could just claim Sapontum directly. Uh, is there anything over here that's being held back by Sapontum? The Destroy Apulians needs me to take out Sapontum. I kind of want to wait for Sapontum to team up with another Greek city-state so I can fight them alongside other Greeks. Not spend all this PI just on them. I could go for Apulia. There's an argument for going for Apulia who bring in Mesopia and Tarentum. This is a nice, uh, compact little team. And I kind of want to get these guys before the uh, the Epirotes learn how boats work and <laughs> bring their armies over to actually win the war they've been fighting for years now. So I kind of want to sort of race ahead of Epirus uh, arriving 
that would really truly be, or um, a Pyrrhus arriving, I should say. So that would really truly be a Pyrrhic victory if we could do that there. Um, I think uh, Apulia makes the most sense in that regard. Let's just claim for the Apulian location there. Uh, fabric claim for Apulia. There we go. That is going to do. I'm going to also cancel my access with them once I'm able to. We can do that before the war. No problem. So we're going to be able to expand in both directions here, get our sort of corners cut off there. And then once we control this stuff here, um, I'm going to again make Arimna my sort of frontier city on the northern edge of Italia, uh, on the south, south of Cisalpine Gaul. Um, I'm not going to bother going into Cisalpine Gaul right now with, with no region splitting in this campaign. There's no need to go into Gaul quite yet, even Cisalpine Gaul. And I'd rather just kind of uh, control the north of Italia. Like, I genuinely don't want to get bogged down in Gaul whatsoever until the Punic situation is attended to. I at least need the Carthaginians out of the peninsula before I even look northward beyond Italia. And ideally, I've got uh, uh, Sicily kind of under control before I turn my attention elsewhere. While Carthage remains in Sicily, I kind of don't feel comfortable committing to uh, going northward into Cisplane Gaul too much, because then they're still in Magna Gratia, splitting a region with me. So if I could just end any Carthaginian presence, I mean, also they do control the island over here, so that is a problem as well. They're technically already splitting Italia with me, because these islands are part of Italia, so it's a grim situation. Hmm, we could lower this guy to 35 uh, loyalty, so that is worth noting. There is a opportunity here for some shenanigans. 35 from, uh, if we do, what, what's it called? Um, ins uh, inspire disloyalty. We could potentially do some governor enticing if we control parts of the islands near him. That's one way to get these guys out of Banca Gratia or Italia. Let's wait and see. Maybe a less loyal governor gets assigned later on, or other things change loyalty. We just have to kind of pay attention to that. We're not in a position to do that anyways, so we'll just keep waiting. No need to do anything too hasty here. First of September of this year. Let's just wait. Lots of waiting, but this is just uh, how things worked out for us. I think things are going just fine so far, to be honest. <laughs> um, uh, it's island population. What's going on? Oh yeah, because you're just overcrowded in the forest. That's a you problem. You sort yourselves out. Just leave this area, uh, migrate away. Okay, go over to the capital, that's a good idea. There's a lot more space over here. Go over to Fermum, that's where you should go. No doubt about it. Alright, a uh, few more months, maybe actually one more month. No, probably two more months. Actually, no, no, yeah, one more month, and we're going to be able to do uh, Marcia now. Let's go ahead and get a uh, improved opinion with these guys. Very good. Then we'll get it going with Sabinia and Brutia as well. Just may as well. We're going to have to wait longer for these guys, but that's fine. Bond of childhood. Sometimes childhood forges friendships that can last for a lifetime, and often uh, those friendships transcend the boundaries of family, class, and belief. It would appear that Cornelia Secunda seems to be developing a strong bond with Claudia Secunda of the Claudii family. These are uh, two... Are these sisters? Uh, no. These are unrelated children is that correct yeah um wait cornelia and claudia secunda oh right because the right because it's claudia the second that's what that means claudia prima claudia secunda right so i think that's right i, I, I don't know it would appear that cornelia secunda se seems to be oh actually i read this part already as any parent knows there is really isn't much we can do to stand between them these two become friends, that's fine. These kids, I don't know why the state needs to be informed about these two kids being friends, but sure. <laughs> Thanks for the information. Appreciate that. Um, hello, Epirote Army. Or Epirote Navy, rather. Not Epirote Army, importantly. What are you doing? Weird, oh my god, wow. 47 ships. Holy crap. Naval Epirus? Well, you know what they're not doing is using any of these ships to transport troops over to take this land. It's an absolute dingus maneuver. I don't know what, what the hell they're thinking. Where where are they going? Like what <laughs> what what are you doing? It's mystery behavior by Epirus. It's completely baffling. I just don't know what to make of it. It's so bizarre. All right, let's get a third claim going as well. Oh, hold on. 
Oh, God, why, why do they have to just arrive and take one single tile? Wait, how, how did they just do this? How did they just take this directly? Do they have a special way to get territory before ending the... Okay, I don't know what to make of that, but that is now a problem. We have to fight Epirus for this territory. Wait, actually, who governs? No one governs this. We may be able to, to uh, entrance it, or what's the word? Entice it away. We'll see what we have to do once we get there, but we're not worrying about that quite yet. I think the claim we got on Apulia should ultimately be valuable. I guess we'll see. I guess we shall see. July... August, September. Okay, let me go ahead and raise my army maintenance once again and get ready to raise for uh, Etruria. We can raise... Uh, let me go ahead, actually... Wait, yeah, um, my uh, Mega Negration Levy is not going to be ready in time, so we'll just bring these guys in if we need to, but probably we don't need to. The Italian Levy should be enough on its own, I'm pretty sure. Oh, well, maybe. 302 versus 318. The Etruscans are very culturally assimilated, so these guys will have a very strong Navy. I think better than mine, or a strong uh, uh, levy, not a navy, they actually don't have any navy at all. Interestingly, I don't know why they've destroyed their own ships. Six martial versus uh, seven martial, so we're going to win on the martial front. With the other advantages we have, we might be able to beat them in, in direct a direct fight, but I guess we'll see. Um, we're going to have all the support of our feudatories though, so that should be fine. We at least will have the initiative in how this war gets started here. Now, I think the best bet here, in terms of what to claim, let me think about this. If we claim Tuskia, or that's the war target, we can get Kizra right away and get the war score ticking. Although I want to sack all the cities first before I do that, so I think the move I make is noting that they're a republic, they're going to raise their forces in their capital of Watluna. So I may have time to race, well, no, probably not. I mean... I might be able to outrun them on horses. If I send horses over to Klosi, uh, Welkal, and Tarakuna, I guess what I could do is I can move my entire army to Welkal. I can move my entire army to Tarakuna, sack that, move it to Welkal, sack that, and then um, send someone b back to go grab Kizra. Maybe I miss out on sacking Klosi. That is a possibility that that could be what happens there. Hard to say. Um... Hmm. Let's just proceed. I'll raise my army and then I'll decide. Well, I'll get to the point where I can raise my army and then I'll decide what to do. Wood from our armenium? Yes, please. Buy that. Works for me. One more month to go. Or there's the Epirate army. These guys have finally arrived. Who's their governor over here? Still nobody. Okay, that's a, a choice. <laughs> All right, well, fortunately, if this claim finishes before this war finishes, which probably won't be what happens at this rate, we're going to still be able to just fight Epirus for the land, but this may be a waste of 25 PI, which is a real shame, but that happens. I guess we'll go ahead and get a claim going on Alea once we're able to. Actually, we can do it with 20, so it's not 25. Let's claim Alea just to get that uh, cleaned up down there. Actually, Heraclea is probably a more... Efficient? Okay, they broke their lines, or they broke their thing with Tarentum. They just bring in Mesopia. Okay, if Apulia... Oh, mm, uh, what's the order I do this here? Um, Croton is now a feudatory of Epirus, so I could... I could fight Epirus. Well, I, could always, I could always just claim the land that Epirus takes, so I could just hold off on that. Let me use my PI... Let me let me clean up Alea. I want to get Alea out of here, because they're a wild card in the middle of my territory now. Let me get a claim on Alea, just to clean this area up. Province of Lucania, that's fine. Alright. This is a bummer. Epirus spent years not doing this, and then as soon as I started to claim this area, they started doing it immediately, so... That's, uh... Wait, why didn't they finish their siege? Oh, Apulia. Oh, you know what? Um... Oh, they ended the war. What? Okay. They have, for some reason, not taken really anything. Okay, well, the Apulian claim will be of use then, so that's good to know. It's kind of bewildering. <laughs> I don't know what to make of Epirus' decision-making there. Real strange. Shame of a governor. In the midst of a follow season, Naeus Ogulnius, one of our most esteemed governors, held a vast and lavish party in his summer palace at Nola. Even his most subordinate, even his most loyal subordinates were shocked by this display of contempt 
for the plight of the common man uh, and have written directly to us demanding that some manner of justice is served. <sighs> All right, so we could lose loyalty. 43 is fine. I prefer not to have that happen, though. Um, I could force him out, which uh, would solve the problem, but then I don't have a good governor down here. Incidentally, are there good replacements? There actually are good replacements. Fort Defense... Uh, so stubborn's not great. But 10-7 for Finesse and Marshall is pretty good. Popular, though, that could be a problem. Popular's governors are always, uh, you know, risky. Um, Marcus Valerius Lepidus. Uh, I mean, this would make everyone in Province of Campania a lot happier. If I kick this guy out, this would uh, resolve the loyalty thing. I think assigning this guy would make his loyalty basically collapse and we'd have loyalty problems again, but this guy is better. And he does have better marshals, that's not terrible. Could bring in a really good martial character like Lucius, Postumius, Megaeus. Uh, I think I'd rather have the fort defense. So let me go ahead and demand his resignation. Yeah, this guy's just kind of screwing around too much. This will make the entire area of Campania happier. All right. And then we'll go ahead and assign Amaricus Valerius Lepidus. Don't get any funny ideas. I know you're a popular... I know you're a, a popularis. So... Uh, what do we have here? Oh, my God. And he changed all the policies. Oh. <laughs> All right, um, I guess I won't be getting any more claims anytime soon. Okay, well, this guy's young. I think I can get this under control. What's the problem here? I mean, the tyranny is not helping. Uh, let me try to, well, actually, the, the friendship thing won't matter, because once um, I have the election, he's no longer friends with the rulers. So that won't make a difference. I can probably just bribe him. This is probably the easiest way to do this. We have a lot of anti-corruption. I think bribery is the way to go here. That is frustrating, but this is just what we're dealing with at the minute. And he's not technically disloyal. He's just, he's above, like, because I think 30, I think 32.99 is when you become disloyal. So he's just barely loyal. It's a very close call, though. So, oh, well, whatever. 10, 10 finesse is better for this area. So we're going to roll with that. All right. Let's get this show on the road. First of September. That means truce with Etruria is up. Yes, indeed. War is possible. Now, let's get our army organized before we go too far in here. So, I think... Hmm, up here, where's the... Oh, it's going to be Wet Luna, isn't it? Wet Luna, incidentally, is not actually fortified. Oh, hold on. They have no forts anywhere, do they? What the hell are they doing? Okay, um... I did not notice they had zero forts, so this is going to make our life uh, a little bit easier, to say the least. We could go for Aratim, which we can reach right away. This would actually be an interesting move, because this way we could actually spawn our army, because we haven't spawned them yet, we could spawn them in Aguium, attack for our, our, uh, our Minim, go and get this immediately. Their army spawns in Wet Luna, probably goes south to our uh, unfortified Nepete, and then they start working on our forts. Which means we get a, a sense of their army size and have time to basically then do a crazy carpet siege of all of their unfortified cities before we basically even fight them. I think this is the way to do it. I think this is the move. Raise everybody up here. It's possible they have a larger army. I'm not entirely sure, honestly, at this stage. We've, we keep losing cohorts for sort of mysterious reasons. I think it has something to do with our, our uh, population classes. Because a lot of our people are promoting up to be citizens and nobles which probably isn't helping, although I'm not entirely sure if that would have an effect. I genuinely don't know what's causing our cohort numbers to change so much. If you know in the comments, by the way, please let me know, because I would love some insight on that. So, all right. Let's go for it. Declare war on Etruria. They're isolated. Actually, their armies are raised, and they're in the north. Presumably, they're up here, because they are fighting these guys. So, didn't think about that. So that is a micro-mistake right there. Is this place under siege? Yes. They're sieging uh, Portus Winaris right now. That's still fine. This plan still works because we have now the chance to get this and then actually catch them over here in their siege. Or move the army this way and send Cav back to go and take all these cities really quick. So I think this is the move we do. So I think we, this is still going to work fine. I just 
I could have done this a bit more precisely if I remembered these guys were in a war already, but this is fine. So, um, actually, we can't claim this location for some reason. This isn't one of the spots we have a claim on. Okay, um, I guess what we do is we claim, uh, I guess we claim Tuskia and have one horse, one horse force come down to Klausi, then Welkal, then Tarakuna, and then Kizra at the very end. I think that's the move. Bring in everybody. This looks good. The popular is like this because we're fighting another regional power. Okay, here we go. Alright, so the 23rd levy of Kerkei, get to it, head on down to Klausi. Then we're going to have another horse force uh, also go off and uh, get up to some no good to go for Kartun. The rest of you um, head up to, actually this is probably not the most efficient way to do this. I think the rest of you come over to uh, Walwata would probably be fine. Actually come to Pizna to try to sack this and also possibly draw them into a river crossing battle in farmland. Actually, hold on. Defensive wise, uh, negative one dice penalty when in siege. I think the river crossing is very important. Let's just come to Pizna. Maybe we'll be able to. I don't think we'll be able to get line of sight from Pizna, but this is probably the move we make. Actually, I was, I was clicking the horse when I did that. Actually, um, let's just have you go and grab this in the hills, and then go over and grab that in the hills as well. Let's maybe slow through the mountains, but I'd rather keep the army kind of in the northern area. We can get a lot of war score really quick with our sacks and occupations, so we want to keep our army maybe kind of a bit more defensive. Maybe we actually just, let's grab this, and then maybe just hold the army back in Iguium so we've got line of sight. We can move the horses faster than their entire army, so... Also, let's keep an eye on this to see if this place stops being under siege, which is something that may not update until after a monthly tick. We'll at least be able to see... Oh! Wasn't expecting to see you guys here, but this is a, uh, this is a predicament. Um, I want this in the war, and these guys are going to take this and not give it to me because they're in a different war. This is a uh, Bowie. Hmm, we have got ourselves a problem. I need these guys to leave, because I, I can't get this if these guys are, are holding it down. I need them to end their war with Etruria basically right now so I can take this. All right, um, let's come here and see if their war is nearly over, perhaps? I can't attack them. I have no claim on anybody that they're involved with. I really don't want them to get this. This is really bad luck. Not much I can do. Fortune favors the bold. I just have to go for it. Yeah, I can't take this over because it's a different war. That sucks, but there's nothing to be done about this. Let's just come back over and uh, keep our forces kind of in reserve in Uguium just to wait and see what happens. I want to make sure... On the monthly take, we'll see if that place is still under siege. My horses can outrun their army, so we can basically do some uh, some raids into their land first before we kind of commit the full force. We can also wait for the uh, support of our feudatory armies before we move ahead, basically. Also, they're going to do some scouting with their navies. That is handy. All right, let's get some sacks in here. Sacking of Karatun. Publius Cornelius Barbatos has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Karatun. The enemy fleeing disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils were likely to cause those back in Roma to admire Publius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. Alright, uh, we sent one slave to Uguium and one to Napete. Um, this place here, hills area with a river, probably not going to be a city primarily, so let's say none shall hide. Over here, good. Alright, you uh, make a dash straight down to... I don't want to go... Going for Watluna locks the rest off here. Make a tentative move. I should go for uh, Pupiluna first, just in case I can't get to Pizna in time. We're going to see after the monthly tick if this is still under siege. Etruria er, Etruria may break the siege to come react to my declaration, or to react to this stuff. Etruria could also get this back, actually. There's some value to letting Etruria get this back so I can get it instead. We'll see what we can do here. Just keep everyone you know, going here. The sacking of Klausi. Uh, Publius Cornelius Barbatus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Klausi. The enemy fleeing disgrace and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. 
Needless to say, these spores of war likely caused those back in the Roma to admire Publius greatly. But leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. All right, this is one slave to Frigale. This is probably going to be another, well, Clusi is an okay location, but I don't really want to have this many cities, so none shall hide down here, or up here, I mean. All right, you head for Welkal. These guys are, oh, they took this there, all right. Everyone wants my wood all of a sudden, very strange. Oh, because I was trading wood to Etruria, that's right. I'll trade with um, someone who I'm not gonna fight, ideally. Uh, for now, I guess I'll trade with Thuria, or whatever. Okay, enemy spotted. Um, we do have more forces than them in total. And martial-wise, we do win. So uh, this should be fine. 3.67. That's a surprisingly low morale for hard difficulty. I don't know why these guys have such low morale, but we are going to beat them in a straight-up fight. All right, Ganuatia took over this for some reason. Okay, so I need these guys to retake this, ideally, but we'll see what we can do here. Okay, so now that I see where they are, I'm going to bring my main army into the fold. I'm going to send them over to Pizna to try and get a fight. Actually, I don't really need to fight Etruria if I just take all the land directly. So let me bring the army kind of into this, into the area. Well, first, let me, let me do it like this. I'm going to leave one light infantry behind in case this is retakeable for some reason. Like, the war's ended, we'll just leave them in, in our fort. And then everybody else... I don't want to lose any more cap. Everybody else, come on over to, like, uh, Walawata or something. Maybe just go straight to Pizna, actually. Well, I'll go get that with my... Well, that's probably safe. Let me just go there with my main army and go to Pizna. That's fine. Alright, Marcia should give this to me, although I'm gonna miss out on Tarakuna. Thanks, Marcia, I really appreciate that. Love it when my feudatories screw things up. Alright, sacking of Popluna. Publius Cornelius Barbatus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Popluna. The enemy flee in disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils were like that caused those back from the Roma to admire Publius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. Alright, so sent uh, a slave to Roma, sent one to Agumium. So this is going to definitely be a Nunchal Hide. This isn't a very good city location. It's plains on the coast, so that's okay, but there is farmland in the area. Particularly the Pizna is quite good. Alright, so let's say Nunchal Hide. Alright, so this force here, I need to run out of the way before these guys arrive. I'm just gonna have these guys uh, go down to lock down Watluna. We, we have to race against the Bowie force before they screw everything up, so let's go and just try to get to Pizna. We're not going to be able to get it, though, before... Uh, it, it is what it is. These, this force here is screwing up all my plans, as usual. Alright, I guess we'll just go and try to grab... Try to kill this army, actually, with my main force. That's a pretty good idea. Sacking of Welkal. Publius Cornelius Barbatus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Welkal. The enemy flee in disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils were like that caused those back in the Roma to admire Publius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. Alright, three slaves sent directly to the Roma. Very good. This place here is farmland on the water, so could be a good permanent sea location. I'm still going to say none shall hide, though, for the money. Alright. We're not going to be able to get this in time, I don't believe, so that is a big shame. I guess we can try, but I don't think it's going to even happen. Um, that is too bad. I'm just going to send my horses back over to rejoin with the main army at this point. And then you uh, go ahead and still come and grab Wet Luna. So I'm just going to have you come to Wet Luna as well. We may have to catch these guys down here, actually. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, we would have been too late. 22nd of October. Psych. Catch these guys here, maybe? Yes, we actually do catch them. This will be a stack wipe. Very good. This is incidentally part of um, Sisselpine Gaul, so I'll have to leave that alone. That sucks. I mean, that that's fine. I mean, uh, this part here sucks, though. I don't know exactly what to do about that. Alright, the Battle of Wada. Well, 3. That is a stack wipe. 
as to be expected. Alright, now we can go for Pizna. Um, maybe we'll get it before this transfers over. Probably not, though. We'll see what we can do. Alright. Petroria, I needed to, to declare peace with these tribes. Come on. Come on, do it. I'm willing to wait in order to get this in this war. Like, I'm not playing around. I need, I need the territory for the mission, so... Uh, you know, doing multiple wars isn't really ideal here. Alright, White Luna is sieged. Slaves sent to Roma in Aguium. At the sacking of Watluna, uh, Publius Cornelius Barbaticus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Watluna. The enemy flee in disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, the spoils of war are likely to cause those back in the Roma to admire Publius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. Excuse me. Um, not shall hide. That's fine. Um... Yeah, we're not going to get this in time. Okay, so what we'll do now is basically send everyone just directly to Luna with um, these guys also going, or one of you, I guess, going to Luke to grab that too. The other of you go to Luna as well. Then we'll just attack these guys once we can. Um, I'm hoping they just declare like a white piece or something. The moment these lines go away, I can sort of proceed properly, but I'm willing to wait as long as it takes to get the stuff in this one more. Because having this um, not be part of the deal... Oh no. Okay, we get there first. <sighs> okay, dodging a bullet there. Gonna be able to keep these guys from taking that too. Alright, well we've mostly pulled this off fine. This is just bad luck right there. Or we get a claim on uh, these guys and wait and then go to war while this is still happening, which would be very frustrating to have to do it like that, but I think that's not going to be necessary. Uh, okay, I guess technically Marcia takes over, but they should give it to me. That should be fine. Creation of Luna's one. Alright, everyone just hang out here for now. And then we get there. Marcia gets this, but then they give it to me, so that should be fine. Yeah, they just gave it. I think it's on mad because they're uh, putatory, so that's fine. Everybody just wait. Access is allowed. Don't fight the Etruscans early, please. Everyone just stay calm. Oh, yeah, is leaving. All right, you guys need to get to white peace with Etruria or vice versa. This needs to, like, get cleared up here because I just, I need this thing for my mission. Like, I can't, I can't not have this thing. I guess what I could do is leave Etruria. Like, I could take everything in the mainland except for that and then fight Etruria later. That's really not ideal because that means a truce timer of maybe five years to finish this mission tree. That being said, I have to wait a long time because of the Carthaginian stuff down here anyways. So maybe that would be okay. <sighs> Let me look and see what I can do here with the peace deal. So if I sue for peace, give me... I don't want that up there. I guess I could leave them with that content, or content, that stuff up there. <sighs> I mean, this would be a good start. What does my mission actually require? Let me actually check that before I declare things. Technically, the mission doesn't require um, that territory, so I would be able to finish the mission. So, uh, Doom and Gloom may be a little overstated here. That being said, I suspect the Etrurians um, would lose their war. Well, no, they have their army still raised, so they might win their war. And they just basically start moving into Sisypine Gaul, and they'd have the island still. Alright, so here's the deal. I'm going to go ahead and just take this piece, so I'm going to force them to give me all of Tuskia all of Dodecopolis, and then I'm going to leave them with this portion up here. I'm coming back for them as soon as the truce is up, and I don't know how long the truce will be until the war, until the peace is declared, in order to grab this stuff here. Um, assuming Etruria still controls it, I'm sure they will. I guess we'll see what's going on at that point. Uh, but I think this is the best we can do. I think if I wait for this to somehow get transferred, I don't think Etruria is going to go to white peace with their tribal opponents at the minute. At least I don't think that's super likely. Maybe um, once they finish their siege, that would go to get them enough war score to... Well, I don't, I don't know. It's just a risk. That relies on the AI uh, doing things in a particular way, which is always a, a big uh, risk to, to put your plans on the back of. So the safer option is just to come back for this little section later. I don't need this for my mission tree. I just need it to finish the control of the province. But I get two full provinces here. This is fine. 
Um, yeah, and then this stuff appears in Sissel Pine Vault. I don't want to go into Sissel Pine Vault right now, so this works fine for me. Okay, go ahead. I guess I could force them... No, there's no release symbols. I wish I could force them to release somebody over here, but that is not in the cards. Okay, this is fine. 8 AE is a fair bit, so let's not go too crazy here. Alright, the Italic Regional Power of Etruria, now the Italic Local Power of Etruria, accepts our generous peace offer. Etruscan Tuscia to Rome, and Etruscan Dodecopolis to Rome. Very good. This means the military can be lowered and will be lowered. We don't have a, we have to wait still a fair bit to get to this. Although, 1st of August of 485 isn't that far away. Maybe we just stay raised and then go to war with the nearby Lingonians uh, once this is done. I think that honestly isn't a terrible idea. We have we didn't really use any manpower at all, so we can just uh, sort of keep it going. So let's just uh, do just that. Anyways, uh, and the Etruscans. Um, the Etruscans used to dominate the Italian peninsula, but our victory at Lacus Wadimo has revealed how weak they have become. This time we supplant them as hegemon of the Italic states, which this victory certainly does. Okay, so we're going to be able to found a colonia in this area. And then uh, Dodecopolis specifically receives fresh conquest with those familiar modifiers. Alright, the conquest of Etruria. The mighty Etruscans have fallen. Rome's greatest neighbor is reduced, and Rome is the undisputed master of the Turian... The uh, Ter... Uh, Terhenian coastline, there we go. We will ensure that it is Rome, not Etruria, who is remembered for all time. With newly conquered territory comes the inevitable parceling of land and distribution of promises, but it is up to us to decide which township will become the Roman hub. So this new land is pretty good quality, but there's a lot of like things to consider here. Lots of this area is already city, so a huge tyranny loss is, a, I guess tyranny gain, is uh, incoming, so brace yourselves, everybody. So where'd the capitals go? So Nepete stayed the capital down here, and then Wet Luna stayed the capital here. So I definitely want Pisae to be the capital over here, if possible. Um, which means uh, we'll do that in just a sec. Okay, so we could select uh, Kose to become the place here. Kose is, let's see, let's get down here somewhere. Kose is here. Kose is farmland, uh, no rivers, but there's no rivers anywhere around here. Kose is the right distance from Ostia and Wei, incidentally, and it's in a sort of central location for this uh, province in terms of coastal areas. There's an argument for Clusium. Uh, Clusium will end up being kind of in the middle of just everything, and it is farmland, I think, on a minor river that counts there. I hope so. Nearby river. Yeah, so Clusium is another good option here. Um... I tend to prefer having coastal central capitals, but there's an argument for having, for this rich area, having a more uh, sort of middle area. That being said, Clusium could remain a city. Some, a farmland on a minor river in an area with as much food as Tuscia could probably, I could probably maintain two cities here and not be too bothered. I, I don't want to get rid of farmland cities under most circumstances. So having it be at Kose is a strong argument. We could also do uh, Wetlonia, which I don't think is a very good location. It's plains, so no. Popul uh, Populonium is also plains, so no. So I think we're going to set it up at Kose, but we're going to keep Clusium as a city as well. Incidentally, uh, let's see, they're both eight populations, so it's sort of either way. Kose just has this slight advantage. Well, that being said, actually, coastal port is 5%, and then river is 5%, but then they can also build uh, port infrastructure buildings, which this area couldn't do, so this is a bit better, and it's the same distance, and it expands our coastal fortification line, so we're going to go ahead and say that Kose is going to be our capital here. Comes to the French capital of Tuskia, that is fine by me. Also, lots of population is set up there. Um, alrighty, and then... Tharkinium, which is also farmland on a river, or I mean on the coast, uh, I probably want to keep this as a city. This is a really good tile to keep as a city, uh, even though it's kind of in a weird location. That's fine, ultimately. Um, other than that, anything else to note here? We have a barracks here, which uh, might be fine just to keep as it is. Eh. I think we'll keep the barracks for now. Um, otherwise, no other building snout. I think Clusum, which is farmland on river, we keep. Uh, Cortona, which is uh, hills on river, I think we uh, demolished this. Can't justify a hill city in this kind of area. Alright, get out of here. Over here through the smoke, let's take a look at this area here. We've got a villa state that can go. Nothing up there. Pise is a really, or uh, Pise, I should say, is a really good location for the capital. 
farmland on a river um, on the coast, so it's a really, really strong tile. Alternatively, uh, Florentia is also, I think, feature Florence is where that is, is another good spot. Farmland on the river, not on the coast, though. So I think uh, Pisa is a, um, a better spot, all things considered. It is quite far away from Kosei, so let me think about this. Let's see. Having... Uh, let me think about this. I can't, I can't see through the smoke. I think having uh, Ad Noas actually... Well, actually, no, we already have uh, Clusium staying. Maybe we'll be able to fort at Ilwa, because that fortifies, that protects Populonium. Then there's a hole, though, in Wet Luna. Uh, but then they get caught right away, so I think this is okay. Although this is iron, I don't really want to have a... I would, I would, I'd rather have an iron mine there, honestly. We could just have a fort over here, that's one option. A little too far away either side, but... Arguably, which one's better? Probably... Populonium, because that also protects the island. So I think we make Populonium. So what we do, I wish they'd kept the fort here that they start with. I'm going to get rid of the library of Populonium. I'm going to go ahead and demote it. I know, I know, tyranny. Over here, the city of Wetlonia, same thing. i um, going to go ahead and get rid of the slave freighter and just demote this as well. And then peering through the smoke. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, make the capital over here, uh, Pise. It's very, very far north. This is definitely like a frontier capital, because this is at the very edge of the Italia region, but this is a really good location for a city, all things considered. I'd make this the capital. Not too bad, actually, all things considered. The Etruscans are not too upset. All right, and now we definitely go ahead and trade for stone. Also, our... Uh, Borders are contiguous once again. Cancel the sheep for just a quick sec. We have some serious construction to, to do here. All right, get some stone going. All right. And then let's go ahead and get the fortifying. We need to get this fortified for sure. Get Kosei fortified. Um, that will protect the coastline. And then I need to fortify, realistically I need to fortify Populonium. I need my entire coastline fortified before I fight Carthage. Like, I can't stress this enough. If I leave um, any... I mean, so what this will do ultimately is I'm sort of over-fortifying over here technically, but this fort also protects uh, movement uh, between the island where I'll have a mine eventually. And then in the interior, Clusium should be fortified eventually, but I'm not going to prioritize that at the minute. Um, this area is already somewhat protected by the Aguium fort, which will probably remain as a fort, ultimately. Uh, I guess with Clusium Fortified, this isn't quite as good. Yeah, because this will cover there. This covers there. Yeah, it's, it's hard to say. Because once we get this stuff here, too, what we could end up doing... Yeah, because this will protect... Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could actually have a Vsol Fort to cover that other entrance, so I think that's the way. Okay, that looks fine. Um, over in the economy. What do we do now? We keep army maintenance at full... No, we don't need to do it for that long. What we do is we lower it to default. Um, keep Fort Maintenance going, though. Actually, yeah, keep keep Fort Maintenance going. Who do these guys bring in? Nobody else at the minute. So you guys come around to there to get ready for war with Lingonia. Okay, that's fine. I think I destroyed all the cities that I don't want to keep around. So now, um, Aguium... Uh... I could just keep it a city for now, um, but I've been destroying hill cities otherwise. I mostly just care about this being the fort, but while it has all this population, I may as well keep it as the city. Once I can set up uh, Ar Arovna as my capital, I'll destroy the city and sort of move the city infrastructure over there, so that is the plan with that. Okay. And then, with my new with my administration, um, I definitely need... Yeah, these areas are very densely populated, so... Dodecopolis needs to get switched over to assimilation. I have to wait to do this for until later. Maybe we'll get some more of those um, events that give us extra PI, but we shall see. Alright, Etruria narrowly survives this one. All those from Tuskia, yep, that's fine. Not approaching the Greeks. What are you guys up to? Nothing too much. Marble from Dodecopolis, yep, that's fine. What's my truce like with Etruria now? 
462. Okay, that's not that bad. So next console ship will deal with this and get that cleaned up. Marvel from Dodecopolis. Yep. And once I finish this war here, because uh, we'll get a bunch more slaves, I'll do a big sort of slave micro uh, sort of moment to get everything organized. Plus, I don't want to spend too much more money as I may need to build more forts. In fact, I will need to build a fort at Arimna, or I think it becomes Arminium, which is the Roman, the Latin name for it, I believe. So that should be fine. You guys re-merge together. And uh, you've got enough supply limit up here with there's a fort, so just hang out here for now. Um, uh, um, yeah. We'll come down to probably, uh, how come, how come the Gauls have so much fortification over here? Like, what is this? They're not the Gauls, the, um, I guess they are Gauls technically, but why do the Gauls have so much more fortification? Yeah, they've got, like, three forts around here. These guys control, um, Hatria. Hatria is a really, really big barbarian city. I kind of want to go sack that, to be honest. I definitely could with my forces. Yeah, against these guys, we're going to easily outnumber them. 65 local population. That's native, I mean, so that should be completely fine. Let's just proceed here. Wait here in the hills for now. Going to just basically be a, about a seven months or eight months or so before we can get to it. That is fine. Just going to keep waiting. 14.8k manpower with the levy raised. That's pretty good. It's even higher without the levy raised, I am sure. Also, plenty of money now. Did I not cancel stone? Whoops. Okay, well, let me do some more building because I have the stone still. Um, where is that marble that I'm selling off here? There's a bunch of marble in this area. Let me get some more. Let me get a marble mine at Wallawada. This is a pretty bad spot for a city, so this is a good spot for a marble mine. Marble mine. Get a marble mine going. And then that's basically it for money. Although I could build uh, some other stuff over here. I could build at least one granary in Roma. I would be able to with my current money. Or what I could all do instead is... Um, let me think about this really quick. What do I want here? What I really want is a citizen... Or I mean, a noble district. These are expensive. Uh, let's just wait for now. Let me switch off of stone, actually. I got my one mine going, so that's going to do for now. We can switch back to stone later. Switch back to sheep. Alright, there we go. And then, um, we've got that there. Destroy Apulians will require all of the Apulian stuff and uh, Epirotes and also the the uh, Trentum people and also Mesopia and also Sapontum. So that's great. Um, this one here, yeah, this is just not even... Oh my god, this is going to take a while. That's fine, though. Hold on, wait a minute. Um, it wants me to own Ravna? Did I see that right? Oh, one of the following. Okay. <laughs> I was about to say, if this mission tree forces me into Sisalpine Gaul, I was going to lose my mind. Yeah, I'm, you're out of your mind if I'm going into Sisalpine Gaul quite yet. No way. I'm not tangling with that. Ugh, man. Um, anyways, the treasury of Valeria Tertia. She's back. <laughs> the... <laughs> the youthful family head. She's made a return. Here she is again. It seems Valeria Tertia has gotten her hands on a lot of wealth. Uh, she's been putting her hand in the piggy bank, as it were, as she has started investing a great deal of silver into building a reputation for herself. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just... It's just so stupid. The fact that it's this little kid doing it is so funny. Though it is unclear exactly where she found these riches, her efforts are surprisingly effective. <laughs> With her increased popularity, Valeria Tertia has started vying for a more powerful position in Rome, shamelessly comparing, shamelessly comparing herself to our consul, Publius Cornelius Barbat. <laughs> oh my god, okay, this is, this is one of the funniest, like, weird sort of mishaps from these dynamic events, just targeting, you know, the characters that can fit them. Um... Well, uh, unfortunately, I think I just have to say she'll quiet down in time. She has 25 corruption. Is that so? What in the world? Crafty? She's eight. What? I mean, maybe arts and crafts, but I guess crafty in that way. Holy crap. All right. Um, yeah, unfortunately. Well, that also loses 10 loyalty, though. <sighs> uh, 34 is still loyal. 
I don't want to spend, I don't want to trade 13 gold for three tyranny. That's not worth it right now. She'll probably come in time, hopefully. All right. You know, once I finish taking the Italian area, I am like giving myself like as much time to relax on tyranny as possible. I really have gained a lot of tyranny from destroying these cities, but it's all about setting the stage for the future uh, layout of everything. Heraclea Pontica wants my grain. Okay, that's not a name I was expecting to see. They're still kicking over there. Interesting. But no. No grain sales from Latium. That is not happening here. <clears throat> Let's see how we're doing on the score. That's what I like to see. Misadventure number one in the world. Our starting situation divider is helping out a lot, to be clear, so I can't take too much credit here because it's so low. The uh, Ariar Rafid Kingdom also is being helped out by their very low starting situation divider, so should be noted. Now right, you guys just hang out here. You guys uh, still are fine supply limit-wise, even in the winter, it seems. That is uh, impressive. Here's the new Etrurian army. Oh, actually, no, that's wrong. That's mostly mercenaries. That one cohort is the new Etrurian army. That's pretty sad. That is pretty sad. So these guys should now be pretty much... Oh, man, now they're going to get killed by these Gauls. All right, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We just got to wait it out, and then we'll go back for them later. Yeah, Etruria has really fallen. All right, Carthage, don't get any funny ideas right now, please. How's my actions doing? They all are very happy with me. Um, I, building one more building would get me the Bonnie approval. I may as well go for that, honestly. Uh, let me wait a little bit longer to build something a bit more valuable. I want to build the... Um, I want to get the uh, noble districts going, to be honest. And that's 114. So let me wait a few more months, then we'll trade for stone and, and get that under construction. Also, we can up to speed 3 again. <sighs> Alright. Still in that war, so I guess we'll see... Uh, if they get up to anything here. Almost 15k with the levy raise, that's pretty good. I didn't spot any uh, farming or mining infrastructure when I was looking around, so I don't need to move any slaves at the minute. We'll get to it later. Alright, so let's uh, wait one more month and trade for stone and build that, that building. Actually, we might be able to do it now if we trade for stone. Let me see. Uh, I'll also wait the month. It's, I don't want to have to bother with Trading and then retrading if it isn't doable, so. Are they, what are they doing? Okay, assuring weirdness. Worry about it later. I just won't be able to make Ar 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 Arimna my capital until I get this, because it's going to move the capital around, because this game is wonderful and has no problems at all. Um, but, anyways. Okay, now we switch out the sheep for the stone. Or the livestock, I should say, for the stone stone going. Whatever. Okay, now we should be able to build a cheaper noble district. 106, so I, was, I wasn't able to do it last time, so I'm glad that I waited to do that. I could also build aqueducts, and it might be worth getting the aqueducts going. Aqueducts don't provide as much pop capacity as you probably would like them to, but um, they do definitely add up. You can have up to 20 per territory, and in the late game we are going to be hitting these caps reliably, particularly in this area. Really, it becomes kind of a race where you have to keep your build, your, your building capacity high enough to sort of keep up with the aqueduct need. But for now, we've got plenty of building slots and we don't really need more pop capacity quite yet. We, can, we have a lot of slaves to move around. I guess I could move around slaves right now, but I'd rather spend my money on buildings than after the war with uh, Lingonia. Then I'll have more slaves and I'll do all the slave micro in this area with vegetables going. All right, let's get a noble district under construction just so our nobles have a higher ratio to build up to... We're actually about to lose nobles because of our ratio, so that's good to... Uh, actually, it's about to happen, so that is, a, that is a bummer. It's happening next month. We'll get more nobles once that thing's finished, so it is what it is. All right, switch out stone for livestock once again. And then we proceed. Trade with Egypt. It's good that we have a lot of internal trades available now, thanks to all of our resources, so that's always handy. Eventually, you kind of do have to start relying on your own internal trade systems once uh, people dislike you enough, which uh, may be a problem we have later on. All right, June, July, August, September. When is this finishing? August, oh. This is a bit sooner than expected. All right, 
Um, we can probably go ahead and go back up to full maintenance now, just to be on the safe side. Not just probably, we will go back up to full maintenance now. <laughs> no need to say it so trepidatiously. Then next month we will head on down and get ready to just go straight into, probably go straight to uh, Rauna, as these guys won't have access, I think, through Sinones. No, so these guys will have to fight me at Rauna. I'd rather get this locked down and then turn around and go back and get Senna, if that makes sense. Oh, Truria won this fight. Fortress in Blanda is complete. Oh yeah, these fortresses down here are finishing now. Also the one in Neapolis is done too. What's this? Just a little character. Oh my god, this little brat. What is she? Oh. <laughs> I can't do anything because she's not an adult. Well, that's uh, that's awkward. Um, what's my threshold? Oh, she has no, no, she has twenty-seven power base. Oh my God! All right. Um, I guess she is the much younger sister of Marcus Valerius Corvinus, who isn't actually in any position. So, um, I could bring her to a trial. Uh, I don't know how that would work. I just bring her to juvie, <laughs> juvenile court. But nah, I don't think that's really going to be a good idea. I just kind of have to just uh, survive that because I can't because she's not an adult. All the normal interactions aren't available. Also, I never got around to bribing this guy, but it ended up working out okay. So I think we're just gonna hope that we don't have to bother bribing him. That would be preferable, to be honest. All right, now we can go back and start getting these places uh, switched back over to assimilation. Don't get any funny ideas about loyalty or have any bad events. I'm so tired spending all my PI switching the goddamn mega migration policies around. Just keep it together, my dude. Alright, you guys go ahead and get into position up here. Alright, the coming of the city of Salernum. Our extension of new privileges and investments into the local infrastructure have seen Salernum grow from relative humility into a true Sabaean city. While it still has some way to go before it can rival the great cities of our age, the past two years have ushered in a new era of growth and urbanization in this territory. Alright, good. This was the free city we got from that mission. So that is uh, fine by me. Not an amazing city location, but it's fine, and uh, this does help protect our coastline. So uh, I think it is worth our time to fortify this once we can. Incidentally, once um, Salernum gets fortified, what we probably want to do is fortify... Uh, if we fortify Capua, which is a city location I want to keep because it's also farmland riverside on a coast, then I fortify Lewinium, which I should do eventually. It's going to make forts over here very expensive. Then the fort coverage here is lined up, which is going to be important. Really, once I get all my forts lined up here along the coastline, I'll feel a lot better about attacking Carthage. Because the thing is, um, fort coverage along the coast doesn't stop the invasion, but it slows them down a lot and pins them in place in a place that's predictable where I can go and fight them. The problem is, in a direct fight, I'm not going to actually beat them, so if they bring their whole force there, which isn't necessarily what would happen. Or, 51 ships, I might be able to meet, to meet them ship-wise. If I can just get enough ships here, I might be able to do something. I'll have to come back to this later, though. Alright, also, these guys are fighting Massilia, and it looks like Massilia is winning. Their names are so similar, so it's confusing, but... These guys seem to be winning, and if they do win this, they're going to be in a much stronger position to help me against Carthage, so that is good to see. But either way, Carthage is, is going to have to wait. We're going to focus on this first. Let's not get ahead of ourselves here. All right, 16th of July. Now we just wait for the monthly tick, and we go for it. All right. So far, so good. No allies for these guys. This should be easy peasy. Claim on Apulia, and also Lingonia good. Okay, so first things first, um, let me switch over, it's larger, Apulia, actually, over to Assimilation. All right, please just stay put. <laughs> Don't, no more funny business, please, I beg of you. I am begging for a, a, a cessation of all funny business. But we're taking uh, uh, our minimum. Actually, I could just leave a force to start sieging Senna while I go up to Rod, and I think that's probably the better way to do this. So this is still fine to do it like this. Um, calling all my feudatories, that's fine. Let's go for it. Alright. I'm gonna leave behind a skeleton crew of some... Let's say... Hmm, let's leave behind a maybe a large skeleton crew just so attrition doesn't cause problems of uh, 1.5k. Bring the other 14k up to Rauna and kind of just wait and see if they react. 
They should be uh, spawning at Rauno, so this will probably be a pretty quick little battle here. I don't think these guys will have that many numbers. Should be fine. Um, if this all looks good. Yeah, we're good. Let's proceed. Troy is losing now. Okay. Well, <laughs> they lost all their numbers, so it's not too big of a surprise. Building a library up there. Alright, Senna's under siege. That's good. Okay, we're going to actually just attack them right away. This is pretty good. This should be a slaughter over here. We've got much heavier soldiers than they do, so this should be perfectly fine. Although they have an unusual heavy cav uh, emphasized army, but that's not going to save them. Alright, not a stack fight, but we did uh, kill quite a few of them. Where are they running? They're running north, probably to Hatria. That is fine. Okay, uh, just uh, keep at it. Uh, Hipponian wants my grain from Latium. No, I'm not selling that grain. Any other grain that I have is uh, fine to be sold, but not that grain. Don't even think about it. A fair trade. Consul Publius Cornelius Barbatus and his allies are staunch proponents of the guilds and traders of Aroma and have long been planning legislation aimed at increasing their profits. They propose a complicated but well-reasoned mixture of laws affecting production standards, currency, exchange, and tariffs, which has wide support in merchant circles. Sadly, co-counsel, or rather, co-counsel, <laughs> my, my lawyer brain just uh, was, got involved there for a sec. Co-consul uh, Quintus Fabius Rulianus is intensely opposed to the bill for any number of poor arguments when he plucks out of the air, that he plucks out of the air when confronted on the issue. Quintus apparently has a personal vendetta against several of the traders who stand to benefit the most and wields a not inconsiderable amount of power in the Senate. <sighs> All right, um, this starts an event chain where the consular relationship basically could fall apart. So I prefer not to have that happen. Actually, these both do that, so okay, hold on. So I could attempt to placate him. This gives me PI. This one upsets him, so uh, don't really want to do this one. Loses loyalty on him. I think I'd rather just uh, try to placate him. I only have um, a, a little over a year. I have a year and a few months left of this co-consular relationship, so let's just try to keep it together for a bit longer. Please, I, I just... Didn't you hear my entreaties earlier about begging for no funny business? And this sounds a lot like funny business to me. All right, let's get some loyalty with him and also some PI, and an event chain will happen. Great, love that for me. All right, get, don't, don't, no, no events. Please, I beg of you, please, just keep it together. You're 26. You're younger than me in real life. <laughs> just. Keep, keep it together. Let me just keep you in this position and keep these policies going. I just want more soldiers. That's all I want. That's all I've ever wanted, honestly. Just pr convert these guys to be Roman. Stop goofing around. Okay. My, uh, my entreaties have been made. Let's proceed. Status quo down here. I maybe could do a skeleton crew. Ooh, hold on. You know, this is a pretty small person. Uh... This is probably too small of a force to do an assault, but this is a very tempting assault target. I think we just siege it. The small garrison will make it easier to siege, so we'll just let it go. Progress in the Senate. Following the disagreements in the Senate, co-consul Quintus submitted a list of demands necessary to secure the backing of his supporters in the upcoming vote on the trade reforms proposed by Consul Publius. The demands of the Boni, because of course this is a factional thing, he's from the Boni, we are from the Optimates, are a curtailed trade reform that favors domestic over foreign trading agreements combined with an investment in temple upkeep and festivals at considerable expense. Without the support of the co-consul, we have to look for another way forward. Oh boy, um, so this would upset him and we lose that loyalty in the PI we just gained, or gain more loyalty, lose popularity. Optimates are mad, but they have 100 uh, approvals, so that doesn't matter. We lose, fortunately, less money than we currently have, so that's good. We gain... Um, we gain 15 years of commerce income at 12.50%, which is very good. And monthly stab change for uh, five years of plus 0.05. Why is this event considered a bad event? This is a great event. Maybe we're missing out on a slightly better one if we hadn't caved earlier, but we're going to just, you know, this guy has the right idea. I'd like more commerce income and more stab change. Not perfect, but good enough. Yes, please. Works for me. <laughs> I don't know what all the, uh, the fuss is about. Breach over here? Wow, okay. Well, this is definitely a uh, good time to do an assault. All right, this should be a pretty free assault. 
concerned that these guys may fight me again and, and uh, get more damage than they should because of low morale. But let's assume an assault here and take advantage of the breach. Right, the sacking of Arauna. Publius Cornelius Barbatus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Arauna. The enemy fleeing disgrace and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war are likely to cause those back in Roma to admire Publius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. Okay, um, probably a nun shall hide situation. This is a nun shall hide situation. When is it ever not a nun shall hide situation? Alright, let's see if we can just uh, brazenly walk into Hatria. The enemy army is probably there, so let's go to the river crossing and just see what we can do. I really want to sack this city. This is a huge city. And it's not an area I'm going to be conquering soon. Same thing, by the way, with Altinum. This is another giant uh, city. Although not a barbarian city, because the uh, the Veneto tribe is actually an Italic tribe. Fun fact. Um, and yes, this is actually future Venice. That is, this is the marsh that Venice will be built in later on. Currently called um, Altinum. So, fun fact. Alright, let's come up here and just see what we can do. Fortunately, once we get this, this is... We're going to probably have enough four score to just end things really quickly. Uh, so this should be fine. If you guys could get a breach, that would speed things up quite a bit. Nope, supply shortage. Oh yeah, these guys are still holding that, that's right. It just wasn't displaying any hash marks, so that's why I was confused. Okay, that's fine. Let's see what we're looking at over the river. Oh, nobody's there. Well, that works for me. Let's just go get a sack off. No idea where the enemy army has gone, but they are not going to defend their big cash cow city, so here I come. <laughs> Alrighty. More sacks for Rome. Works for me. Save our PI now for claims. Sacking of Hatria. Publius Cornelius Barbatus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Hatria. The enemy fleeing disgrace and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war are likely to cause those back in the Roma to admire Publius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. Alrighty, that was a, a four slaves sent to my territories, so we have a lot of slaves to work with after this. None shall hide. 140 gold for that one. Holy moly. This guy's going to have a lot of loyalty after he's no longer the consul, so we have to pay attention to this situation. He could become a problem character real quick if we're not careful, so we have to do some serious paying off. But in the short term, it is definitely worth it to get the gold. Those loyalty problems aren't super serious. Once we're dealing with legions, uh, cohort loyalty to legion leaders is a much, much, much more serious concern than uh, levy loyalty, ultimately. But we'll worry about that later. At the minute, the loyalty from cohorts will just have an effect on uh, power base, so it could affect his personal loyalty, but we'll worry about that again later on. You guys just come back down, and possibly we'll just do an assault to finish this whole thing off. Chew through the rest of our manpower real quick, but that's the uh, that's the Roman way, what can I say? And then we were able to fight Apulia now at will, which is phenomenal. So we're going to do just that. I will also need a new claim on Etruria, so let's not forget about that. So once I have enough PI, I'm going to claim this one little section right here while I gnash my teeth and groan about it, but it has to happen. All right, we have a uh, naval battle happening here. The Frontonian fleet is uh, sailing in to fight the similarly small Lingonian fleet, so let's see how that goes. Looks like uh, Frontonia is... Look, looks like they're going to lose, but it's a close call. Noble District is finished, very good. Yeah, Frontania shouldn't have made that attack. Common Frontania L. All my feudatories keep making weird decisions. Right, here comes Nocaria to join in the fun. Probably get here too late, but they will at least kill the surviving uh, barbarian ships, so better than it could be, at least. All right, no breach in sight. Let's just come here, assault this, and get this war wrapped up. Um, I could wait a bit longer, but let's just do an assault now. No need to wait get this concluded. There we go. Alright, so this should probably be enough. I just want this, and that's it. I don't need anything north into Cisalpine Gaul. I'm not going into that other region. What I could do, though, is also have them maybe become my tributary. Not a terrible idea. Um, they're in a pretty good position to help sort of like a... well, not to help, but to, um, to be my tributary. 
no one in the right mind will attack them, which what I mean by that is that uh, when Neto, who is the, the rising power up here, won't attack them, that's the main one I'm concerned about, if they are my tributary. Or I can make them my tribal vassal. This would give me tribesman happiness. I'm Having just one tribal vassal gives me that bonus. Uh, do these guys use a slot as a tribal vassal? Well, I don't think they do, actually. And if I remember correctly, if you break a tribal vassal ship, you don't have any truce with the person, so you can just go to war with them right away. Um... I would rather get the bonus and also get the manpower than get this little bit of money, to be honest. And, well, there's arguments for both of these. I protect both of them, they have limited diplomacy. Uh, having these guys set up as my... I think both of these I also give me military access. Travel Vassal for sure does, I think Tributary might as well. Not entirely sure. Um, this would be handy to get... Uh, Military access and naval access up here. Not a terrible idea. I could just like wait and then just fight these guys later. I don't I don't really want to get the extra AE from this, to be honest. That's a lot of AE for not a lot of gain. I kinda wanna let my AE calm down. Same thing with my tyranny, but we're not gonna get much tyranny from this either. Or any tyranny from this. No cities over here. In fact we're gonna build a city, so opposite. I think we'll just go for this small deal. We got some sacks off, that's what this was all about. Let's just go for a small deal and leave these guys to enjoy a uh, seemingly uh, bad war score deal from my point of view, but I know what I'm here for. Okay, let's just take this stuff here. This is the entire province, right? Don't do anything goofy to me, game. Can I can I get the UI to work correctly, please? There we go, okay. He says as if that would ever happen in Imperator Rome. Never. Alright, let's get the rest of this uh, section up here. All right, Lingoni, uh, Araminum to Rome, and this should complete that mission, by the way, because it was just this or uh, Rauna, so this should complete the mission. That did complete the mission. That's good to see. The Gallic local power of Lingonia accepts our generous peace offer. Lingoni, Araminum to Rome. Very good. Capital is not moved, which is a nice thing to see. And I'll eventually make Araminium. At, see, I knew the name would be Araminium, the capital, but for now, destroy the town commons. This place could be a marble mine, or I mean a stone mine. Um, this place here doesn't need to be a fort, so let's destroy that fort. Let's go ahead and, um, ah man, I sort of, I want to do slaves. I want to do the slave movement stuff first before I do the, uh, let me think first. Do I want to keep my army raised or lower them and re-raise? What would I be getting? I would be getting a few more cohorts if I lowered and re-raised. Finally, it's moving in the right direction. Some of those assimilations are starting to pay off here. Who's next, I guess, is the question. So I guess Apulia's next. I probably would have to wait quite a while to re-raise, and re-raising in Italia isn't that much closer than just bringing these guys over. They're going to recover their strength as they walk down from my, my man Heracool. I think we just come over and try to finish off Apulia. Apulia does bring in Heraclea, which is great, and they also bring in um, Asapia. So we can basically... So unfortunately we can't get uh, Tarentum in this war, but we can at least uh, secure this area and then go for Tarentum later. Tarentum is a feudatory. So we actually get Tarentum through fighting Epirus, who we don't have a claim on. I should get a claim on Epirus next, or really on this territory here. I, actually, I guess I could target um, Tarentum, that's probably a bit more consistent, and then fight Epirus using their overlordship call-in from Tarentum. I think I'd prefer to do it like that, but for now, let's basically just continue this whole thing going, you know? Continue this whole thing going, is that a, a phrase? It's a phrase now, whatever. <laughs> Um, okay, let's just make our way down here. Um, incidentally, the Roman roads thing, I think that's a legion thing only, isn't it? Is that right? Let me, let me check here. I can't remember. Um, it would make sense if it was a legion thing. Any chance to fight uh, Sapontum somehow? Oh, these guys are a Feudatory. Okay, that's good. So they actually come in against Epirus anyways, because Feudatories are automatically called in. So that's our way to fight um, Sapontum as well. And Alea is still isolated. Alea is the real problem here, because I just don't have any way to fight Alea. Oh no, I am stupid. I am getting a claim on Alea right now, so never mind. In fact, let me actually fight Alea first, and then I'll turn over to the larger Apulian War. So let's come on down and fight Alea. Here comes the Brutians to help out. They need to get the memo that the war's over. Um, let's come down to Blanda and just attack Alea once we arrive. The the thing's gonna be ready in a few days, but we're not in position, obviously, so we'll just march our way down there a long way. That works. Alright, and then... 
What do I do now? Um, let me go ahead and do some slave micro. I think I need to finally get around to doing that. Cancel the sheep for a sec here and trade for vegetables. Trade with the uh, uh, Paeonia. I thought that might have been Athens, but no, Athens would not have uh, any resources to trade. Is Athens still alive, by the way? They actually are, at least for now. We'll see how much longer that lasts, but good to see. Okay, um, where do I want to move my slaves to? Probably to Walawata and also to Ilwa to get these extra copies. I need to build the mine in Ilwa, though. I'll do the slave movement, and then I'll build the mine after. No, just kidding. Let me build the mine first so that I have already spent the money for the mine, so I'm not under, under uh, saving for the mine. So let me do this in the correct order. This is the fun of min-maxing, folks. This is live min-maxing action. We all love it. We're all here for it. All right, we want the iron mine for sure. Iron is a pretty good resource to have extra copies of. If anything, just so that I have my own internal iron available. At some point, we may switch into the very fun but very consequential stance of uh, domination stance, which basically, when we select this, it doesn't display this here, but we have minus 100 opinion with everybody on the map, uh, minus 5 dip rep, but 5% reduced war score cost, 2.50% monthly military experience gain, and completely free war declarations on everybody. No Casa Spelle war cost goes to minus 100%. This is basically total war mode, and you basically need to be ready for the rest of the game to be a fight for survival against everybody else. But there's a point in this campaign we can basically go to the stance, and then those internal trades being ready for us to make use of is going to be really important because no one will trade with me once I have that kind of effect. So... Uh, that's a ways away, but it is good still to have some local infrastructure in place for such things uh, in the future. Uh, we could also build a blacksmith, which is an alternative to mines, but mines are better if you have the slaves for them. So let me do the slaves for them. Stone is in effect, so let's get that going. Cancel the stone. Also, we can do the mission too, so let's not forget about that. Right, cancel the stone and get the vegetables going. Also, there's an argument for waiting to do this mission until after we get the stuff so that the capital doesn't move around. But this would move the capital here for free, and then it may not move after we take this other stuff. So we could get the capital over sooner, but then we'd want to fortify it. No, no one's going to attack me from the north. This is fine to leave unfortified for now. Let me get this. I want to get the bonus sooner. Let me drive out the Gauls. All right, Gallic invasions from the north are an ever-present threat with the Senones so close to Roma. We must drive these barbarians out to defend the gateway to Cisalpine Gaul. All right, the conquest of the Senonii. Ironically, we didn't actually fight the Senonii because they were already beat by the Lingonia. So Senonii, the Senones remain here in their farmland city-state. Anyways, the northern border of Italia are fr the northern borders of Italia are free from barbarians, and the gateway to Cisalpine Gaul is secure. The Gauls must be kept as far from Roma as possible. It seems many Celts in Arminium are already fled their, their homes for neighboring Lingonia. With uh, newly conquered territory comes the inevitable parceling of land and distribution of promises, but it is up to us to decide which township will become the Roman hub of the area. All right, so we're going to go ahead and select um, the best tile over here, uh, Arminium, an important city in real Roman history, so that is uh, appropriate. Becomes a city automatically? That's pretty good. I actually didn't realize that would happen. Um, and it becomes the provincial capital, so let's hope it stays like that. Also, three pops here become Roman. No uh, Roman freemen are placed here, which I guess is fine. And it becomes a Roman colony, so that's pretty good. All right, Ariminium shall be founded to command the Ariminus. All right, this should be fortified. We'll wait for it to become a city to really worry too much about that, but Sanones would be out of their mind to attack me right now, and Lingonia probably is too scared to attack me. They also have a truce with me, so they're not going to do it anyways because we were just in a war, so... Never mind, that's how truces work. I know how this game works. Trust me. Uh, <laughs> okay, so all we have to do now is destroy the Apulians, which we're working on. This is gonna. This is the hard part here. Um, tame the Brutians, which is going to be a nightmare with the Carthaginians here. But then we can do Italian Colonia. And then so this allows us to strengthen the Roman Colonia modifiers, which is placed everywhere. And then we can do one or the other off to decide which one to do. We'll get to that later, though. And then after this, probably more Roman custom missions await, so that's pretty exciting. Let's go ahead and just make our way down. No need to lower and re-raise, I don't think. We're going to have to wait a long time if we do that, so let's just press our, press our claims now, to be honest. 
And let's start with um, Alea, as I said earlier. So on we go. We have a little over a year, almost about to be just one year left in this consulship. Aims of the Bonia realized, that's good, because we finished that building earlier. Partisans of the Boni are practically falling over each other to congratulate cons Consul Publius for defending their interests in the Senate of Rome. Ensuring the concerns of the conservatives were addressed will help to win their support in future disputes. Politics is a game of compromise. Right, so now we've got very high support from basically everybody. Let's hope that this makes the transition to our new um, Boni consulship with a Populare co-consul a little bit smoother. The approval does change when the consuls change, but let's just hope that it doesn't change too much because I really like these sorts of numbers. We're gonna also switch over to a build cost bonus with the Bonnie, so let's remember that for any sort of building sprees. Better to do under this guy, but that's fine. On we go. Let me just wait. Also, we have a claim on Leia now. Very good. Save our PI, probably for more claims. Um, we'll fight Alea like that, and then these guys are called into Epirus. These guys are called into Epirus. I think we have to... Actually, I think we may have to claim this land from Epirus for these other guys to get called in correctly. No, they get called in when their their overlord goes to war, so I should be able to claim Tarentum just fine, I think. All right, Scholar of the Divine, Lucius Valerius Wielens has by, has, by all accounts, remained a Scholar of the Divine Man for much of his life. It caused some embarrassment, therefore, when he was discovered extorting a local temple to an egregiously unreasonable degree. Before reprimanding Lucius, it must be said that it would be expedient to our efforts to influence him if we were to brush this under the table. Okay, these are the sort of events I like to see. This is basically a free 24 PI because the five loyalty is really not a big deal for this guy. Or 10 corruption on the researcher. With all of our anti-corruption effects, this is actually probably fine. And I would like to have the extra PI because I am always needing more PI. So we're going to go ahead and say, very well. All right. Now that I'm flush with PI, what do I spend it on? Well, how do I fight Croton? Actually, these guys are a feudatory of Epirus too, so... Oh, these guys are fighting Talantia and Abria. Okay. Well, I guess it had to happen eventually. So Epirus is distracted. Hmm. Do I have any way to attack Epirus sooner? I have the claim on Apulia and the claim on Alea. All right, let me... Hold on. These guys get called in, so I fight these guys as part of this war. And then also Masapia. I think Tarentum is my best bet here, because I'll border them. Actually, I could just claim uh, Sapontum, because I can go in and, and fight them super easily. Um, or at least kill their army super easily. That's probably a good way to start the war. So this will bring in Epirus, and then as the Overlord, let me just verify this. As the Overlord, what is Epirus' obligation? Wow, look at this defensive league. I just noticed this. I did not notice this defensive league. Epirus has entered, entered this league with the entire Greek world. Look at their ally. No wonder their ally is just so long. Holy crap. Okay, this may change my plans a bit. Um, let me worry about that in just a second. Um, who do they bring in? Oh, they have a lot of fugitives, actually. Okay, who are all these people? Right, that island there. Tarentum we know. Thuria. Croton is... Oh yeah, Croton's right there. Um, Hipponia is down there. Oh, they bring in Hipponia. Or Hipponian, rather. Right. Um, yeah, I'm not allied with Hipponian anymore, am I? That's right, I, I saw that earlier. Uh, can I get Carthage to attack Hipponian now? That'd be kind of cool. Carthage versus Epirus, that'd be a, a pretty good way for them to distract each other. But no, I don't think that's... a uh, Particularly likely at the minute. All right, who else are they overlording over? And also uh, Sapontum, so yeah. Basically all of the Mega Negratia city-states that are left, they are overlording over. Except for Elea, who we're about to attack. And then, who's in the Defensive League exactly? Actually, first, let me look at this part here. Um, joins in wars. So, any war that Epirus is involved in, all their feudatories come with them. But there's a way to do this without the Defensive League, and that is by attacking... So here's how I think this works. The Defensive League, I think, only comes in when one of their members is declared upon, but they don't come in when one of their members joins a war for other reasons. Even in the case of a member of a league joining a war as an overlord to their feudatory, I don't think triggers the Defensive League. Because I know for sure that one of their members joining as an ally in a defensive call-in from the attacked party 
that doesn't trigger the league. I'm fairly sure that's how that works, but this is a pretty important like note, which I'm not going to be 100% sure, because, okay, um, not, not you, somebody who actually is in the league. Um, let me select a, a Taurus, for example. This calls in, hmm. So this does list the other defensive league members as defenders joining Epirus, but I'm not sure if that's correct. If the other Greek members join in, this would be an absolute mess to deal with because all these guys are over here. A lot of these nations aren't exactly very powerful. Let's see who's in this league, just to be thorough. It's Beatia, uh, Aetolia, Messen. How did how did Epirus manage to unite all the Greek? Okay, whatever. Let's worry about that later. Um, Amphisa is here too. I Aegean, Elis is here. Dime and Pelene. So basically, all of the Greek city states, or most of the small Greek nations. Uh, that are left have uh, joined Epirus's league. Um, what's your size, Epirus? 17 territories. Epirus is pretty strategically staying below that 20... Like, notice earlier they didn't take more land. They're, if they go above 25 territories, they become a regional power and lose access to defensive leagues. So I wonder if Epirus is strategically not growing its size in order to, to keep its uh, territory count small, which means... If they were to fully annex Taulantia and um, Abria, and it is Epirus who declared. Is this under siege right now? It is. So if they were to fully annex this, what would they be getting here? Um, they'd be getting 1, 2, 3, 4. So, four, so 17 plus 4 is 21. And then Abria is 1, 2, 3. So that'd be 24. That's, oh, damn, that's just below what they need to get out of being a local power. I might be able to do something a little creative here. You know, here's an interesting idea. I wonder if I can take territory from, like, Mesopia, for example. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll take it in this war against Apulia. Fight Apulia, Mesopia, and um, uh, Heraclean. What if I sold the Mesopian territory to Epirus? They do border it. I think the Epirote AI would not hesitate, even if it, like, is benefiting from this local power thing with the defensive league. I don't think it would think that far ahead. I might be able to basically trick Epirus into becoming a regional power to lose its access to its defensive league. Although that being said, regional powers can't form defensive leagues, but can they still remain in a league? I'm fairly sure you lose, the, you're kicked out of the league if you get too large. I think there's a weird strategy we can do here, especially if they take land up here, which I think they probably will because this is bordering their core. If we sell them land from our Mesopian stuff that we take here, we can basically sort of slowly trick them into becoming too large, and then they lose their local power status, they become a regional power, they get kicked out of their league, and then they're much easier to fight. Not because these other guys have a lot of strength militarily, but the war score scaling of having so many participants, I'll really struggle to even just to get this stuff here. Um, even if I can always beat Epirus on land with my numbers, Epirus can blockade me, they're going to have naval supremacy, you know, for sure. And uh, I just may not be able to, to get the stuff very easily. So I think there's a way to kind of like, <laughs> to basically like lead Epirus up into becoming a regional power through some chicanery. That sounds like just the sort of thing I'd love to do. So we'll worry about that later. We've got stuff to, I'm, I'm, I'm getting so far ahead of myself here, but this is just, this is so fun. I'm having the time of my life right now. This is such a fun campaign. All right, let's go ahead and get something here. Um, legitimacy has no effect because we are not a monarchy, so this should probably be changed to have a Republican version. Let's get ambassadors for 10 years, subject opinion of us, and extra dip range. That's what I like to see. What is the picture there? I guess it's a guy on a horse. I thought this was a guy on like a carousel because of the pillar in the background, but it's just a weird optical illusion. I suppose that's fine. Um, okay, let's proceed. Incidentally, the next console is going to have three marshals. So that's not particularly great, although the co-console has 12 marshals. Damn. Can this guy be the main console, please? Uh, I wish I'd noticed this sooner. Um, I kind of don't want this guy to be the next console, given the morale, the marshal situation. On our main levy, this is a really, really low marshal to be working with here. We could just make use of our governor with his um, 7 marshal to help out, but that's not great, particularly against Pyrrhus with his 11 marshal. That being said, with our numbers, we should be okay across the board. We could make use of mercenaries. That might be what we have to do, honestly. But then we're not going to be able to sack. Uh, that's not great. Oh, we, could, we, could make, we, could, we could make it work. We could make it work. 
it's going to take some some careful careful planning. Also, I should probably use my PI for something. I was I was talking about efforts because I was talking about PI. What I need to do is I need to probably claim. Um, uh, let, let me claim uh, Tormentum. I think that is the most uh, ideal person to claim here. Claim Tormentum. And then with the rest of my PI, uh, let me just save it for now. I don't think I need any more claims right away. Because these guys come in for my Epirus War. Yeah, everyone else comes in through my Epirus War. So I think we're fine. Oh, I needed to claim um, Etruria. That's right. Let me not forget about that. Okay, we're going to claim specifically on Armaminum. Definitely don't forget about that, please. And then with the rest of our PI, leave all this as it is. I think we just save it up for now. The rare PI saving uh, situation doesn't happen commonly, but in this case we can do it. All right, let's get down here before Leia figures out what's going on. Actually, we can just come here, to be honest. 28th of February. Roma is prospering. Our colossal construction has unexpected benefits in Roma. It is now pure euphoria to traverse the market district and see delighted citizens uh, prosper. We anticipated that morale would be strengthened in the region, but to this extent, no one imagined. This gives us a new opportunity to capitalize on the momentum we now have. Okay, um, we have a couple options here. For uh, one year, we could get local tax, manpower, and output in the tile of Roma, which would be quite strong. We could get popularity on our currently almost maxed out popularity and outgoing console, so not so good. Or, this is pretty interesting, gain five stability and lose tyranny. Events that have you lose tyranny as an option are very uncommon, so this is actually very tempting. This is what I'm gonna go for, honestly. This is a very strong bonus, especially for the Roma tile, but stability is very good and tyranny is very good to lose. So this is a beacon for a nation who will look here for guidance. Rare. Vanilla, uh, actually I don't even know if that's a vanilla event, but if that is a vanilla event, rare vanilla event W right there. All right, Alea, guess what? <laughs> guess what time it is? Time to die. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take Lucania. Am I paying for my troops fully? I am. Probably don't need to do that, but no, we're gonna just keep it going. All right, in we come before we have our low marshal from our next guy. So let's just take advantage of this while we can. All right, just save our PI and money for now. No need to uh, spend when we don't need to. Circular statement there, but that's fine. Trade with someone who I'm not going to fight soon, ideally. So I guess I guess I'll trade with um, Quantum for now. It's fine. Kill these guys. Oh, I'll we'll trade with uh, Abria. Oh no, military access from Abria. No. All right, that was a stack wipe. Stack wipe, yeah. All right, let's just siege this down manually. Um, well, hold on. Yeah, we have the Apulian claim right after. Let me just do the siege manually. Although, actually, if I do an assault, I probably can recover manpower enough. Although, it's a level 2 fort. Uh, it's a lot, of, a lot of supplies. Plus, it has uh, open port, so... The actual siege would take a long time here. Let me wait for my, my um, feudatories to arrive to bolster my numbers. Then we'll do an assault once everybody's here. That's the compromise I'm going to do. All right, this place is starving to death. Sucks to suck, I'm not helping you. Exiled armies. Envoys from Epirus have descended on the courts of Italia, from the pettiest chief to the most plump archon, to the, decri to the decry our aggression against the Greek city-states of the peninsula. The debate was marked by the display of a man named Meton, who, uh, under the disguise of a drunken farce, declared to all, take pleasure in your freedom now, Tarantines, for things will change under the Epirus yoke. Uh, by Ares, we will crush them? Rome at... God damn it, alright. Um... <laughs> God damn Epirus. Alright, stupid Epirus. Screwed everything up, alright. Well, never mind. We'll go for Alea later. Alright, time for Apulia. Epirus? Note, this is not a city-state, which means these guys can't... Oh, I need to cancel military access. Good thing I noticed that now. All right, let's uh, go up and get this thing before the fort gets built. Get this thing wrapped up here. All right, let's fight somebody before Epirus can claim them as well. I can't believe Epirus is allowed to just cancel a war. Like, what What the hell is that? That's a, it's a little ridiculous, but oh well. That is Epirus for you. They are truly Rome's early game. Uh, not really like arch nemesis, because Carthage is definitely stronger, but 
Rome's most annoying enemy. Oh, what happened to our morale? Black flagging did that much? Oh my god. Screwing everything up for me. Alright, whatever. We're gonna get revenge for that um, intervention there real soon. Alright. This is super annoying. Let's recover our morale and just uh, do it as soon as we can here. Not too much to be done about that. Carthage is fighting somebody. They're fighting everybody, actually. Who are they fighting? Oh, they're fighting a bunch of people in southern Iberia and Africa. I'm assuming this is a defensive league. Looks like it. But they're fighting more than just the people in the league. So how is this exactly happening? I think it's a mixture of leagues and alliances. Okay, so Carthage is fighting a bunch of people over here. Which means, incidentally, they're a little preoccupied and they may not really be able to respond to an attack over here. But I have no claim, so don't even think about it. <laughs> Let's not go crazy here. Alright, let's just... <laughs> I can't believe... Stupid Pyrrhus coming in, canceling our war. What the hell is that? I love how wars work. Alright, Gadir calls for aid against Carthage. We received an urgent envoy from the small state of Gadir, uh, Bod Melkart. Abdani is requesting our immediate assistance against Carthage, who, claim, who he claims have treacherously invaded his country. Their envoy has spent many hours in supplication before the Senate, and passionately argued that if we let the cities of Gadir fall, it will only be a matter of time before Carthage tries to invade and destroy Rome. Given our conflicting interests with Carthage and the Mediterranean, and their continued policy of expansion, this could be an opportunity to escalate the situation in our favor. How should we respond? Um, ooh. This is interesting. We get claims on Carthage. The claims on Carthage is fine. I'm not trying to be friendly with Carthage. That's not going to help anyways. Losing five stability is painful. 5k manpower right now is actually pretty... We have a lot of manpower max for this to fill up. And the really interesting part is the shipbuilding cost reduction. We could definitely build some serious ships, especially if we were to... Because um, keep, keep note that the shipbuilding cost... No matter um, how long the ships take to build, um, if you build them when the modifier is in effect, the modifier cost, like you, you don't have to like pay more when the modifier ends. So what we could do is um, within the next year, do the war against Apulia and these guys. And then right before this is up, right before uh, May of 450, we could switch our policy. Where is it? Switch our, one of these policies over to the shipbuilding one to sort of match up with this and then build a giant fleet all in one go while the game's paused to take full advantage. So alternatively, Rome could gain tax, commerce, that's the nation, like the, my whole nation of Rome, also citizen happiness. <sighs> uh, 10 popularity on this guy is not a big problem. This is a really tempting alternative, honestly. Uh, that's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. And building this giant fleet isn't necessarily gonna man ah i just don't feel ready for the punic wars quite yet i just don't i just don't feel quite ready yet but i've got to start somewhere all right we're not ready for war yet hold that thought okay um so we've got until second of may of next year to get the ship building going and, and trade our idea out maybe we finish this uh war actually hold on there's no forts here at all there's one fort there, there's a fort here, so I think this is doable within a year. Because these guys call in Masapi and Heraclea. Alright, now, these guys I'm going to ask for military access just temporarily. Um, where's their capital? It's over here. Even with low morale, they're probably not going to attack me, so I'm going to do, now that there's sort of a time limit to get, to finish the point where I need all of my military ideas that I currently have and be able to switch one, let me declare war... Uh, bring in everybody for Apulia. We're just going to go in right now, honestly. Take Apulia. Alright. Alright. Um, Epirus, stay the hell out of this one. You have no reason to get involved here. Let's just go grab this right away before this fort can finish. Then we'll get this other stuff here. Eight of May. <sighs> See what we can do here. We do have a couple of port stouts that we can make use of. I didn't destroy this port here. I'm going to keep this port here for now, because I can make use of that for the shipbuilding. That will be good. We can definitely build a pretty significant set of ships. In fact, I should probably go ahead and uh, do this while I have got a, a Bonnie... Actually, we're about to get a Bonnie leader later. 
It's not going to be done in time, though. Let me go ahead and just do this now. Uh, well, hold on. How much would it be for another port? Or for a shipyard. Shipyard would really help for this, but it's going to take way too long, so we're not going to be able to build the ships in time. This would take too long. Well, no, this will take half a year. We can get this done to build, little, build medium ships. I think it's worth it to actually take a second here, trade for stone. Oh, I'm still trading for vegetables. I never moved the slaves. I completely forgot about that. Whoops. <laughs> Alright, that's fine. Um, micro mistake. We'll do the slaves later. This will all work out just fine. Trade or trade for the port. Build the port. Cancel the stone. Alright. Trade for livestock, please. Get the uh, trade for Egypt. Alright, get this port done. That way, this will finish before that modifier is gone, so we can build level, uh, we can build medium ships as part of the, the big building spree. Alright, now we save all of our money for uh, ship building support. Right, this is done. Okay, here is the army over here they're trying to gather up here. Let's see if we can catch them if possible. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do here. Morale should be fine once we get one month of recovery. Um, don't know what their movement's about. Let's see if we can catch these guys down here. Um, they're blockading me, that's fine. These guys have got naval supremacy overall. Uh, let's see, 10th of June, 7th of June, 10th of June, we're not gonna catch them. We will catch a bunch of random people here. This is a pretty good fight to take, let's go for it. Just start killing them. Alright, Battle of Meta Pontian. This is going to be perfectly fine. These guys are going to walk in. They're going to stop walking in because they see how the battle's going. Alright, just uh, shoot through these guys. Good, these guys are grabbing that. We can grab this and sack this, so let's uh, stay and do just that. Then we'll try to catch those guys. Okay. Not going to be able to sack uh, Barian. That's fine. So let's go down to speed uh, 2, please. Speed 3 is a bit fast for this war. Alright, these guys are going to die. Standard. Sacking of Metapontian. Publius Cornelius Barbatus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Metapontian. The enemy fleeing disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war likely cause those back in the Roma to admire Publius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. None shall hide. This is, I think, probably fine. This is fine. All right. Um, we need to kill this army. It is walking directly into my unfortified core, so that is a definite army killing situation. Chase these guys down. Although, as I'm leaving, let me leave behind a skeleton crew to get this stuff under siege. No, those guys will stop me, though, or they'll attack me, I mean. Um, oh, here's the plan, actually. Stop a lot of the cash here. Leave behind just um, two light infantry. Let's come down here, allow attachment with you guys so that my allies join in on the fun. You guys now go chase down this army if you can. Oh wait, it's level 2 for me. What am I doing? Oh, we're going to have allies arriving soon, so it's going to be fine. Alright, come catch these guys. If you can. Alright, um... I would rather catch these guys up here. Let's do that. Just kidding, we're gonna catch them now that they're all not moving fast enough. And we're in charge down there. Come on, fun. I love Lucia, please just kill these guys ASAP. The Faith of Publius. Never has a more devout man existed than Publius Sempronius Sophus. Our people clamor at the very door of the temple, demanding that we declare a feast in his honor. How should we answer them? Glory to Publius! 18 gold for 6 stability is a phenomenal trade. We are going for that, no doubt. Alright. Get these guys here, Battle of Venusia. Good, didn't stack with them, but we killed them a lot. So let's go and catch these guys over here now. Or not. Oh, they're gonna just come here first, that's fine. We'll just let that happen. Coming in to get probably stack wiped. There's the stack wipe, good. Okay, um, now what we do is send these guys straight over to 
Mandrian in order to um, do an assault over there. That is the plan. And then this force here can probably do an assault. Let's see if we get a breach. That would be swell. Status quo. Okay, never mind. Yeah, no assault can happen here. Wait, give me command, please. Not enough assault. Let's wait for more allies to show up to see if they can do that off. Or uh, pull that off there, I mean. And do that off. <laughs> Alright. Things are falling into place. I need to be ready. <sighs> I gotta figure out how to deal with Epirus. Epirus is, yeah. Epirus may break out of being a local power on their own. I need them to stop being a local power so that they lose that defensive league. That is a big priority. Really need that to happen. And I should be able to take this and the peace deal because of my territory here We're within the same sea tile. Impatience is a virtue. Publius Valerius Soerio has become has been becoming increasingly restless of late. He believes that his stature is deserving of a key role in our government. He has approached our Senate, insisting that we bestow upon we bestow such a role upon him, indeed, given his prominence, perhaps we should consider this carefully. This is our former co-consul, I believe. Just wait a little longer. I mean, we'll deal with you later. Alright, come on. Come on, come on. Get over here. I want to get this uh, wrapped up before the election. Alright, this should be a perfectly good victory over here. We're going to catch all these guys with low morale. Hopefully stack wipe, maybe. This is level 2 fort though, so... Supply shortage, uh, is so bad. Right, come on, just slaughter. Slaughter and kill. We're gonna just do an assault here, I need to get this sped up here. Come on. Oh my god, just kill them. I know we're in the forest and it's bad. Just power through. Do what we can. Alright, that's a good trade. Okay, um... This is gonna have to do... Order of assault. We should have the numbers here. Hopefully we have the morale. Why are you raising your army, Tarentum? What are you doing? Okay, I don't know what you're doing. Come on. We got this. Here we go. The sacking of Mandarian. Publi uh, also slaves into Canusium and Salernum. Okay. Um, Publius Cornelius Barbatus has led his men to glorious victory during the siege of Mandarian. The enemy fleeing disgrace and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, the spoils of war are likely to cause those back in the Roma to admire Publius greatly. But leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. None shall hide. Money for the state. Thank you. Alright, let's head back over. Uh, this is probably actually assaultable now with the numbers here. But I'm not super confident, so let's bring the main army back over and then get this thing wrapped up in a nice, uh, easy... Actually, I probably should kill these guys while their morale is so bad. That's probably a much better use of our time here. There's lots of war score as well. Plus it gives us time for our morale to recover. I'm worried about these guys uh, not agreeing to a peace deal, given how much we're going to be asking for, unless we get some kills off here. I really want to finish this before the election. Not sure we're going to be able to pull that off. I guess we'll see. Alright, this is a good fight. We'll take this fight. See if we can get a stack white maybe. Port Nostia is done, level 2 port, that's good. So now, once this fight's done, let's see what we're going to have here, these guys are holding on. Alright, a lot of them survived, but where are they running to? I think they're just running down here. Let's try to catch them and stack wipe them. There we go, that's the stack wipe location. 25th of November, let's get this kill off. There is the... Fortress of Pisae is done, and also the other fortresses are done too. Here, catch these guys. 3rd of December. Come on. This should be the rest of the stack, but there we go. Alright, you guys now go ahead and do an assault. I've just gotta hope we've got enough. You guys start coming over in case it's not. Come on. I think we got this. <sighs> okay. The sacking of Heraclea. Publius Cornelius Barbatus has led his men to glorious victory during the Siege of Heraclea. The enemy flee in disgrace, and all that is left is to decide on how to treat the residents within. Needless to say, these spoils of war are likely to cause those back in the Roma to admire Publius greatly, but leaving such wealth in the hands of one man could cause problems in the future. Alright, one pop has died. This place here can survive, none shall hide, more money for the state. There it is. 12th of December, we're going to manage to squeeze this war in right before the election. 
All right, I want all of this for Rome. 10 AE from this, quite an expensive piece steel, but we are able to get this, and we may be able to do something creative. Epirus did take all of this, by the way. We may be able to do something creative and basically um, manipulate Epirus to get them out of their defensive league before our war with them. And at this stage, everybody else on the peninsula that's not my feudatory is protected by Epirus, so Epirus is really uh, muscled into mega negration in a way that I'm not going to be approving of much longer here. Anyways, Heraclean, Lucania to Rome, Apulian, Tarentum to Rome, Apulian, Apulia to Rome, and Masopian, Tarentum to Rome. Give me this deal. Alright, so we are going to fully delete Masopia, Apulia, and Heraclea, but our tyranny is a little on the high side, so I think I'm going to just go ahead and reduce my AE. I don't think I... well, I, I, could, I could push it further. I honestly could. I honestly could. Um, this is so tempting. All right, you know what? Um, we're going for it. We're gonna imprison three sets of nobles is uh, definitely tempting. Definitely, definitely tempting. All right, you guys stay put. Lower the levy, get the heck out of being raised. Okay. Um, first things first, it's time for money and time for tyranny. Oh boy, we've got a lot of prisoners to uh, attend to. So first of all, the babies can go free. At least I can do. All right, sell your slavery. You definitely need to work a lot. You are not worth that much, so you can go free. You are worth a fair bit, so you can go into slavery. Let's you. Uh, sell you. Sell you for sure. Sell you. I already sold you. Uh, I'm gonna sell you. I'm gonna release you. Sell you. Um, sell you. Release you. Did I talk to already? No. Oh my god, 18.50? That might be the most value I've ever seen from selling the slavery. Pyrrhus Timarchides. Why? 14 Marshall? That's why. This guy has crazy stats. Holy crap. This is the other Pyrrhus, <laughs> honestly. Holy moly. Oh my god, alright. I could honestly make you my gladiator, but this would make it in the gladiator of my current also. I, I, whatever, I'm just gonna sell him. That's too much tyranny for that. So much money though. Sell you. Sell you. Um, sell you. Sell you. These are some valuable captives here. Sell you. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna release you. I'm going to sell you. And then I'm going to sell you. 38 tyranny, and that's before I do any stuff with the cities. But I have almost 600 gold now. And unfortunately, despite all that work, my mission tree has not been advanced because of all this random territory. Still have to attend to. But for now, at least, um, I'm going to keep the... I can move the capital now, actually. Should probably move the capital to... Um, let's see. I haven't started fortifying the Salernum yet. Let me go ahead and at least destroy one level of fort over here. I don't think we need that. Um, over here in Ericleo, what kind of city do I want this to be? I could keep... I may as well keep the forms for now in case I decide to make this a tax city. I need to think more about what I want the city to be. Um, tax is probably a fine use for the city. Plus, pearls are valuable, right? Your pearl, pearls are 3.35, so they're kind of valuable. Also, we have your tavern. That would help with Freeman, so I do want to keep that. The port, for sure. I think we keep all the buildings that are here at the minute, honestly. So, uh, Heraclea, I could make the capital just to be thorough. I can also make Salernum the capital. Uh, let me wait, because taking Alea may screw it up, so let me just leave it where it is right now. Alright, and then up here... Actually, I'm gonna look at this stuff here, nothing to note. Up here... Well, first of all, let me switch the policy over to cultural assimilation. I think that is... Attended to, there we go. Um, we have got city at Barium. Barium is an okay spot for a city. It's uh, a little close to Canae. Um, or I should say Canae. I actually don't remember how you say it. Um, incidentally, the famous Battle of Canae happened here. So if you know about the Second Punic War, that's the famous uh, battle with the, uh, the Carthaginian encirclement situation. But anyways... Um, I guess we could keep Canusium as the capital, because that's the right distance from Barium. Or we make Taurus the capital over here, once we have it. 
probably the better course of action. This place here could just be completely defortified, and also, um, this is not a good spot for a city. Uh, this port can go. I think we just sell off everything, so. How large is Epirus now? 23. I think Epirus would buy this territory if I tried to sell it to them, even for free. Let me see here. I sold this to them. They would pay me for it. I think this is a workable strategy. I'm going to sell this to Epirus. I'm going to sell more territory over here to Epirus. I'm going to basically, like I said earlier, I'm going to trick Epirus into becoming a regional power. Maybe the first time anyone's ever done this strategy. Let me know in the comments if you've seen anyone ever do this before. And I'm basically going to manipulate them into losing their access to defensive leagues to screw up their, their situation here. I think that's the move. So we need to wait at least one more month. We're not going to war again super soon. We have to get our manpower back up, to be sure. So there's all this territory here I'm fine just to give to Epirus. This stuff over here, though, the city and the forest, I, I really can't survive this. So I think this place is going to be revoked. Need to, man, it's just forest cities are so brutal. Get out of here. All right, so um, Badium is the right distance from um, Eraclea, so I think I'm going to keep this as a city. Let's see, it's farmland, just coastal, though. But so is Taurus, to be fair. And Taurus is a bit close to Eraclea. Taurus is also a horse tile. So, eh. Hard to say. I think Badium is a good spot for a city, though. So I think for now, um, I mean, it's going to move around. The capital's going to move around anyways. I think I could assume Badium will become a capital later on. Okay, um, and then that's basically everything there. <sighs> Let's see here. We have a bunch of stuff now. Hmm. We could get more holy sites as well. We'll hold off on that for now. <laughs> Let me go ahead and... Um, Start improving relations with Sabinia and um, Brutia before I forget about this, just to be on the safe side. Brutia as well, just to get these up, just in case once we get to the 10 years, which will be in a few days for the first four. So let me go ahead and let the rest of my term play out, and then we'll see uh, how bad things actually are. Some of these characters I think are, yeah, these are retaliations. These guys are going to disappear, so this disloyalty thing is kind of a phantom, phantom thing. Nothing to worry about. Things are actually a bit more under control than they seem. <laughs> he says he says nervously. <laughs> Sell off our hemp. All right. Finish off the year strong. Uh, the Aetolian Revolt wants military access. What? N no. No. <laughs> All right. And we're about to hit the 10-year anniversary of the campaign and the ascension of Appius Claudius Caicus um, with his 3877 build cost reduction and monthly wages reduction because the Bonnie are now in charge. Stability drop because we've, uh, well, lots of things have happened now. So let's go in and attend to this really quick. New sensor, who do we want? Uh, well, we need to have, so we, oh man, hold on. Um, for some reason, we have got the, uh, oh, you know what the issue is? Both of these consoles are cloudy eyes, so we need two new cloudy eye officers. Yeah, all right, um, including a advancer. Uh, ooh. This guy would be pretty good. He's obsessive. All right, let me put Quintus Fabius Rulianus over here to be the uh, civ advancer. And then anybody else from the cloudy eye family Going from eleven to or from ten to seven is pretty hard to justify. Going from nine to nine, losing the trait, also I don't really want to do. I'll have to do this in the offices, I think. All right, the sensor, um, Appius Claudius Rosas will be fine for this. I think actually I prefer him for a martial position. Let me replace Mister uh, Publius Decius Mus, who's not a family character, with this guy. Much more apt for that. You have to rebuild the statesmanship, but that's fine. And then we'll replace someone who's from the Grateful family, Fabia Tertia. If uh, we have a good alternative, we do have a good alternative. Also nine from Claudia Prima. Alrighty. And then for the censor position, we'll just put the most competent character, Publius Cornelius Barbatus. Okay, well, we know who this is. <laughs> We're just playing as him. He's going to be our new uh, censor, so a nice retirement. His statesmanship is at full. Power, very good. Right, um, 
pick a character focus for our new console, Appius Clau Claudius Caicus. We'll take a look at him next episode as well to start things off. Probably want to boost up his marshal, but I don't think anything's going to help ultimately. This is dire. Right before the Epirus War too. I guess I could wait five years and just like wait for a better replacement. We'll, we'll see what we have to do here. Let's at least get him on a steam influence and go for... I may actually go for a civic focus just to be maximizing his build cost reduction. Call down an omen. I think there's an argument for switching fully into just like have a five years of calming down. I have extremely high tyranny for a republic, although I think I'm managing it just okay at the minute. We don't have tech, we don't have a uh, civil war problems at the minute. Uh, AE is is on the high side, but this is at the minute maintainable. Senate uh, support remains very high. Let's see what's going on in the Senate, by the way. So it looks like the Optimates have had a bit of a resurgence. They're back up to 52 control. Popularis remain as usual in the very slim minority with 10%. With uh, Publius Sempronius Sophus, interestingly, having become the new Popularis leader. This was our first consul, and he's now completely switched sides to become a Popularis. Interesting. Um, Publius Cornelius Barbatus, who was our... Uh, second console in our previous console is the leader of the Optimates, so an interesting kind of uh, in-universe rivalry between our first and second consoles here, with our current console as the leader of the Bonnie. So we have a, the three consoles of this campaign are the three party leaders, the three that in like succession. That's interesting. We do have a very good Marshall console coming up in five years. Yeah, okay. Um, I think I'm going to do something a little... Um, a little frustrating, but I think necessary. I'm going to basically just completely pause all of the uh, war making and have a five year period of just absolute, like, like complete 100% focus on internal matters in the economy. I need to get my situation under control. And I can, with my uh, build cost reduction from the Bonnie and with the build cost reduction from this guy's really good finesse, I can go on a crazy infrastructure spree for the next couple of years, the next five years to be more specific, and come back for Epirus and their their uh, feudatories um, later. What I can do is um, basically uh, in the next episode, in this five-year period, manipulate Epirus into becoming a regional power so that they hopefully lose their... Um, so basically sort of a Cold War maneuver against Epirus so that they lose their defensive league, and then basically do other things to kind of prepare Epirus and their feudatories on the peninsula for destruction. We can basically do a huge build-up and then go to war with Epirus and their, their feudatory fleet uh, in uh, 65 under the leadership of our much better successor consuls. That is the plan there. Okay, uh, so with that in mind, let's at least set up our, our uh, omen now. I think at this stage, tax economy remains much stronger than the commerce economy. Also, we can go down. For this five-year period, I'm going to risk it with uh, the maintenance go down all the way to low for extra happiness. These guys, incidentally, I don't think have a claim on me. I don't think so. Oh, they do actually, never mind. I don't think Epirus will feel confident attacking me, and Carthage, I don't think has a claim on me. Hold on, that's the wrong, yeah, we, that, they definitely don't. So I don't think anyone's going to be attacking me realistically. So all that being said, um, I think the way to go here is probably Pluto for the tax bonus. Probably Pluto for the tax bonus. That's going to be worth more at the minute. And we're about to get a lot more tax money from some slave micro, so let's go for Pluto once again. Right, the gods are smiling upon us. Very good. Um, I may want to actually get a, another holy site, possibly two Pluto in one of my areas. That would probably be a good expenditure. These guys want revocations of holdings. Reduce my tyranny below 33. Maybe we can pull this off in the next five years. I'm not so sure about that, but I would certainly like that to happen. Trust me. We need to adjust our law. Oh, this might actually be forced. Although they're not the party in charge, so maybe not. They want us to switch to the one that gives us 10-year terms. I would really prefer not for this to have happen. <laughs> I would really prefer that this is not what, what happens, but I guess we'll see what the Optimates get up to. I think the faction that's in charge is the one that can force the thing, but... I guess uh, it's possible the others can as well. I suppose we shall see. Yeah, so unfortunately, Destroy Apulians will have to wait five years. But we're going to be able to focus in on the economy 100%. Also, we're going to go even further and lower fort maintenance just to really squeeze as much as possible out of our economy because a lot of our fort maintenance is uh, increased over here. Not that it's a, a big difference, but may as well. 
if I don't think I'm going to be attacked or I'm going to do any attacking, I shouldn't be paying for fort minutes. That's the min-max way to do it. We're going all in on the economy. So that's going to be it for this episode of the Rome campaign. A shockingly even longer episode from the first one. I thought the first one was going to be the longest video I ever recorded, but <laughs> as you saw, there was a lot to do in this episode, and we are in a very strong position but in many ways, not quite yet. And that's really the story of Rome. And it's going to be the story of our, you know, version of Rome in this campaign. Every time we feel like we're getting strong, there's going to be some new thing that uh, proves to be a weakness that we're going to have to compensate for. And I'm hoping in the next five years, we're going to have an explosion of economic strength as we really secure our new holdings, get our new territory organized with a huge war chest of money to do quite a bit of infrastructure, construction, and slave micro. I'm hoping to reach ideally uh, 20 treasury plus maybe by the, the end of the five year period. That may be a little ambitious, but we're already at um, 11.50. So I think 20 plus with the right micro might be feasible. At least 15 plus is gonna ideally be the results of our, our infrastructure attendance, but we'll see what we can do here. Of course, not all infrastructure is going to be just on boosting uh, our treasury, but that's the most immediate benefit. We can also get above like you know, 23k or so manpower from the manpower boost from our infrastructure, that will be handy as well. And of course we have to build that big fleet, so let's not forget about that. Maybe I should focus on that first, because this is a good opportunity while I have that modifier to build that big fleet. Where is it? May 2nd. So definitely think that's probably a priority and probably something I should focus on first over any infrastructure. But either way, uh, this economy focus will still be good for the next five years. So all that being said, thank you all so much for watching this episode of the Rome Campaign and I'll see you all next time.